Hi. In this series, we're going to be learning how to use React and Firebase to create a fully featured social media application. This application will let users sign up by filling the sign up form right here, which will be validated once it's submitted. And if all the info is valid, an account will be created for us and we will be redirected to the homepage. In the homepage, we can view posts, which are called screams in this platform. We can see comments and the number of likes any scream has. Uh, we can also upload an image that will be our profile picture that will be stored in our Firebase storage bucket. Uh, we can also update our profile by adding details about ourselves, such as a bio, our location, and uh, our personal or professional website. Once these are submitted, they are validated. And once they're valid, these details will be publicly visible to other users of the application. But we can also always edit them again if we're not happy. Uh, we can like other people's screams. We can like as many screams as we want. Uh, we can, of course, post comments to screams and they will be reflected immediately as we will see here. And we can, of course, post our own screams by uh, pl pressing the plus button at the top and type in stuff as you see me here, type very slowly and uh, press in submit. And once we submit a post, it will immediately show up on the application. And we can, of course, like our own post as absurd as you or I might think that is. We can, of course, post as many screams as we want. And if we make a mistake, uh, we can also delete the scream. We're using the delete button will show us a scream, um, a confirm dial just to make sure that we don't accidentally delete them. We can see other users pages and their posts. And if we do log out right now, and if we do log in as the other user that we just liked and commented to their screen, uh, we will see uh, a bunch of notifications uh, informing us of exactly just that. And if we click on any notification, it will take us to that post that the notification was talking about. As I mentioned, our app will use Firebase as a backend, and this right here is the database, and we can see it update in real time as we add screens, which is gonna be super useful when we are developing our app. We can see our database collections, things like screens, notifications, and comments right here, and all the other collections. Uh, we can also see information about our users and stuff like that. We will also be using Redux for managing our application-wide state, which will hold the data needed in our React application. Uh, this right here is the Redux DevTools, uh, which will be super useful later when we are uh, developing our app. We will make it easier to see what's happening in our application, what data we have, and what errors we have. And uh, this will all be clear when we dive into the Redux later. Before we start anything, I just want to give a quick run through the tools that we're going to be using. Uh, starting with the big one, the front end library of choice that we're going to be using is React. Uh, React is a great framework for building component based web applications. Uh, even though it's technically not a framework, it's a library, we will be uh, complementing it with things like uh, React Router DOM and Axios and a couple of other libraries that will make it feel like a complete framework and will allow us to do everything that we need to do. Uh, so yeah, it's a great library for building components, building templates for our pages, and building dynamic markup for our uh, for our application pages. Now, I do have a big disclaimer though. If you are not familiar with React, uh, an absolute newbie and have never touched React, uh, this series is not for you. I recommend that you learn the basics of React and get comfortable with it, and of course, be comfortable writing JavaScript and then come back to the series and then you will do uh, some proper learning. If you're familiar with React, then you're right at home. So next thing is Firebase. Firebase is a great platform as a service. Uh, we will use it as our backend. It offers us multiple services of which we will use Cloud Firestore as a database. Uh, it's a real-time database and it gives us to access to a couple of really cool functionalities to use a NoSQL database, document-based, which we will see later. Uh, next thing is cloud functions. We're going to be, um, we're not going to be writing like a Node.js, uh, like server code, even though that cloud functions are based on Node.js, we will be writing a couple of functions that will be run whenever we need uh, to run them. Uh, next thing is authentication. We're going to be using Firebase authentication to register our users and uh, log them in and get authentication tokens and uh, a bunch of other cool stuff. 
and we will also use their cloud storage service to store our uh, profile images that are submitted by our users. Next thing is Material UI, which is something that I've come to learn and really love recently. Uh, Material UI is one of the best, if not the best, React implementation of uh, Google Material Design standards. Think of Google Material Design as like a CSS framework. It's a couple of standards for designing uh, user interfaces. Uh, it's really cool. I really like Material UI. They have amazing documentation, which makes uh, learning it and uh, implementing it really uh, smooth sailing. Next thing is, this might come as a surprise to some of you. We're going to be using Express. I know we're not using Node.js, but cloud functions are essentially Node.js code that is executed on demand. So we don't need to use Express, but it's better, I think, in my opinion, if we do, because it makes the code much cleaner, as you will see later. It will help us group our uh, code and separate our routes properly and uh, handle our requests and send our response uh, properly in writing our API. Uh, last but not least for sure is Redux. So our application is going to have a lot of components and they're going to need to access data. And best practice is when you have a lot of components and a lot of them need to access data is to not pass data from one to the other, AKA prop drilling. I will post a, a link to a really cool post that explains why Redux is a thing and why people use it instead of just passing props around. Uh, Redux makes it really seamless to have an application wide state that all the components can separately talk to and fetch data and send data to if needed. Uh, so yeah, we will of course be diving deeper into the definitions and functionalities of each of these tools when we work with them separately. I just wanted to quickly uh, show you what this series is going to be using. So in this video, we're going to start to work on our backend by uh, creating some of the cloud functions that will give us uh, access to our database and that will give users access to uh, the authentication service, uh, etc. So before we're going to start, uh, I'm going to go over some of the prerequisites that you need to work on this project. So number one is Node.js. Uh, we need this just to use NPM for installing some of the packages. Uh, number two will be VS Code. Now this is optional, but I recommend VS Code is the best text editor for me out there. Even a Atom and Sublime are pretty good as well, but some of the extensions on VS Code are really, are really, really good. Uh, number three is Postman. Uh, if you don't have it, download it. We're going to be using this to run uh, API requests to test our API. Um, either Windows, Mac OS or Linux, all download links are available. Um, I want to show you something on VS Code. Just so that we are on the same page, I will be using bracket pair colorizer, which will um, color some of the brackets differently that will make our code easier easier to read. Prettier, which formats the code uh, each time I save so that we don't have to indent. And ES7, React, Redux, etc. Uh, snippets, which will give us access to some of the snippets that would uh, generate code without, without us having to type all of it. Okay, that's it with the uh, prerequisites. So let's actually start creating our project. So here in firebase.google.com, uh, let's go to our console by clicking go to console. And as our console loads, now we can create our project, click add project, and let's call this social ape because that's what we all are at the end of the day, I guess. <laughs> Uh, select your region and country. I'm in the UK, so I'm going to select United Kingdom. Uh, select the server that is closest to you. To me, it's uh, Europe West. And hit I accept and create your project. This will now create a basic Firebase project with everything uh, initialized. Okay, now that it's done, we can click continue. Uh, first thing I want to do, let's go to functions. And once it loads, let's click get started, which gives us some instructions, tells us to install this package. Let's click continue and finish. We'll do this um, separately. Okay. Uh, let's go to our desktop or whatever, really. And I'm going to use the basic command line because it's interactive and not git bash. Uh, here, let's install that package. So npm install dash g firebase dash tools 
which will give us access to the uh, Firebase command line interface that will let us create our functions and deploy them to our application. And I'll be back once this is done installing. Okay, now that it's done installing, uh, by the way, you can just ignore this uh, message thing. It's not important. We can run Firebase login so that we can authenticate so that you would know who we are. And uh, for me, it says I'm already logged in. For you, maybe it will just pop up a uh, browser window and you just select your Google account. So here I'm gonna go to my desktop and I'm gonna create a directory called social ape dash functions. I'm gonna cd into that. And here we're gonna run Firebase init for initialize, which will create our project. We want to proceed, yes, and hit space on functions. And this is all that we're gonna select for now as uh, from services. And here you choose from your projects, choose the project that we just created. It's gonna ask us whether to use JavaScript or TypeScript. We're gonna use JavaScript. And ES Linton, I'm gonna say no to this. And let's say yes to installing packages, which will now install all the dependencies uh, that we need. I'm trying to think like two or three dependencies. So I'll be back once this is done. Okay, now this, this is done. If you have Visual Studio Code, you can run the command code dot, which will open this in VS Code. And there we go. So this is what we get, a get ignore file and a Firebase config file that has our project ID. Uh, if we go to the folder functions to index.js, this is where our functions will sit. And as you can see, if we uncomment this, this is a basic hello world function that comes shipped with uh, Firebase. Let's change this, this text to say hello world. And oops, hello world. Let's open up the command line and let's run Firebase deploy. This will now deploy this function so that we can test it and see if everything is working fine. Funny that a hello world function didn't actually have hello world as the return. <laughs> okay, so now we will deploy our function to our uh, to our functions and it will give us an endpoint which we can call to see the response from that function. And if you're uh, by any means familiar with uh, Node, this, this syntax of request response and a callback uh, should be familiar to you. If not, we will work with it and you, you will get familiar with it. Okay, so now that our function is deployed, we get an endpoint right here. So let's copy this and let's open up um, Postman and let's see if this is working. Let's wait for Postman to open. Let's put these uh, side by side. So let's paste this and let's hit send. And indeed it says, hello world. So we're up and running. Okay, let's do something a bit more complicated than that. Let's go to our project. Um, we're here, let's close these windows. Let's go to database and initialize our database. So we click create database and it asks us whether to start in locked mode or test mode, which these are like database access rules uh, that give us access to read or write some of the documents. For now, let's go in test mode, which will leave all resources open for everyone to edit, which is crazy, but we're not in production yet, so it's fine. Let's wait for it to set up everything. Now we can actually start creating some documents in our database. Uh, let's create the first collection, which will hold our posts, which are screams, if you remember. So screams is the collection name. And let's actually create our first uh, document. Uh, this will have a field uh, called user handle, which will determine, which will let us determine who, which user submitted this. Let's type user. And uh, now this user doesn't exist yet, but let's just roll with it for now. The body of the scream should say first scream R, I don't know. <laughs> and this will have a created add field. And this will be a timestamp. And let's give it the date of today. And it was posted at midnight because why not? And now this will create our first scream. 
Let's actually create another one quickly here. So user handle again, and it's the same user. Nice. And it's got the body field. This should say second screen. And let's add a created at field as timestamp and give it the date of the day. And let's say this was created at 1 a.m. So let's save. Now we have a database with a collection of screams with two documents in it. Uh, now let's try to, oops, yep. Let's try to actually fetch these posts from the database. So let's create another function. We'll call this exports dot get screams. And this will be from the functions namespace and from the HTTPS uh, area, I guess. And we will use on request, we will use some other handles, um, some other functions later, but for now we'll stick with on request, oops. So this will be, uh, we'll take a request and a response. And these are arguments, so we can name them however we want. And our function now needs access to the database. Uh, we will be using something called the admin SDK. Um, we will import that by doing constant admin. We already have the package installed. Let's do require. As you notice here, we're not doing import from. This is not ES6 because this is uh, this is basically no JS code. Let's do require Firebase admin. And to use the admin, we need to initialize our application. So we'll just do admin dot initialize app. And usually we would pass an application, but this project already knows that this is our ID of our application. So we just uh, do it like this. And now we have access to the admin uh, object. We can do admin dot firestore dot collection. And now we give it the name of the collection that we want to access. Um, by the way, all of this is in the documentation. If you want to see quickly, we can go to uh, Firebase. Actually, we can just Google. Just duplicate this. We can just Google Firebase uh, Firestore. And by the way, I really recommend uh, checking out the Firebase documentation. They're really, really comprehensive. So if we go to Fire Cloud Firestore and we go to read data, get data once. And let me change this for readability. And I believe, yeah, it's right here. So to get all documents in a collection, you run db.collection, which in this case is admin.firestore. And you give the name of the collection and you just run .get, which returns a promise, which holds a query snapshot. And in that query snapshot, we have an array of documents. And I'll show you how we're gonna fetch, that, fetch those. But let's actually uh, maximize this. So the collection is screams and let's do dot get and then we do dot then and we have some data and if you hover over here you see that this whoops this should not be any it should give us a type for some reason it doesn't okay let's just go with it for now so we say data yeah now it does so this is a query snapshot uh, type uh, which has a docs in it. So if you do data.docs, you'll see it has a property docs, which has an array of document snapshots, which are documents. So we can do uh, data dot for each document and we need to store them in something. So let's initialize an array called screams, which is an empty, empty for now. And here for each document, we want to do screams dot push and we don't just do doc because this is just a reference. We do doc.data, which is a function that returns the data that's inside the document. And now this after this for loop, this screen should be populated with the data of the screens that we have. Now we need to return them. So let's do uh, return response dot uh, JSON to return it as a JSON object. And let's do screams. Um, and let's put a colon. And of course this returns a, uh, a promise. It will be good practice to catch any errors that might happen. So we do catch error. And if any error happens, we just wanna console it, um, log it to the console. 
using console error, um, error, like this. Now we hit save, and now we can do Firebase deploy again. And this will deploy our function, and we can test if it's actually working. Okay, now that our function is deployed, we can actually uh, test it. So let's copy this endpoint, and let's go to Postman. Let's make this bigger, and let's paste our endpoint here, and hit send. And this should bring up the documents that we just created, and it does. So this is the first document, or rather this is the second document, which says second screen, and this is the first one, which says first screen R. Perfect. So, so this is for getting documents. Let's create another function for actually creating documents. So let's do exports dot, um, let's call it this create screen. And uh, we can actually just copy this like this and remove the code inside of it. And here we're gonna get a request body because this should be a post request. So let's initialize our uh, screen. Let's call this new screen. And this will have a body of request. And our request will have a body and don't get confused, this this body is the body of the request and we're going to do dot body, which is a property in the body of the request and this will make sense in a second. And the user handle will be request dot body dot user handle. And we need a created at, so let's do created at equals, um, I think this is admin dot firestore dot time st timestamp dot we'll use a function called from date which will create a timestamp from a normal JavaScript date object. So we do new date, we pass it a new date and now we have our object we need to persist it in our database. So let's do admin dot firestore dot um, collection and the same collection screams this time we're going to use a function called add, which will take a JSON object and adds it, add it to our database. And the object in this case is our new screen object. And this again returns a promise. So we do dot then. And this will give us uh, a document reference as a response, which is actually, which we're not going to do anything with this document reference. So we need, we can just do this because we're not going to do anything. Actually we are, let's get that document reference. Now, if we are here, that means the document has been created. So we can return a response, a response.json. And this will have a message that will say, well, I'm gonna put backticks because we're gonna put a variable inside of here. And we'll say document. And let's do dollar sign curly braces to pass the ID of the document, which is a property in a document reference type. We we'll just do doc.id. And we need to say create, uh, we're going to say created successfully. Now, if there was an error, we're going to do catch error for some reason. We'll do a uh, console dot, actually, let's return a response. So we will do res, res.json. And but actually, no, uh, because there was an error, we need to change the status code. We shouldn't return the status code of 200 which means success. Let's do dot status and let's give a status code of 500 because this is a server error. And let's give a JSON object that will have a error prop, um, property or key. And this will say something um, went wrong. And let's actually console um, error it as well. Um, error. Okay, so let's save. Now we can run Firebase deploy and test it. There's nothing wrong with that, but deployment takes some time. We can instead run Firebase serve, which will serve our application locally, which is so much faster and will give us the ability to uh, save and then immediately serve again. And we don't have to deploy each time we make a change and we want to test. So now this is gonna 
serve locally uh, using our machine as a server and give us the endpoints. So let's take the create scream endpoint. As you can see, it says localhost instead of the endpoint that we had earlier. And let's open up a new tab and let's test this. Let's change the type of the request to, the po to a post request and let's give it a body. Um, we're going to click raw and select application slash JSON. And let's give this a body of a new screen. And let's give this a user handle of um, let's say new. And let's send the request. And and it says document something something created successfully. And if we go to our Firebase database and we check, I don't know why I clicked that, it shows without us reloading, and there we go. Our new screen is here. And what's beautiful about this, if we put them side by side, and we say new screen 2, and we click send, it updates in real time, and we see, oops, we see new screen 2. Fantastic. Now, we shouldn't, th there's a problem here, which is that if I would send a get request to this, uh, of course, without a body, it will say we have an error, like a server error, when actually this is not a server error, this is a client error. We shouldn't send a get request to a route that is meant for a post request. We can prevent this by doing uh, this. So we can say if request, oops, if request dot method does not equal post, we should stop here and return a response. So res dot status. Uh, it's not going to be five hundred. This is going to be four hundred, which means this is a problem from the client. This is a bad request. And let's say send a JSON with an error that says method not allowed. Now this will solve the problem of uh, not having to answer to a GET request. So if we go to Postman and if we click Send, this time it will say method not allowed with an error code, uh, rather a status code of 400. So you can start to see how this is coming together and how we can send the request to fetch data, send request to persist data. And this is obviously just the start. We're going to have so much more. Uh, in, next, in the next video, we're going to start to implement Express to so that we don't have to say this if request method on each request and we can group our requests and handle them so much better using Express. So let's install now Express and make this code look much better than it does now. So one problem with uh, having our function structured like this is that when we want to have two uh, endpoints of our API uh, point at the same uh, name of the endpoint but handle two different uh, uh, functionalities, we would have to put everything in one function and check the request method and respond um, accordingly, which doesn't look really good. So this is this is one of the things that Express is going to help us with. Okay, so let's install Express. Let's go to the console and uh, make sure that we are in the functions folder so cd functions and run npm install dash dash save oops save express and once in it's installed we can actually start bringing it in and yeah it's installed let's do const um yeah express equals require express um and when you have to initialize the app, let's do const app equals express and call it like a function because that's what it is. Uh, let's remove this comment and this hello world function. We don't need them anymore. And let's see how we can change this route. So instead of get screams, we can actually copy this code that's inside of the get screams route and get rid of this. And we can do app dot get and we do slash screams uh, because the first parameter of this function is the uh, name of the route and the second one is the handler, which takes a request and a response, similar to what we did uh, like earlier. And here we're gonna paste back the code that we had and 
Now this on its own will not do the trick. We need to tell Firebase that this app is the container for all our routes or actually the routes that are in the app. So we can do exports. And this is one of the things that, um, that Express will let us do because what we want to have is one of the best practices for having an API is if we let's say have an endpoint HTTPS and let's say our base URL is called baseurl.com. We don't want something like this straight away slash screams because it's good practice to have slash API and slash something because on the actual base URL itself, you might have your website, but when you do slash API slash whatever, you can have your API there. In some cases they do API dot base URL, but uh, it's just different uh, conventions. So we want this prefix. So what we're gonna do now is that we're gonna do exports dot API equals functions dot uh, HTTPS dot on request. And here, instead of uh, passing one route and one function, we just pass our app and this will automatically turn into multiple routes. And now if we save and if we deploy, so we run Firebase deploy, uh, it should prompt us a, it should ask us that whether we're sure we're gonna delete the uh, get screams function because we just deleted that code. Yes, it does. We will say yes, delete hello world and get screams because we don't need them anymore. Okay, now that it's deployed, we can actually go to our um, Firebase console, go to functions, make sure you're on that project. And there we go. We have this one function called API and we have create scream and the other ones that we created are gone. Okay, so let's actually test this. So we go to Postman and I believe, well, we will not go to localhost because we didn't do a serve. So let's actually copy this. Um, oops, let's go to here and copy this endpoint. Yep, from here and go to Postman. And if we type this, we have to add our actual endpoint, which is screams as we set it to be. And we, we send a get request and we wait for it and there we go we get our screams and now if we send a post request it should fail and it does fail and it says that the route was not found which is cool because uh, so now we don't have to do this thing where we do if request method equals post don't send an error the like express takes care of that okay so let's change the create scream route as well so what we're gonna do is actually just do delete this part I'll just write app.post and the route would be slash scream. And this is the handler. And here, I think everything is fine. And we don't check if it's a post because this is automatically doing that. And let's leave everything as is for now. And actually, instead of deploying, let's just serve so that we can test it locally. We don't have to deploy. So we run Firebase serve. So now that it's served, and by the way, if you get a warning that your node uh, version is higher than the one that Google Cloud Functions support, don't worry about that. As long as you write your code that is um, compatible with Node 6 and you don't use any features that are not supported by Node 6, you should be fine. So let's copy this and let's go to Postman. Oops, not Chrome, Postman. Let's paste this here because now we're on a local host. And if we leave this as a post request and we add scream without an S and we give it a request body and this request body will have a body, uh, new scream, I think three, we didn't submit three and the user handle and let's say Johnny uh, yeah, that's it. If we send, it should successfully create a scream. And yes, document something, something created successfully. And if we go to our database, just to make sure. And where is it? There it is. So scream three by Johnny. Brilliant. Okay, so let's go here. Let's actually uh, fix up the screams route. 
what I want to do is that on e whenever we return a scream, I want to return its ID as well. And you'll see later why we actually need it. So here, instead of pushing all what's inside of that scream, let's push an object. And this will have a scream ID. And we will take this from doc.id. It's a property that the doc document uh, reference uh, or snapshot rather has access to. Uh, let's get the body, which is doc. Uh, sadly, this is node six, so we cannot use the, like maybe some of you are thinking, why don't we just do this? Um, like uh, doc.data, which is called a spread operator and just spread all those properties. But because this is node six, this feature is not yet supported. So we have to do, um, we have to do them one by one. So body is doc.data body and user handle is doc dot data dot oops dot user handle and uh, what else do we have created at is doc dot data dot created at um I think this is it yeah this is it okay so if we save now, when we get the screams, uh, I forgot to postman when we get the screams. So let's add an S here, make this a get request and remove the body. If we send this request, cause we're still serving, it should update. And there we go. We get the scream ID, um, as part of our scream. Cool. Uh, now let's change something because there's a problem here. We want to order our function, um, our screams and we want to get the latest one first. So let's actually order them by date. And we can do that by after collection screams, let's chain a method called order by, and let's pass the property of created at, make sure I don't misspell anything. And this by default takes a, an ascending order, but we want descending. We want the latest one to be uh, first. So let's hit control save and we go and we send this request and we should get uh, the latest screen first. And we do the one we just submitted earlier. Brilliant. Now, one thing I want to change as well is that these created at, uh, I don't want to use the Firebase timestamp um, type. Uh, let's just use a normal uh, date string because that's recognized uh, in JavaScript and we can format it however we want. We want. So, here when we create the screen, I don't want to use the timestamp thing anymore thing anymore. Let's just use new date and let's just transform this into an ISO string. So dot de new date dot to ISO string and it's a function. So this will uh, make it into a string and uh, let's let me actually do that. I'll do something. Well, let's create a file called DB schema. And this, by the way, has no implications whatsoever on our code. It's just something that I like to do. Let's do let db equal. Uh, here, we're going to write how our data is going to look like uh, just as a reference uh, thing. We're not going to use this file in, in anything. So I want each screen to have um, actually in the database. It's not going to have screen ID. We just return that from our code. It's going to have a user handle, though which we will use to identify who is the owner of this screen. Let's make this an object like this, like this. Okay. It's going to have a user handle and uh, let's give this a dummy uh, value of user. It's going to have a body. Give this a dummy value of um, this is the screen body. And it's going to have a created at and this is an ISO string now. Let's actually quickly like generate one. So let's do new date uh, to ISO string, uh, not ISO end string, ISO string. Uh, let's copy this. I, I know you don't have to do this, but it, it just, I think it's, uh, it's good practice as a reference point. You don't have to open Firebase each time. Uh, one other property that we get one, two other properties actually we're going to have, we're going to have like count, which is going to be a number, let's say five, and we're going to have comment count. Now this is good practice because each time we get a scream, we don't want to as well 
check the comments that have the ID of the stream and count them and return that number because Firebase charges you on the amount of reads that you do. So you're trying to minimize the amount of reads that you execute each time a user sends a request. So if you store these here already, you will uh, avoid uh, too many reads on your database and be charged less. Okay, so let's let's just leave this for now. So this is what our screams would look like. And uh, uh, yeah, okay, so this is, let's test this scream, this post scream. Let's make sure it's still working. So let's send a, let's, let's open up a new tab so we don't have to type the URL again. Okay, so post, I'm gonna have a body of type application JSON. And let's give this a body of new scream for, I don't know, I don't feel creative right now. <laughs> a user handle of Jane. And we send this request. Oops, not screams, scream. We send this post request. And there we go, we get a document, uh, something, something was created. Um, let's go to our database. And now we see the new one and where is it? The new screen four. And now the creator that is a string instead of a timestamp. Cool. Okay. So I think this is it for this video. Uh, actually one, one thing that I want to add for those of you that are not uh, in America and you're wondering why your functions are being deployed to, where is it? To us central instead of uh, Europe. Uh, by default, Firebase deploys to US zone US central one. Now this is a, a bit of a problem because it's gonna add like 300 to 400 milliseconds of latency on each request. It, maybe it's not a problem right now in testing, but later in production, this is gonna slow down your application. So if you are like me in Europe and you wanna change the deployment uh, region, you just chain after uh, functions here, you chain the method region and you specify the string, the name of the region. In my case, it's gonna be Europe dash West one. And by the way, you can go to Google Docs, Google Firebase documentations to find all the regions available. Uh, if you're in America, this doesn't apply to you. Just leave it as is. By changing this next time we deploy, it's gonna actually be deployed to uh, the uh, zone Europe West one. In this video, we're gonna to start to work on authentication and on signing up users in particular. Let's go to our uh, project dashboard. Let's go to authentication and enable it by clicking here, set up sign in method. And here on email slash password, let's enable it and click save. Let's go to our project settings and let's go here, your apps, and let's grab this config object and let's go to our project. Now we're gonna be using the uh, Firebase library, uh, which is a actually a client library, but we're gonna use it to sign in and sign up our users and get uh, authentication tokens. So let's cd into functions and let's run npm install dash dash save Firebase. Okay, so let's initialize our Firebase application. Let's, let's import it. So const Firebase equals require Firebase and let's do Firebase dot initialize app and we need to pass it that config uh, object. Let's do here const and let's paste in our config actually not var const and let's take this config and pass it to as the argument to initialize app so that Firebase knows which app we're talking about. Uh, let's actually make this express line um, ex express into one line by doing require express and calling it on the same line. I think it just looks neater like this and let's put it up here. Um, let's create our sign up route. Let's delete this comment, replace it with another comment saying sign up route. And this would be an, a post route. So app dot post and it would be slash sign up and the ha oh, yeah, it's gonna have a handler so request response as the arguments and uh, now we need to extract the form data from our uh, request body so let's do const new user equals an object and it's gonna have an email 
if you remember, our form has an email, a password, a confirm password, and a handle field. So let's do email equals request.body.email, comma, and let's copy this line and paste it three more times. Select email, control D, and do password. Select email, control D, confirm password, and handle. Uh, we're not gonna validate the data for now, but let's write a to do here, validate data, and let's sign up our user. So let's use the Firebase package we installed. Firebase dot uh, auth as a function like this, dot create user with email and password, and let's pass it exactly that. So new user dot email, and the second argument will be new user password this returns a, a promise so let's do dot then data which I think is credentials uh, it's user credentials so let's do re if we are here that means we have successfully registered so let's return a response response dot status of actually 201 which means resource created let's give a JSON object with a message uh, with a template string because we need to use a variable. Let's say user and let's do dollar sign curly braces to use a variable data dot user dot UID which stands for user ID and let's say uh, signed up successfully and of course let's catch any potential errors and let's console dot error the error and let's return res dot uh, status of 500 oops 500 server error and it's gonna have a JSON with an error let's pass the error code let's return it in case there's any error let's save and let's run firebase serve and see if this is working let's copy this endpoint go to postman actually already have it so let's do slash sign up instead of screams and it's gonna be a, a post request it's gonna have a body of type application JSON so we're gonna have an email let's say this is user at email.com we're gonna have a password of uh, one two three four five six we're gonna have a confirm password which does which does nothing right now but it will later one two three four five six and the handle which is gonna be user so let's send this request and we get user the ID of the user signed up successfully and we get our code of 201 cool so if we go to our uh, firebase project let's close this let's go to authentication and there we go we get our user with this user ID right here let's copy this user ID and I'll tell you why in a second um, what we need to do right now is that Firebase by default uh, doesn't allow us to store more information in about our users in the authentication uh, collection but what we can do manually is we can create um, of course right now manually but later programmatically we can create a collection here we call it users and this will store uh, documents for each user we will have one document that holds uh, extra details that we need such as uh, the handle and later like a bio uh, image URL any extra details that you want to add so and the key thing that I want to do here is that our users, uh, of course, by default, because of Firebase, um, even though we can change this, but by default, each user is uh, each email is restricted to one user, so the email has to be unique. But we want to also have the handle as a unique thing, like of course, because this website is kind of like uh, a copy of Twitter, so our handles will be unique. So we can use our handles as the ID. So here, let's not. To do auto ID and let's give the ID of the user that we just created which is user as the document ID and here we're gonna have a user ID key and the value of that is the ID you just copied and we're gonna have a created at 
and let's give this a timestamp the date today and say I don't know midnight it doesn't matter uh, let's add another field um, this is gonna hold what do we, what does this hold actually yeah let's let's put the email actually because if we need it we're gonna have it here so user at email dot com I think this is all what we have uh, for, for now so let's save so now what we need to do each time someone signs up we need to check this collection and we need to make sure that uh, this handle is not taken so if right now if someone tries to sign up with a handle of user uh, the desired uh, behavior should be you cannot sign up because this handle is already taken and if they try to sign up with the same email firebase will automatically give them that error so let's actually write the code that uh, checks for the handle being unique. Let's look at our uh, db dot. Actually, we don't have db yet. Okay, let's change something. I saw this in the in the Firebase documentations, and I like it. Let's do db const db equals admin dot firestore as a function like this, and wherever we need firestore, we just do db dot. So let's replace wherever we find admin.firestore like this, we replace it with db because it makes more sense. So db, and there we go. Okay, so in our signup route, we need to do db.collection users.document. Actually, we, we can do document without the collection. So let's do db.document, and we need to pass it the path. So let's do a template string and the pass will be slash users for the collection and the document will be let's do dollar sign curly braces new user dot handle and let's do dot get and of course this returns a promise and this will hold a uh, as we see here document snapshot yes document snapshot so doc and the way Firebase works, even if this document doesn't exist, we'll have a snapshot. So what we need to do is we need to have a conditional here, say if doc.exists, which is a boolean, if this document exists, it's true. So if this document exists, then this is a problem because uh, this handle is already taken. So let's return res.status of uh, let's give 400 a bad request and let's give a JSON response and the way we're gonna structure our uh, react app is that we're gonna return a and a not an array an object containing errors and for if the error pertains to any field let's say if the error pertains to the email the errors name will be email so in this case the errors name will be handle and the message will be this handle is already taken all right, and if this document doesn't exist, then cool, let's create this user. So let's do here, uh, so let's do Firebase. So let's do this, Firebase dot all of this. Now Firebase dot auth, create user with email and password, new user email and this. But since we're already in a then block, we need to return this, so return. So we return this and then we chain another dot then. So that we will have the result or, or like the uh, the return promise from this call here well which will hold uh, data let's do here now this if we get here that means we have our user created uh, what we need to do now is I want to return uh, an access token an authentication token to our user so that the user will later use to request more uh, data so we can do that by, uh, we know that in data here, we have access to uh, uh, the ID. So let's do user ID equals data dot user dot UID for user ID. And we can do data dot, actually user ID, or is it user ID? Actually, we can even call it on the user itself. We don't need this. So we can do data dot user dot get ID token right now it's not recognizing the uh the type for some reason but this should work get id token and this this actually is a uh, re 
it returns a promise. So let's do return like this. And yeah, like this. And then let's chain another dot then. And this will have a token. So token. Don't know why the types are not being return um, being displayed properly, but let's just go with it. Let's return the token. So let's return the response dot JSON. Um, let's give the status again of two hundred and one dot JSON uh, token. We can just say token like this because the name of the property and the name of the value are the same. So token like this should have the uh, value of our token. Okay, let's delete this code here and let's do a dot catch error in case any error happens. Console dot error the error and let's return it as a response. Res dot status 500 JSON with an error error dot code. Cool. Okay, let's actually just not put them side by side. Let's run the same. Let's actually re register a new user. So let's say new at email, the same password and the handle is new. This should return us a token and it does. So we have an access token right now and this we will use to uh, use whenever we need uh, to access a route that is uh, protected. Okay, let's try to actually register a user that already exists. So let's send the same request. So send, we should get, and there we go. We get an, an internal server or email already exists. Okay, so we shouldn't, this shouldn't be happening. We shouldn't get, actually, no, this should be happening because it's the error from here. So let's handle it here. We want, we don't want to return it like this. We want to check if the code of the error is this code exactly here. That means it's not a server error, it's just actually, it is a client error technically. So what we need to do here, we can do um, if error.code, not code, equals this string auth, email already uh, in use, we need to return, um, yeah, I think, yeah, 400. Let's give a res.status. 400.json and the error pertains to email. So it's the email and we say email is already in use. And if it's anything else, so else return this. And uh, do we, do we handle any other errors? I think we don't. Okay. So let's go to postman again. Let's send this request. Cool, email is already in use. Now, we haven't yet uh, created a field for this. We need to create, a, a not a field, a document for our user whenever they register. So let's do that. So right here, before we get the token, do we do it before we get the token? Actually, we don't, we don't return this token here. So let's store it in a variable. Let's do here, um, let token initialize token here and then here we have let's do token equals token and here instead of returning a response let's um, let's let's do const user credentials equals and let's create our user document so this will have a handle of new user dot handle and we will have the email of new user dot email and uh, we will have a created at which will be new date to iso why do i always type the n after iso okay to iso string make sure you didn't misspell anything and uh, we need the, the user id here uh, user ID, oh, actually, how do we access the user ID? Oh, we need to put the user ID as well in a variable so that we can access it. So let's declare the user ID here. And we have access to it here. So let's do user ID 
equals data dot user dot uid and then we use we use it here oops not this user id or we can just do this because it's the same name okay here we now we need to persist these credentials into a document in our uh, collection in our users collection so we need to do db dot document and this will be in the users collection don't forget by the way uh thing template literal string so slash users slash and we will give it we'll give it the handle as the document id so this will be new user dot handle and we need to do dot set which creates the document uh unlike get so let's pass this user uh credentials um Oh, this returns a promise. I keep forgetting, so let's return it. And then let's do yet again another then. I promise you, I'm pretty sure this is the last then. <laughs> uh, what do we get? We get some data here. What type of data is... Oh, it's a right result. This is actually useless. So let's just not even use it. <laughs> okay, return uh, res.json. Um, res.status, let's give the status. I don't I can just return 200, but I just like to return 201 once something is created. So status 201, JSON, and we need the token. So token, yeah, this will work because it's the same name. Yeah, the same name, the property. And let's save. Let's actually, um, let me delete this. Let's delete the... Uh, the entire document, uh, the entire collection, and let's delete these two users because I don't want to keep coming up with new emails. <laughs> okay, let's test this out. Make sure we saved. We did, or I did. Make sure you saved as well. Let's do this as user again. User has to be the first one. Okay, send. Let's cross our fingers and hope for a token and we get 201 but an empty object interesting let's go here we refresh we get our user we go to the database a users collection has been created cool and the id is user and we have the details here everything is fine but why don't we get the token back okay so the problem was variable naming ambiguity I named this token and this was token as well. And okay, so I've, this is token now. And then I uh, renamed the return from the promise uh, to ID token and then assigned token, th this token to this ID token. And then here as the re response, I return token, which will hold the value of this. And if we test this, we go here and we do uh, new five, I don't know, new five, and we post. And we get the token back. Cool. In this video, we're going to be implementing validation to validate the data that's coming in and making sure that it's valid before we do anything related to our database. And we're also going to write a login route where users can uh, log in. The reason, one of the reasons why we need um, validation is that, for example, if I would do this, I would give an empty email and I would give a, a handle that exists. It would already go and check. Oops, I need to run um, Firebase serve. Uh, if I would send data without an email, but with a handle that exists, it will already go because of how our code is structured, check whether this handle is taken or not. Instead of just stopping here, and saying that oh the email must not be uh, must not be empty so and if you would give as well no handle it would uh, I don't even know I would would do it would just give us like some weird error like this I guess uh, yeah the value of the argument or something like this but we need to just validate everything ourselves and return errors accordingly so. Yeah, the document path. Yeah, it was the, um, we gave an empty string right here and it caused a problem. Okay, so what we need to do right now is we need to validate each field. What we want to do is that 
we need to make sure that email is not empty and email is actually in a valid email address and password and confirm password and handle all of them we need to make sure they're not empty and we need to make sure that the password and the confirm password match so they're the same value okay so let's start implementing so let's start working on the email so we need to make sure that it's not empty let's write a helper function that lets us determine whether a string is empty or not so let's do const is empty which is a function that takes a string and does the following so it does if string dot trim oops not string dot trim so we need to make sure that uh, we eliminate any white spaces because someone can uh, submit like one space and that would be considered not empty and we don't want that behavior so we need to trim and if it equals an empty string then return true <coughs> else return uh, return false simple as that okay so here what we need to do is we need to say if uh, is empty um, new user dot email then uh, we need to return all the errors together so what we need to do here is we need to uh, declare or um, how do we say initialize an errors object and set it to an empty object and here if we have an empty email if the email is empty we need to um, set a property in this errors object and say errors.email equal uh, say email must not be empty now if it is not empty then we need to check whether it's a valid email and we need to check for empty first because we don't check whether it's a valid email if it's empty anyway so here we do else if and here we're going to use another helper method so let's create it now and this method would be oops const is email equals and it takes an email as a as an argument and it checks whether this is a valid email now we could use like a, a validating JavaScript library, but there's no need. We just need these two helper methods. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to paste here a regular expression. So let's do a const reg x equals all of this. And I'll post this in the uh, video description. Don't let this intimidate you. It's just a regular expression that matches for a pattern of an email. So what we will do here, we'll do if email which is this string that we pass to the function dot match, which is a function that matches a string against a regular expression. And we pass it our regular expression right here. If they do match, then we return true. That means this is a uh, formatted. This string is formatted as an email. It is a valid email and else return false. Uh, what did I do? <laughs> true, false, return false. Okay, cool. So here we do else if is email or rather not is email. So if it is not an email and we pass new user dot email, if it's not an email, we do errors dot email equal uh, must be a valid email address. Okay, so this is for the email. Now let's do the other three fields. So first one is password. So if um, is empty, new user dot pass dot password, uh, then errors dot password. We could just do it in line like this. Equals uh, must not be empty. And let me, by the way, change this to just must not be empty because uh, it, on the front end, when you have an email input that says email on it, it's not, it doesn't look pretty when under the email as well, there's a, another error message saying email must not be empty. The user already knows that this is the email field. So it's more proper to say just must not be empty. And this is must not be empty. And do we do the same? We don't do the same for password, uh, for confirm password rather. In fact, we will just uh, check if they are um, equal to each other. So what we need to do is that if 
new password or new user dot password does not equal new user dot confirm password then uh, errors dot confirm password equals um, passwords must match or must be the same it's up to you okay the next thing is the handle so the handle must not be empty as well so we could just copy this and paste it and replace password with handle and now what we need to do is that here we have this errors object we need to make sure that this errors object is empty that means there's no errors that means we can proceed with the rest of the logic otherwise if there is a key in this errors object that means we have an error we should just break here and return so what we need to do is that uh, let's do if object uh, with a capital O because this is a JavaScript namespace uh, or class rather object dot keys and we pass it errors dot length we need to make sure that the the length of the array of keys is not equal uh, is not bigger than zero because if it is that means we have some errors if it is bigger than zero then we just return res dot status of 400 dot json and we pass it the errors i think this is it so let's actually test this and we save and we go to postman and here let's let's send just empty values like this see what happens Cool, we get email and password and handle. We don't get confirm password, but that's okay. So let's try to give it a, a an invalid email. Let's, try, let's give it a password, but no confirm password. Cool, it must, must be a valid email address for email. Confirm password, it says passwords must match. Let's actually must match passwords. And it says, yeah, okay, so that confirm password error is gone. Now let's give a valid handle. Now, oh, I forgot to change the address, so let's give a valid email address. And now it should go through. Cool. It still give us, gives us another error, but this is from later on when we check whether the handle exists or not. Cool, so our validation is working. One thing you do have to note though, if we give if we miss out on a key and not pass it, it will it will have an internal error and not report anything back. But I'm okay with this because we will be the only people consuming our own API, so that so we will make sure from the React side, uh, because it's an HTML input, it will never send a key uh, that is undefined or null. It will send an empty value, but it will still send that key. It will just send an empty value, and then we'll get the error the proper error validation. So we shouldn't worry about that. All right, so that's validation done for our signup route. Let's actually write the login route. So let's scroll down here. Let's do <coughs> app.post and this will be slash login. This will have, as per usual, a request, a response for the handler. And we need to now validate the data for uh, for the login. And the login takes two things, an email and a password. So let's do const user equals, and this is the user will have an email from the request body. Um, I'm not sure, can we use, Never mind. actually, request.body.email, and the password is request.body, password and here we do a uh, validation as well so let errors equal an empty object and let's do if uh, is empty and we pass user dot email if it's empty then errors dot email equals must not be empty and oops and if let's copy the same thing actually let's select email control d and do password and password must not be empty 
as to if object dot keys and pass errors is bigger than z oops what am I doing <laughs> that length is bigger than zero then we need to return rest dot status 400 and the JSON errors so here if we don't have any um, errors whatsoever we need to actually log in the user so firebase dot no actually dot auth dot sign in so it's sign in with um, with email and password and then pass those so user dot email and then user dot password this returns a um, a, a thing um, <laughs> a promise so dot then data and then we need to do the same as in the sign in uh, as in the sign up rather and we need to return the token so what we need to do here is do return data dot get id token and chain another dot then and this will have the token and we just do return res dot um, json we don't need this to do a status code and we just put token like this dot catch if we have any error the usual console dot log not log error rather error and return res dot status 500 dot json um, error error dot code all right so let's test this out we save and we're still serving so let's go to postman um let's check which users we have i'm forgetting so we have user at email.com so let's go here change this to login and <clears throat> what am i doing uh raw yeah what's happening why does it look like this okay so oh yeah application json email is user and password is that we hit send and we should get a token and we don't we get an internal server error why is that <coughs> get id token oh okay because it's data.user dot get id token okay let's go back postman send and we should get a token cool we do let's uh, test out the validation so empty email yep must not be empty and the wrong password oh we should handle this actually so let's go here if we have an error uh, let's do if error.code equals this code that we just got then <coughs> let's return response dot status uh, 403 which uh, which is which means unauthorized and JSON error actually not error let's just say uh, give general and this will make sense later um, we'll, let's say wrong credentials please try again and if it's any other error we just return it so else like this return that and let's save and let's test it so the same input let's hit send and there we go we get wrong credentials pre please try again cool so now we got the login route working and the sign up route and we have validation um yeah we're done for this video so in the next one we're gonna be implementing uh, middleware we're gonna be making sure that each time someone's because right now our send post uh, submit uh, scream request route rather is not protected so we need to make sure that whenever someone submits a post they are actually logged in so that this route is protected okay so so far in our application we have two routes 
the scr slash screams, which gets also the screams, and the slash post, I mean post at slash scream, which posts one scream. Uh, since we have already implemented authentication, it would be nice to have some code here that would check uh, the authentication token that's being sent from the user to see whether this user has logged in or not because this should be a protected route. We don't want anyone posting screams to our database. They have to be logged in. Uh, that's one functionality. And the other functionality would be, we need to extract the user handle from that data and then uh, submit it into our database. So if we were to look at our database, our screams are stored having one property inside the document saying um, that's called user handle, which has the handle of the user. So we can know whose scream this is. So the way this, this is done is that whenever we post a, uh, an, a request to a protected route, we need to add a header called authorization, right? Like this. And we will have a value of bearer space and then a token right here. So it would be something like this, but of course this would be an actual token. So let's actually write code that would decode this token or like obtain this token and get data from it and then make sure that um, our request is authorized. All right, so we would actually, we could write the code right here, but since we need this functionality for multiple routes, then we need to make this into a function and then run it, uh, chain it before any request. So let's actually write this in a function and the way express works is that we can pass a second argument to um to this post or any actually any route and this argument would be a function that does something that intercepts the request and then does something depending on what the request uh, has and then decides whether to proceed towards our handler or to stop there and send a response aka a middleware a piece of middleware so let's Let's call our middleware, which we haven't created yet, FB auth for Firebase authentication. And let's create it here. So let's do const. So it's going to be a function. Const FB auth equals, and it's going to take three things. Uh, two you've already seen, the request and then the response. And the third one is called next, which is going to, uh, which is something that if we return it and call it as a function, it's going to proceed towards our handler right here. And we can chain as many pieces of middleware as we need, but in this case, we only need one. Okay, so here we have access to our request object. What we need to do is that we need to check if request, oops, no, not release, request.headers.authorization. Uh, so if this exists and we need to check. Now we don't have to do the bearer thing, but it's a convention and in multiple frameworks and other languages. And it, it's a, a good, it's a good standard, a con good convention that everyone follows that your token has to be, uh, has to start with, uh, the bearer space, um, string. So what we need to do here is we need to do another check, another condition, which is request dot headers dot authorization dot starts with which is a javascript uh, function that checks that a string starts with a certain other string and let's do bearer space now if of course uh, as it suggests if our string starts with bearer space the, and and it exists then this condition is satisfied so we'll go in here and actually we need to initialize a id token variable here. So let's do let ID token. And then here, if these are true, that means our ID token equals request dot headers dot authorization. Now remember, we need to extract it. We need to extract it because there is a, a bearer space before it. So what we need to do is we need to uh, do dot split which is a JavaScript function that splits a string by a certain other string. So if we split it by bearer space, that means it's gonna have an array of two 
uh, it's going to give us back an array of two strings. The first one is bearer space and the second one will be the left, which is the token. So let's do one. That means we want to take the, the second element, which is the token. And now that we have our token, we can proceed with our logic. But we need to do an else statement here, because if we don't have an authorization header or it doesn't start with bearer, we need to actually stop the request here and send back an error response. So let's do return response.status 403, because this is uh, an unauthorized uh, error. And uh, let's do JSON with an error that says uh, un authorized I misspelled that unauthorized cool okay um, and let's actually console log this just in case console or console error it and let's say uh, no token found all right so here if if we pass through here that means there is a token so it's not enough that there is a token, we need to actually verify that this token uh, was issued by our application and not from somewhere else. So what we need to do is that we need to do admin dot auth. And here we have a function called verify ID token. And we will pass it our ID token. ID token and this returns a promise. So we do dot then. And this promise holds an, a decoded ID token as you see here. So let's do decoded token and oops, like this and then here what we need to do is we need to um, this decoded token holds the data that is inside of our uh, token and which is going to be user data so we need to um, add this data to our request object so that when this request proceeds forward to let's say this route our request here will have extra data that we've added from this middleware in this case, it's going to be user data. So what we need to do is that request dot user equals decoded decoded token. Did I misspell that? No, it's fine. Okay, so decoded token. And we also need to get the handle because this by default doesn't have the handle because the handle is not stored in Firebase author authentication system. It's stored in our collection users. So we need to actually uh, do a, a database request. Let's do return db dot uh, collection users and we've also stored user ID uh, in our users collection so we can do where user ID equal equal oops equal equal and we already have the uh, the user in the request so we can do request dot user and this will have a property of UID. And let's actually, here, let's console log the, um, the, the decoded token just so that you see what it looks like. Okay, so now where we have this, we need to limit, let's, let's do a limit one, which, which does exactly that, limits our results to just one document. And let's run get, and then let's chain another then. <laughs> And we get data back, and because this is a a db dot collection uh, query, and we're using where, even though that we've limited it to one, this will still have a docs property, which is an array, and of course it's going to have only one element. But uh, to access it, we need to access the docs. So we need we want to add a property to our request user. So request dot user dot handle, and let's do equals data dot docs the array and then we take the first element dot data the function which extracts the data from this document dot handle i believe we have a handle i think let's check in our users yeah we have a handle property so we're getting this object and then we're getting this property and attaching it to our request dot user cool so now here, when we get here, we need to return next as a function like this, which will uh, allow the uh, request to proceed towards here. So now that we have this set up, um, actually let's handle the, the catch block because here if it verifies the token and the token and it fails at verifying it, that means this token is either expired or blacklisted or from some other issuer, if it fails, it will come here. 
and here we catch the error and we need to send the error an error an error and let's actually console error this error and let's say um, error while very fine oh boy <laughs> very how do you spell very fine <laughs> very fine token and we put uh, the error like this and let's do return response dot status again of 403 and json uh, error is already adjacent so we can just do this and then uh, okay so this is done so here now this means in this route or in any other route where we add this fb auth as a middleware if we get here by the by the time we get to this block of code, we've already been um, verified and we've already it's already been checked that we are authenticated and we have access to request.user. So what we need to do is here in user handle, we just need to do, because we have this user now, so we just need to do request.user.handle because we, we've added it to our request uh, thing. So for our, uh, post request we just need to send a body and that will be enough all right so let's actually test if all of this is working so we save and we do firebase serve okay let's copy this endpoint I think I already have it on in postman yes I do let's log in to get a token so the same data is still valid uh, Apparently it's not. Oh yeah, okay. <laughs> I just needed to correct the password. Okay, we get a token. Um, let's now uh, send a request to slash API slash scream. And it's still a post request. And here we have an authorization header with the value bearer. Let's actually test like a random value here so that we fail it on purpose. And our body would have a body property of body and it says uh, another scream submitted I don't know <laughs> okay let's send the request and it fails decoding firebase uh, token fails cool we get this error 403 forbidden and if we were to give the correct token so here bearer space this token that we got and we send it should be successful Cool, document something, something was created successfully. And notice we didn't even have to send the handle. And if we go to our database in screams, and if we sort them by created at descending. So this is the latest one. And there we go, we have the user handle user because that's the user we used to log in with. And uh, yeah, it's submitted and everything works cool. So we've already we've set up our uh, authentication middleware. So whenever we have any protected route, we just need to add this. And there's your decoded token. It's got some token metadata like uh, the user ID, uh, the expiry time, the email, uh, and any other user extra data that you would add. So before we start to write more code and uh, more routes and more functionality, let's start to uh, refactor our code and organize it so it's actually easier to maintain and to work with. Here, let's create a folder called utility or util. And here, let's create a file called admin.js. In this file, we're gonna put, um, let's see, let's take, let's take admin. So cut and paste it here. Let's take where we initialize the app and let's take the creation of DB. And now we need these two admin and DB. We need them. We need to import them in other, in other files. So what we need to do is do uh, module, uh, module dot exports equals this admin and DB. All right. So next thing is we need to separate the routes for screams and the routes for users to two different files so here in functions i'm going to create a folder called handlers and inside of handlers i'm going to create a file called screams.js and another one called users.js <clears throat> 
Okay, so let's take the, so here we don't take the whole thing, we just take the handler, and I'll show you why in a second. So we just take this chunk of code, and let's go to, yeah, screams, and let's do exports dot, what was that? That was slash scream. So let's call it get all screams equals the following. Uh, now, of course, we need db. So we need to import that. So let's do const db equals require. And we require that um, we go back one level. And then we require that uh, file we created, the admin file. So util.admin. All right. So here what we need to do is that we need to do const get all screams which is that uh, handler function and let's do require equals require one um, on the same directory slash handlers handlers slash screams and then here we just give it the uh, get all screams uh, function reference and let's call let's put a comment here and say scream uh, routes and this there's another one here so we take the handler we leave the uh, the middleware and this is post one scream let's call it um, let's call it just that post one scream and let's go to screams and do an exports I don't have to worry about formatting because uh, prettier will do that for me so uh, exports post one scream equals all of this and we save and it formats and I go back to index let's copy this or cut it and let's put it with the screen routes up here um, what else we have let's forget about this for a second we have the post um, sign up route so let's take all of this it's actually a lot of code and let's call this sign up which we haven't created yet but we go to users and we say exports dot sign up equals all of that and exports not export so here we need what do we need we need db do we need admin let's search for admin we don't need admin let's remove this to do because we've already done that and let's bring in db so const db equals require go back to one level and do slash util slash admin <clears throat> one thing one other thing we need here I think it's firebase yeah fire, we need firebase so we can do here firebase or, or const rather const firebase um, equals require the package firebase and firebase let's initialize it so firebase dot initialize app uh, we pass it config and it's good practice to put the config file separately. So let's do const config equals require. We haven't created this yet, but we will in a moment. So we go back one level and we go into util and we do config like this. And let's create that. So here we do config.js. Oops, what did I do? No, not config slash js. Let's delete that or let me delete that, you probably didn't make this mistake. So config.js, uh, let's go to the index and let's grab this. So we go to config and we do module.exports equals this. And uh, okay, so what's next? Okay, let's bring in the uh, sign up uh, handler. So const sign up. Let's do login as well, which we haven't created, but we will. Because require handlers slash uh, users. Okay, so let's take the login handler. Let's cut it and write login instead of it. And let's do this. Let's go to users. Let's do exports.login equals all of that and we need firebase we've already instantiated or initialized rather firebase <coughs> do we need admin we don't okay so in the index now we have these uh, helper methods let's take these routes let's put them 
let's put them here. Uh, let's call these um, users routes and let's take this uh, auth middleware. Oops, let's pay, uh, copy all of it and let's create a new file called fb auth js and uh, we'll just do module dot export equals equals all of that mm, equals all of this and what does it need it needs admin so we need to import that so const admin <coughs> equals require uh, admin which is in the same directory okay so let's take these two helper methods or functions and let's create a uh, validation file or validators validators.js and let's have these two functions sit here for now and uh, let's go to screams um, not screams users so let's take this validation from here let's copy all of this okay let's see how we can do this let's copy all of this so this is for the sign up route so let's create a function exports dot uh, let's say validate sign up or like sign up like this sign up data equals that's a function that takes data and and does the following so we have errors and here instead of new user we just say data wherever there is a new user we put data and the thing is we don't return status or anything from here uh, we will return um, errors but let's also return another key with errors so let's do what do we do let's do um, return um, errors and along with errors we return another boolean let's call it valid and the value of this is um, this um, actually let's compare it to zero so if we have zero then or do we actually need to put a ternary operator actually let's do because it might be a different data type so so if it's if there is no keys it's true otherwise it's false because if there is no keys again in errors, that means there's no error. That means uh, the data is valid. So we return this ob um, object that contains the property valid. If it's the property valid is true, that means the data is valid and we should uh, carry on with whatever that's happening in that function or in that handler. Okay, so I think everything is okay here. So we need to import this. So we go back to users and let's do um, right here, let's do const validate sign up data equals require um, and we go back one level and we go to util slash validators and let's do as well uh, validate do we need to validate login data yeah yeah validate login data which we haven't created yet so here in the sign up we'll do const valid so we this is called uh, <coughs> destructuring because we're going to extract valid and errors from validate sign up is it like this yeah it's like this sign up data why is it not uh, suggesting did i misspell something yeah i did okay oh actually wait sign let's sign like this yep sign up data and we pass new user and let's correct that because here we called it like something wrong so sign like this or i called it um let's create also okay so here we need the conditional so if not valid then uh, we return result.json or that status first of 400.json 
and we pass the errors. <clears throat> Otherwise, we just carry on. So let's do the same thing. Let's copy these two lines here. Let's go to login. And here we do like this, but instead of sign up, we say login. And we pass user, not new user. And everything is fine here. Let's copy this logic here and make it into a function in validators. And the function will be called exports dot function will be called validate login data. And it will take data and it will do the following errors. And uh, let's do the same thing here. Let's return errors and valid. Okay, so did we also in the index we need to import the auth middleware, the authentication middleware. So const fb auth equals require um, util slash util slash uh, fb auth like this. Let's save everything. Let's see if it works. Firebase serve. Let's see if I didn't mess up anything. Okay. Config is not defined in index. Uh, config. Oh, we don't need to initialize Firebase here. Excuse my dog. Okay, we need to bring in post one scream actually. Let's try again one more time. All right, let's copy the URL and let's go to postman. Let's try to fetch all the screams. So we get, let's remove the authorization header, even though it doesn't matter. Okay, it fetches all the screams. And if we try to go to sign up and it's a post request, we give it a body. And here, let's give it an email. Let's give it like something wrong. Sads uh, password. <coughs> One, two, three through six. Let's give a confirm password. The same. Actually, let's try the validation. See if it's linked properly. So uh, handle. Let's say new one. Let's send. Cool. Okay. So let's give a valid email. So new at email.com. And the handle is new and we give the same password we hit send cool and it works so as you can see now our code is looking so much better like the index file is so minimal and everything is now separated into their respective files so now this will make it so much easier for us to work on our routes and we know where to go if any error happens So now that we have uh, ha our handlers for our routes for screams and users in two different files, we can actually start to add some more routes to further enrich the functionality of our app. All right. So uh, before we do anything, I want to like fix two things that I, um, that I forgot to fix. So here in the auth middleware, we need to actually import DB because we need it right here to access our database and in validators here, when validating uh, user data, we don't check for user.email, we check for data because that's the name of the argument. Cool. All right, so 
the thing that I want to work on this video is uh, setting a route for users to upload the profile image to. So let's do that. All right, let's create a route here under users route. And it's going to be a post route. So slash app dot post, and it's going to post to slash user slash image. And the function is going to be called upload uh, upload image. And let's import that from oh no from users. So upload image. Let's actually create that. Let's let's save this and close it. Close this. Save this and close this as well. Let's go to users, and here at the bottom of users, let's create this function exports dot upload image equals. It's going to take a request, a response, and an arrow function and it's going to do something. All right. So for this, we're going to need a package called, um, well, there's multiple packages that do this, but, uh, that we're going to install something called busboy. So in, make sure that you're in functions and run npm install dash dash save bus boy. All right. So if we look at the documentation for busboy, uh, you just install it and you in your function, um, ignore this HTTP thing because we're already in a handler. In your function, you run this on event on file and then you handle the file upload and then you run on finish and then you stop the process and you upload your image using whatever library that you're using. In our case, it's Firebase uh, or the admin SDK. All right, so let's do const busboy equals require bus boy and let's bring in a couple of other things so const path equals and path is a default uh, package that's installed on any node uh, node project let's bring another default package called os so os equals require os another one it's fs which i believe stands for file system all right, that's all the imports. Uh, let's instantiate an instant instance of busboy. Let's call it uh, busboy equals new busboy. And this takes an options object, mainly a headers um, item in it. And this is gonna be, we're gonna give it the uh, our headers that we got in our request, so request.headers. And uh, here, let's do our on file event, so busboy dot on and the event name is called file for uh, file uploads and the handler is going to take a couple of things so first one is a uh, field name and as you see here second is file third is file name fourth is encoding and fifth is uh, mime type now don't be overwhelmed by this we don't need all of these we just need I think file name uh, yeah, file name and mime type. Uh, but even though that we don't need encoding, for example, we can't just do this because otherwise mime type will have the value of encoding because it's the fourth argument in the handler or in the callback function. So here we need to get the extension of our file or of our image file. So here let's do const image extension. Um, extension yeah spelled it correctly equals now let me show you how we're going to extract this let's say we have an image file called image.png or not ong png we need to get this png or if it's a jpeg we need to get the jpeg uh what we can do is we can um the problem is we can have a, an image called for example my.image.png so what we need to do is we need to split this string by dots uh, on each dot. So let's do, is it file name? Yeah, file name dot split. And we pass this a string and um, not a string, a dot. And here we have an array of uh, string uh, of strings. So we're going to have an array that will have, for example, in this case, it's going to have the first value is my second is image and third is PNG. So we need to access the last one. So here, this is an array, so we need to access the last item, which is going to be file name dot split by dot again dot length minus one. 
All right, so here, this is gonna give us the index of the last item, and then this will give us the value of uh, that, which is gonna be either PNG or JPEG or whatever. So here we need the actual image file name. So let's actually, actually create one. So const, um, what do we call it? Image or image file name. And let's just give it like a random value. So math dot random uh, times times I don't know ten thousand billion. Actually, we need to round this to get rid of the decimals. So math dot round surround it all in math dot round like this. And we need to concatenate a, a dot uh, and and concatenate the extension. So well, let's make this into a template literal string and make this into a variable like this with dollar sign curly braces. Let's add a dot and do another dollar sign curly braces and add the image uh, extension. So an example of this would be like this. So it could be like some random numbers dot PNG. All right, so let's close the template string and let's do a semicolon and now uh, we need to get the file path. So let's do const file path equals path dot join join and here we need the OS namespace OS dot temp there for temporary directory because this is uh, not an actual server but uh, and but a uh, cloud function. So let's do image we concatenate image uh, file name that we just created. And then here we'll create a, uh, wait, actually, what am I doing? Yeah, we're gonna need image file name and this object that we're gonna create later. So let's actually declare them. We're gonna need them in a different scope. So let's declare them here. So let's do let image file name and we're gonna need something else called image. Uh, let's give it a more expressive name. So image to be uploaded. And let's initiate it, uh, initialize it as an empty object. So here we need to actually create this image to be uploaded. So image to, um, to be uploaded. Uh, it's an object and it's gonna have two properties, the file path with the value of file path. So we can do it like this and the MIME type. Uh, let's console log these so that you see what these values actually hold. It's useful to sometimes do it. So field name, we don't need file because it's a weird, uh, it's a weird object. <laughs> Console.log file name and let's do console.log um, MIME type. All right, we don't need the rest. We just want to see these values. Okay, so now that our file is created, um, I mean, our object is created, we need to use the file system uh, library to actually create this file. So let's do file.pipe, which is a Node.js method, and we pass it fs.create write stream. Stream. And inside of this stream, we give it our file path that we created. And now this is going to create the file. Now, after this event, let's do busboy dot on. And this event is the finish event. So once this is done, this will be executed. It's going to have a callback that doesn't take any argument. And here we need to upload this file that we just created. So admin dot. Oh, oh, we don't have admin. We need to bring admin in. So here we it bring admin. Let's go back down. So here we do admin uh, dot storage dot bucket dot upload. And this takes a file path or a uh, path string called here, which is going to be image to be uploaded dot file path. And the second parameter or argument is an options object. And there are a couple of options, but we just need resumable. Resumable, and we give this a value of false. And we need an object for metadata, 
which holds, and by the way, this stuff is in uh, the Firebase uh, admin SDK uh, documentations. If you wanna, I really suggest you look at that because it, it helps understand what what the hell we're doing. <laughs> so this metadata holds another object called metadata, and we're gonna have a a key called content type. Did I spell that correctly? I did. And this will have the image to be uploaded dot mime type. All right, so this upload function returns a uh, a promise. So we chain dot then, and I believe we don't need anything from that. Yeah, so we just go like this arrow. And here what we need to do is we need to construct the image URL to add it to our user. So um, actually, yeah, yeah, we need to do const image URL equals, and this will be a template string, HTTPS colon slash slash, um, what is it, Fire, yeah, Firebase storage dot Google, Google APIs dot com slash v0 and I'll show you in a second how I know that this is a thing uh, slash v0 slash b slash dollar sign um, curly braces to put here what we need to put is if we go to the config file we find that we have a storage bucket key so we need this so we need to do we already imported it in this file so we need to do config dot storage bucket and we need to keep on going so slash o slash here we need the image url that we just created no do we need the image url no we need the image file name so image file name and this is why we created both of these outside of this scope so that we can access them here okay so image file name and we is this it no actually we need to chain uh, alt this uh, URL parameter alt media um, alt equals media because if we don't uh, whenever we access this URL without the alt media it's just gonna download the file to our computer instead of showing it on the browser by adding this alt media it actually shows it on the browser all right so this is the image URL what we need to do now is we need to add this image URL to our users um, user document um, which is right here so go to our database our user here needs to have a key called image URL and we'll have this value. And so here what we need to do is we need to do return doc, uh, no, not doc, db dot doc. And this document would have, so template string, the, you, the path for this document is slash users. So in the users collection, slash dollar sign. Uh, don't forget that this is a protected route. If we go to admin, no, not admin, index. So in the index, oh, I actually made a mistake here. So this is a protected route. We need to add our um, auth middleware, authentication middleware, FB auth, because this is, we can't have anyone upload an image to our server or to our storage bucket. So we add the middleware here. And because we've added the middleware, this gives us access to the request.user because when we reach here, that means this has been authenticated and we have that user object. So here we do request.user.handle which will let us access the document of this user. And instead of running get, we run update. So dot update and update takes an object and in each ob object you can do field and give it a value and it will up update that field with that value. So here we need to update the field called image URL. And of course, if it doesn't exist, it's gonna create it. And it's gonna have the value of image URL that we just created here. So we can actually just get rid of this and put it like this. Cool, this returns a promise, so we already put return, let's chain dot then. What does this have? Yeah, right result, that's useless. So we just uh, don't take it and we just go here and here we just return res.json. And it's gonna have a message, this doesn't matter really. And let's say image uploaded successfully. Cool. And of course, here we handle the error case. So catch error console dot error 
error and then we return res.status 500 and with a JSON with an error error.code all right one thing I forgot to do actually is that uh, whenever a user signs up by default they should have oops here no not postman here so did I click on postman again I didn't actually that was a bug okay so whenever a user signs up we need to add an image URL right here that will have a an image that has like no face I mean <laughs> this I don't know how to describe this, this thing. I've already downloaded it. I'll put the link in the description. So we want by default, whenever someone signs up, we give them this image. And until they upload a new image for themselves, they have this. And when they upload a new one, they will have the new one. So let's actually manually upload this to our bucket. So we go to storage. Uh, I think for you, you will have a blue button here. It says activate storage. I've already done that. And let's up upload this file the no image file i called it no-image.png i'll tell you why it matters what i called it so it's right here it's in our bucket now what we need to do let's go back to our code and here whenever someone signs up let's give them this image so after the validation let's do const image or uh, no image equals that name so no-image.png and here, when we created the entry in the users table, we add the key and users document. Don't know why I keep saying table because of SQL. Okay, so image URL and the image URL would be the same thing that we, ha we had here. Uh, where is it? This thing. So let's copy all of this. Let's go back up. Where are we? So right here, storage bucket, but instead of image file name, it's gonna be no. IMG. All right, and let's add a comma. All right, let's test all of this. It should be working. So, yeah, let's save everything and let's run Firebase serve. Oh, not save, serve. Firebase serve. Let's sign a new user up. Okay, so this oh, sign up. And here we have, um, let's give new at email.com, password of that, password, uh, the same thing, and, oh, not password, how am I doing? Confirm, password, and here we'll have a handle, new, and let's send this. Email is already in use, is it? Okay, let's do another one. So new to, and the handle is new to. Cool, we get a token. That means we've signed up uh, successfully. And go to authentication. We have new to. We go to database. And in that user new to, there we go. We have the image URL, and it's that image. It's the no image. And if we copy that and we access it, oh, we get. 403 error and why is that oh okay i know why it's because we in the storage uh, in the database access rules by default it doesn't allow anything and unless we're authenticated but we're not using the client library we're checking the authentication through cloud functions what we can do here we can do allow read so this by default will not allow write we will only allow read which is not a problem for us because all the files that we're storing here are just user profile images which are public anyway so let's do allow read publish and it's published now if we refresh there we go we see that image cool so now by default our users have this no user image so let's actually test if uploading a new image works. So we have this user, new to, they have this no image. Let's log in as new to. So remove these two things and change this to login. Actually, we could just use this token, it's the same. Let's take this token. And on the same route, let's go to, I mean, on the same tab, let's go to slash user slash image. It's going to be a post request and it's going to have the header author authorization bearer and we paste that token and here instead of a raw body we give a form data type body and this key let's name it image doesn't matter but let's name it image and here 
yeah let's change the type from text to file and let's select a file and let's select this user.jpg and let's send let's see if it's actually uploaded successfully keeps going forever oh okay i know why oops all right so here at the end where am i okay we're here so after this uh, on finish event, we need to uh, add busboy dot end, and we pass this request dot raw body, which is a property that's in every request object. Let's save and it runs again, and let's send the same request. And it says image uploaded successfully. Status code two hundred. Cool. Let's go to our new two and there we go. We have a new image with a random name if we go to storage And by the way when you click on storage you go here file location and you take this download URL And you go here it gives you a URL with a token uh, with an access token Which you need if you don't have uh, access uh, Permission and if you just remove that and you hit enter there we go We get that image and the same URL is stored is stored in the database in the user's document so which one is new to and there we go with that url we copy it we paste it and it's exactly the same image cool and if we try to down uh, to upload another image let's upload this png send and it's uploaded someone called this image young men instead of young man nice english <laughs> all right so we copy that we go here and we see the young men. <laughs> All right, um, so the image upload is working successfully, but there is a catch here. So let's say, oh, I already created this. <laughs> How convenient. So let's say we have a text file called hello world. And for some reason it takes ages to open a text file. <laughs> it's got the value uh, hello world. We can actually upload this file instead of an image. Text and we upload it. It's uploaded successfully and it's actually assigned to our user image, a text file. And if you don't believe me, if we paste it, we get hello world. That's not uh, very good. So what we need to do, we need to handle that here. And by the way, these are the prints. Uh, we're printing, uh, what are we printing? What is this? Oh, this is the, the decoded token. Let's actually remove that. Let's go to FB auth and remove this print or this console log. We save. So if you, as you can see here, we're actually logging the, after the token, we're logging the, uh, the, the name of the field and the name of the file and the MIME type. So when we uploaded the text, the MIME type was text slash plane. And when we uploaded the PNG it was image dot slash PNG and the JPEG is exactly that. What we need to do here, we need to, if the file type is not PNG or JPEG, we don't want to allow our users to upload GIFs or text files or whatever. So what we need to do here is to if mime type does not equal image slash JPEG and mime type does not equal image, oops, image slash PNG. Then here we just return an error. Return res.j, not let's give a status code of 400 bad request dot json with an error message that says uh, wrong file type submitted. Let's test if that's working. We save and we go to postman uh, with the same text file we send. Cool, we get wrong type file, file type, whatever. And then if we submit the user.jpg, it actually uploads and it changes in our database. Uh, there, it changes to a JPEG. Cool, so that's image upload. Uh, I know this has been a long video, but uh, yeah, it's, it's a little bit complex to um, handle image upload. In this video, we're gonna work on adding user details. Uh, I don't know if I've written this in a past video, but uh, you can take your time to uh, write or just read this. So this is our basic user, basic user info. And these are extra credentials that we could use through, um, that we could add through our uh, front end, a bio, a website and a location. And of course they're optional. Um, so let's write a function to actually add these details. Let's go to our index file and create a route for this. 
and this will be a post route so app dot post and this will point at slash user and this will of course be a protected route so let's add the middleware fb auth and the function will be add user details which we haven't created yet but we will in a moment so let's import it add user details so let's go to users save this and go to users and here actually i'm going to put it above the upload image let's put a comment here um add user details and exports dot add user details request response as per usual arrow function let's actually put a comment on this as well uh, upload an image a profile not an a profile image for user let's put a comment here as well log user in now I'm not writing a lot of comments because that could uh, take up some unnecessary time. You feel free to write uh, comments as you go. But I believe in if you write expressive code and you name your variables properly, whenever you write clean code, you feel like you don't need to comment it as much. But of course, sometimes commenting can be useful for other people to read your code. Okay, so let's actually write this function. So here we need to take a couple of details and the thing is I'm gonna write right now not a validation method or function but it's um, it's a function that will take the input and make sure let's let me actually write something and then I'll explain so let let's say let user details uh, details equals I'm gonna write a name of a function that I haven't created yet reduce user details and this will take in the request body and oops what did i do okay semicolon right there and let's bring in this request no reduce reduce user details from validators let's go there and create it so in validators at the bottom here let's do exports dot reduce user details it will take uh, data and here, uh, like we mentioned earlier, we need, we're going to take three things, a bio, a website, and a location. So let's do um, let user details, initiate this as an empty object. And here we're going to do one check, actually a couple of checks. Here, if not is empty, and we take in the property data, uh, remember that this data is request.body. So in body, we have our properties, bio, this is the first one, so data.bio, of course, dot trim to remove any white space. Um, so if is if it's not empty, then user details dot bio equals data dot bio. If it's empty, then this will not have a bio property. So here we let's do if not is empty. Um, data dot website dot trim. Uh, now here I'm, I'm gonna do something like um, like this tiny clever trick where what I want to do is that if a user submits a website like this with HTTPS or HTTP at the start, so website dot com, we're gonna save it as it is. But they, if they don't, if they just submit website dot com, we wanna add HTTP colon slash slash. And uh, make sure that it's HTTP, not HTTPS, because if a website doesn't have SSL, uh, it will actually crash and not load anything if you do HTTPS. But a website that does, it will still allow us to use the prot protocol HTTP and we can still access it. So let's do if, uh, no, we've already done our if. There is no if here. <laughs> so user, oops, user details, dot website uh, yeah dot website actually do we need another if yeah, yeah yeah oops we need to check for the HTTP so let's do if data dot website dot trim again um, dot substring 
actually the s is minuscule so substring all lowercase and here what we're going to do substring uh, it it takes a substring from a string and you give it a start and an end so the start would be zero and the end will be four and actually this is not a um, four here is actually the p for some reason and it's not s you would think that four would be in https four would be s but apparently it's not this this function behaves in a weird manner so we compare this substring to http and then so if this is true that means the website already has no actually this is uh, we compare it we're making sure that it's not http if it's not http that means we need to add that to the to the website let's do user details dot now you don't have to do this but um i think it makes it um it makes it more neat so we add http colon slash slash and then remember this is here backticks and then dollar sign curly braces data dot website dot trim all right and uh, now else else this means it has http already we just actually we don't need a curly braces here we can just say else user details dot website equals data dot website um, now for the location it's whoops not here so for the location we just say if we're gonna do the same thing as the bio nothing fancy um, if replace bio here with bio so location well, what's why we're doing this is that we're our front end is definitely gonna send three properties by a website and location, even though if a user doesn't send a bio, if they leave it empty, our our React app is gonna send a bio property with an empty string. So our code here makes sure that we don't actually submit a an empty string for a value of a, of a property to our database. If it's an empty string, we don't even add that key. So here we just do return user details. And this function is done. So let's save and go back to our users um, file. And we've brought that in. So where are we? We're here. Let's add user, oh boy. Okay, we're here. <laughs> Sorry about that. Okay, so here what we're gonna do is, um, we're just gonna look for the document of this user. So let's do const user document. What do we do user document? Yeah, we're actually going to need, it's just, actually we just do db doc and backticks slash users. And remember this is a protected route, so we have access to the, to the users object. So request.user.handle.get, um, sorry, not dot .get, dot .update. And here it's actually as simple as just passing this user details because um, this user details will have, uh, let's say, if it has bio and a value, this will just update exactly that. So it actually works out to have an object shaped like that. So here, uh, the update returns a promise. So dot then, and here we just return a message. So let's do return res.json, and the message will say details added successfully and catch if we have any error we just console dot error that error and we return it so return res dot status 500 dot json error error dot code all right, I think this is it for this function. So let's save and test it. Let's make make sure we we saved all files and I've already got Firebase uh, running. So if we go to Postman and here change this route to just slash user. It's a post at slash user and uh, yeah, I'll send. And okay, my token has expired. It expires after an hour, so we need to log in again and get a new token. So let's log in. Let's copy that token. 
Let's paste it here. Okay, I'll just type again. Bearer space token. Let's send this. Oh, actually, I need the body. What am I doing? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the thing is, like the other valid validation as well, we have to have our keys. And of course, our front end is going to make sure that we have our keys. So let's do actually an empty bio to test whether it's not submitting an empty key to the database. Let's do a website. Let's call this uh, user.com to test whether it's going to add the HTTP to it. And let's do a location of London, UK. And let's send. Cool. It says details added successfully. Let's check our database. So go to our app. Uh, database, go to our user, which is user right here. Cool, we have a location and we have a website and it's added HTTP to it and we don't have a bio because it's empty. Let's try to override these details. Let's say my bio now says, hello, I am user, whatever. And I changed the website to google.com for some reason. I'm the owner of Google now. And I moved to Los Angeles, California, because why not? Uh, let's send details added successfully. And uh, we go to the database and there we go. We have the new details, google.com, uh, LA, California, and, and uh, yeah, hello, I'm user. We have the bio now. Okay, cool. And if we actually add the HTTP, let's do HTTPS colon slash slash google.com and we send. There we go. So HTTPS. So it doesn't alter it right now. All right. So next thing, let's actually work. Um, let's add a route. Because the way our application is going to work is that we keep the login route minimal to reduce response time uh, so that when we log in, we only get a token. And then when we're redirected or directed to the home page, we use that token and we send a request to a different route to get all the details for our user. I'm going to copy something just to not waste time writing it from a different file. And I'm going to paste it. Actually, I'm just going to copy a part of it user details and I'll explain it in a second. So let's close this object here. So this is going to be our Redux data. This is going to be what uh, user information that we're going to hold in our Redux state in our front end application and we'll use to populate our profile with. We need credentials to show them on our profile on the right and we need likes to actually check on the home page or on any page whether any of the posts that are listed there are liked by us and to like show a different icon if they are if they're not we just show the empty heart icon all right so we need to write the router that actually returns this data for us and this data will have more later when we implement notifications but for now we're just going to get credentials and likes you can take your time to write this if you want all right, so let's go to index and create this route. And it's gonna be an app.get at slash user as well. And it's gonna be protected because we're gonna use that token to get the data. And it's gonna be called get uh, authenticated user or just get authenticated user. The names don't really matter as long as they make sense to you and you can remember them, it's fine. All right, so let's import that and let's go and create it. So in users, here underneath add user details, let's put a comment, get own user details. And let's do exports dot um, get authenticated user equals request response arrow function. And here, we need to, um, first of all, let's declare a let res data equals empty object. This is the response data. We're going to start adding data to it as we go through our promise chain. So first thing we need to get the user. So db.doc slash users slash dollar sign curly brace again, request.user.handle.get 
dot then. So here we're gonna get uh, one document. So doc arrow function. Uh, we're gonna do a check if the document exists, just in case. Because if you don't do this check, it's gonna crash. Um, so doc if doc dot exists, if it exists, then user data. Uh, actually, is it user data? Response data. Yeah, rest data. We, it can be user data. Let's change it actually to user data. It makes more sense. Now that I thought of it like that, <laughs> on the top on the top of my head, it does make sense. Okay, so user data dot credentials equals as simple as doc dot data. Don't don't forget that this is a function. So dot dot data and do curl, um, parentheses. So here, let's now get um, the screams of this user. Actually, we don't need the screams. We just need to get the likes, which don't exist right now. Um, okay, let's do that. I don't know if it's going to crash the app if it doesn't exist, but let's try. It never hurts to try something. So db.collection likes dot where user handle. We haven't even created this collection yet, but let's roll with it. <laughs> Equals request.user.handle. And uh, we're not going to order this by anything because they don't have a created um, a created at. So let's just do dot get. Dot then we get data. And here we need to loop through this data. So let's do data dot for each document. Um, we need to actually initialize uh, user data dot. So let's do user data because if we don't, it's going to crash because it doesn't know it's it's going to mess up with types. So let's do actually not user data. User data dot likes equals an empty array. And here for each document, we're going to do user data dot likes dot push document dot data like this. And then uh, when it's done, we just return the data. So when it's done here, we do return response or just res dot JSON and we pass user data like this. So of course here dot catch error the usual console dot error the error and return res dot status five hundred dot json error error dot code. All right, let's test if this is working. Let's go to Postman. Make sure you saved all your files. And here with the same token, we're going to send the get request and put body as none because it's a get request with the token and let's hit send. Cool. We get credentials and we get an empty likes array. And even though that the collection doesn't exist yet, it uh, returns an empty array. This is how Firebase works based on document references. It will still have a document. And it will still have a reference even though the document doesn't exist or the collection in this case doesn't exist. Cool. So we have credentials. Um, so we have now a route to get user credentials. All right. So far, we only have two routes for screams, one that gets all the screams and one that posts a scream. Um, let's add a route for getting one scream and getting all the details that are pertaining to that one scream. All right. First of all, like these three user routes should be grouped with the user routes like this. And let me remove this white space. All right, let's, let's write this uh, route. So this will be a post, of course. So app, uh, sorry, a get, <laughs> a get at slash. So this, um, this is a URL that would need the, uh, the screen ID that we need to, uh, because this is the only way of sending data through a get request is in the URL parameters. So we'll do slash screen slash colon slash, uh, scream ID 
this colon will tell um, our application that this is a, a route parameter and we can access its value. And of course, it's not protected because we want in our application to allow users to view screams and comments and all this stuff, even when they're not logged in, like Twitter, because this is kind of a Twitter clone. All right, so the function will be called get scream. And uh, let's actually, um, I want to write all the other routes as a to do so that I'll, so that you'll have an idea of what we're going to actually be creating later. So we're going to have a route for deleting. So delete uh, scream. And we're going to have oops, to do. Let me copy this to do so I don't have to type it again. Uh, like a scream. Oops, scream. And we're going to have another one for unliking a scream. We're going to have a, a comment on scream. And I believe this is what we're going to do next because it's the one that makes uh, sense the most. All right, so we have a route for getting one scream. But before we do that, I want to add some dummy data. I want to add a collection, a comments collection, which holds exactly that. And before I add the document, I want to copy something and paste it. I don't want to type it and waste time on it because you might not want to type it. I'm going to paste it right here. So these are the um, how our comments are stored in our database. So they have a user handle so that we will know who submitted this comment. And uh, they have a scream ID and uh, that refers to which screen they pertain to. So when we grab a screen, we grab its comments by this scream ID uh, property. And they have a body of what the, the comment says. And of course, they have a created art on of uh, when they were actually created. All right. I believe maybe later they will hold an image URL as well of their user, but but we'll see. I'm not sure yet. All right. So let's create a comment like this. Um, so what we need is four things, a user handle, a scream ID, a body, and a created that. So a scream ID will get from this one scream. So copy this and then let's create the collection again. It's going to have an auto ID, a field of scream ID, that scream ID, a user handle. We only have one user right now, or at least because I deleted the other users. Uh, a body, uh, which will say nice scream man and exclamation marks or ape, I suppose makes more sense. And a creator that which will be a string. And let me copy this date uh, from here. Cool. All right. So let's save. There we go. We have a comment that is attached to this screen. I mean, it's not attached because this is a document based collection, but we will make it so. So let's go to our um, screams. Actually, let's go back to index. We need to import this, copy this, get scream and add it to here. And let's save all files, go to screams.js and let's create this get scream function. So exports dot get scream equals takes a request, a response, arrow function to uh, let's uh, declare a variable scream data is an empty object and let's do db dot document doc and the back back ticks and do slash screams slash dollar sign curly braces to access a variable request dot params for parameters dot uh, scream id like this so get and of course, this returns a promise and this will hold a document. So let's do, let's do another check as well. So let's do if not doc dot exists, which is a, a boolean uh, that, that tells us whether this document exists or not. We'll here stop and return res dot status of 404, which stands for not found uh, JSON. Um, with an error of scream not found in case someone sends a request to slash scream slash an ID that doesn't exist anymore. All right. So else, um, we just add this data. Well, we don't need to do an else because it's, um, inferred already. So let's do scream data equals document dot data 
as a function. And then now we want to add the ID of the uh, screen to the data because we're going to need it later. So let's do screen data dot screen ID equals uh, doc dot ID. All right. So now we need to fetch the comments of this uh, screen as well. So let's do return db dot collection comments where scream id equals um, yeah the request dot params dot scream id dot get so this returns a promise so we do another then here dot then and uh, we get uh, a query snapshot because this will be this can be multiple um, documents so let's initialize let's say scream data dot comments equals an empty array and let's do data dot for each document and let's do scream data dot push and we push doc dot data and uh, we don't need the ideas of the comments so after here um, so our comments are already there so we just need to return this data so let's do return scream no not not scream data res dot json um, no without curly braces just scream data like this because it's already a json and of course dot catch and response dot uh, status 500 dot json error error dot code all right i think this is it for this function all right let's test if this is working so I'm already running Firebase uh, serve. Uh, if you're not, take the time to run it. And let's go to Postman and test this out. Okay, so this is gonna be slash scream, slash a scream ID. And let's go to our database and grab this scream ID right here. Paste it. And it's a get request with no headers. Even though if you have headers, it doesn't affect it. So let's just send it and it's loading internal server error interesting scream data dot push is not a function oh it's because scream data dot comments dot push oops because comments is the array scream data is an object all right, let's try again. Cool, we get our data. And um, what we need to do though, because right now we have only one comment, so it, it, this problem doesn't appear. But if we'd have multiple comments right here, it's gonna sort them differently. Actually, I'm not sure what it sorts them by, but we need it to sort them by uh, created that because we wanna show the latest one uh, first. So let's go here. Let me close the console. And here, after we fetch our comments, after the collection thing, we say order, not like this, order. <laughs> How do you spell order? By, and it's by created at, and in a descending order. So let's save and run the query again. Well, of course, we're not gonna see any difference because it's just one comment and we get an internal server error. Oh, I know why. It's because Firebase, uh, when you have a, fire, a complex Firebase query, you need to create an index for it. But for some, usually it gives us a URL, but some, for some reason this URL is formatted in a very funny way. Let's try again and see if it, if the the response like the the console log is actually formatted properly here. All right, so this is the URL. 
you're, you're gonna get as well a URL. It says, it's gonna say, the query requires an index, you can create it here. So you just click this, control click from the console so that it opens it on the browser. And what's cool about Firebase, the index is already ready for us to be created. However, this doesn't show anything for some reason. Let's go to index this again. Okay. Let's copy and paste this. All right, we click create index and this is gonna take a couple of minutes. So I'll be back once it's done. Okay. Now that our index has been created, we can actually send this request again and it should show us the data and it does. And now even if we add uh, another comment, Actually, let's add another comment just to show that it works. So let's go to our comments and let's do, oops, no, add a comment. And what fields do we have? We have a user handle, the same user, and we have a body, uh, say another comment, and we have a create that. Um, let me put, uh, copy that date from that file right here. And I'm going to add one day instead of the 15th of March, it's going to be the 16th of March. And we're going to have another field of scream ID. I'm going to copy it from here and submit that and send the query again. We get two comments and the latest one is this one. We get it first. Cool. All right. So let's create a route for actually submitting comments without having, you know, <laughs> to create them on Firebase manually. So let's go to index instead of this to do comment let's do app dot post at slash scream slash um, colon scream ID, uh, scream ID slash comment. And this will be a protected route. So let's add the auth middleware. And this will say comment on scream. Let's copy comment on scream. Let's go to here, add it and let's go and create it. So here at the bottom, let's add a comment here saying, or get or fetch, prefer fetch one, scream. Fetch makes it makes it um, sound like uh, like the code is my uh, you know like the code works for me, which makes more sense because it does. All right, so exports. I don't know. Comment on scream equals request response. And here, what we need to do is we need to validate the body, but we only have one field, so we don't create a function for it. We just say request dot, um, if request dot body, dot body again, because the property is called body dot trim the equals an empty string. That means the user sent empty data. So let's do on the same line, return res dot status. 400 with a JSON error. I say comment must not be empty. Or actually, it just must not be empty because the input will already say comment on it. So if we say comment again, it doesn't make sense. Otherwise, let's do const. Let's create this comment object that we're going to persist to our database. New comment equals object. The body of the comment is request, oops, request dot body dot body. The uh, created at is a uh, new date to uh, ISO string. The scream ID is request dot params dot scream ID 
the user handle we get from our request dot user object that's passed through our middleware so the handle of course and uh, actually we do need to store the uh, the user image because what we want to do later when we fetch the comments we don't want to fetch the comments and then depending on that comment as well fetch uh, depending on the user handle of the comment as well, fetch the uh, the profile image of the user. So let's do here user image, add something called user image, and this will be request dot user dot image URL. Now we haven't added this yet, but we can. So let's go to our util. What's cool about this because we've already sent a request to the database, so we already have all the properties of the user. So here we can just add another one called request dot user dot image URL equals data dot docs um, zero dot data the function dot um, image URL. All right. Um, yeah, we're done here. Let's go back. So here we have the user image stored with the comment. So let's persist this. Um, what do we do actually? Oh, we need to actually confirm that the screen exists because this screen might not exist anymore. So let's do db dot doc uh, backtick slash screams slash um, dollar sign uh, thing um, curly braces request dot params dot scream id to get this um, scream dot get dot then doc because this is uh, db dot doc so it has to return one document so let's say if not dot dot exists so if it doesn't exist we return res dot status 404 because we don't want um, users submitting um, comments to IDs that don't exist anymore and then we'll have to like uh, persist comments uh, with scream IDs that don't exist anymore so we just say here if the scream doesn't um, exist we say scream not found and then if we pass this if and nothing happens not not pass it as in if it's not triggered then we just um, do DB dot collection and it would be the collection of comments now we add our comments so dot add uh, which i believe we haven't used yet is this is the function that you use to add a document and you pass it a json like and in this case our json is already created so we copy that and we add our new comment object and here we do dot then this returns a um, a right result i think not actually a document reference but we don't need it anyway. Um, if we come to this then block, that means the document was created successfully. Uh, so we just say res. We actually need to return it. Res.json new comment. We return our comment back to the user because they need to add it on the uh, user interface. Of course, here we do dot catch error and console.log. res not release event res dot uh, status 500 json um, error error dot code or uh, oh, oops actually what am I doing this could happen a lot so we could just say error let's just say something the classic something went wrong. Okay, so let's save all files. And now let's go to Postman. So we have this scream ID. We do slash scream slash scream ID slash comment. And before we do that, we need to actually log in. Let's copy all of this. So open a new uh, tab. Uh, send the post request with the body of type application JSON. And let's log in. So email will be user at email.com or whatever user you have on your database. Password will be the password we set for we set for it. What 404 not found? Oh, oops, slash login. 
And let's get the token. So here, let's do bearer token. And by the way, that request we did earlier to get the screen was not a protected one. Uh, just to to prove to you, let's send a get request without the authorization header. We still get uh, the screen because it's not protected. So here slash comment, and we put the token. And in the body, we have, if you remember, we have only one property of body. And this will be uh, comment number three. Let's send. Oh, not a get, post, send, scream not found. Really? Uh, let me make sure I got the right ID. I did. Scream not found. Oh, what am I doing? Scream ID, not screams. Okay, let's try again. Something went wrong. Let's check the, the error log. Line number 96. Return db dot collection comment add new comment. What's wrong with that? Okay, so after console login, uh, the comment, the object that I created, turned out that the user image was undefined for me. You probably didn't have this error because um, because when I log uh, signed up this user, I hadn't implemented the image URL logic at that time. So let's just add image URL here, or let me just add this and add the link to the no image, and uh, this should fix the problem. Yeah, okay. So now image URL should uh, would not be undefined. Cool. Because when I was trying that, one, one of the keys had the undefined value, which is not allowed by Firebase. All right, so the comment is submitted now, and I get the comment back with the user image, which we'll use to display on the comment in the front end. And if we go to uh, our comments collection, we see that we get comment number three. Cool, with the user image. we're gonna create two routes, one for liking a scream and one for unliking a scream. So we got app.post, or is it post? Actually, it can be a get request. Let's do app.get slash scream slash colon scream ID slash uh, like, or yeah, just like. And then it's gonna, of course, it's gonna be a protected route. And it's going to point to like scream. And let's copy it, paste it again. This will be unlike. And I've changed this to unlike as well. So let's bring these two functions that we haven't created in. So like scream and unlike scream. Uh, one thing that I forgot to do last time. So here where we post a scream, we need to actually get the image of the user as well, because uh, we don't want to send another query to fetch it. So we can do um, user image here. We store the user image in the document of the scream. So user image equals request user. Remember in the last video, we actually um, did this uh, image URL thing. So request .user image URL through the middleware, we're adding it. And we need to uh, set like count, initialize them. So like count is zero and comment count is zero as well because this post has just been created. And when we create it as well, as a response, we need to return it and not just return a message. So here, when we get the document back, we we'll after add in, let's do const uh, res, I don't know, response scream, I guess, res scream equals um, new scream. And here let's do res scream dot scream ID, because we want to add the ID equals doc dot ID. Now you might be thinking, whoa, this is a constant. How can you edit uh, a key in it? But actually you can edit a key in the constant. You just can't change the data type or the complete value of the object. 
All right, so here response.json, we just returned this res scream. And let's quickly test that. So I already have Firebase uh, running. Let's go to Postman. We already have a token, which I hope isn't it expired. So slash scream. Let's keep this open. Let's just copy this. Uh, yeah, let's copy this here. Slash API slash um, scream to post the scream. So let's copy this uh, token. Let's go to headers, authori author, oh boy, authorization, bearer space that token. I did it guys, I, I spelled authorization properly. <laughs> the body will be, I don't know, hello, hello, whatever. Let's send. And cool, we get hello, hello, the body. We well, use our image is no image because this user doesn't have an image yet. We get the scream ID, like can't create it. Brilliant. Okay, so that's fixed. All right, let's create the like function. So export dot like scream. Let's put a comment here that says like a scream. Like a person could not understand from like scream that it's what it does. I don't know. <laughs> Request response. And here what we need to do, actually, I want to explain something first. Um, it's theory time. All right. What we're going to do here, uh, because you might be thinking, wait, why don't we store all the comments and the likes of each screen um, in the screen document itself? And you would be right in the sense that, yeah, it makes more sense to store them in the same document, but the way databases work, you're supposed to keep each document actually really small in size and try to spread all the properties. And the way Firebase in particular works is that uh, it, it has a maximum of four megabytes per document uh, that al allows you. And of course, if you would have a big social media website, let's say something like Twitter, one tweet could have thousands of likes and thousands of comments. So it would be extremely inefficient to store everything in one document because it would be really slow to query that one document. And if you needed only a few properties instead of everything, the way how query languages work, you need to fetch the whole document to get, to get any properties. So it's more efficient to actually spread these properties and have the likes and the comments in different collections and fetch them separately. Um, I'm going to post uh, in the description a video by the Firebase developers themselves explaining how you structure your database like this and why it's actually more efficient and why it costs you less money on Firebase. Remind me if I forget to post that video. And by the way, I have one quick thing to say. Uh, tell me, please let me know in the comment section if you prefer the, you know, the just code and let me write the code behind you because I just want to learn this framework approach or you prefer the approach where I actually explain the stuff that I'm writing uh, because I noticed that I do spend uh, quite a lot of time explaining some of the principles, but I personally think it's better for you to understand them. But okay, rant over. Let me know, give me, I would like to get some feedback on that. All right, let's get to business. Let's create a collection called likes. And the way our likes uh, are gonna work, simply each like will hold a user handle of who liked the scream and another uh, key scream ID of what scream they liked. Let's grab this ID because it's the only scream I have on my database. So let's put it here. And we could add a created at, but it's only useful for statistics and data analytics because we just want to show the amount of likes. You can do it if you want, but I'm just going to stick to screen ID and user handle for now. So yeah, we got likes now. And that means technically this, um, actually I have the other screen. So this screen now has one like by this user. Uh, let's not worry about like count for now. Or actually let's worry about it. Let's just... It's just, oh, it doesn't have it. It's okay. Let's not worry about it. <laughs> All right. So here, what we need to do is that we need to check whether a like document exists or not. We can't just add a like. We fetch, uh, we query from our database. And if this like document already exists, we need to return a message to the user saying, uh, scream, uh, scream already liked. You can't like it again. And as well, we need to check. Uh, whether the scream itself exists. And if it doesn't, we'll be like, hey, the scream doesn't exist. You can't like a scream that doesn't exist. Uh, this function is gonna have a lot of code, but it's it's good practice. If you 
you need to uh, take care of the edge cases. So we're going to get both documents uh, right now and set them in variables because uh, we're going to need to reference to them multiple times and we don't want to like type a lot of this code again. So let's do const like document equals db dot collection likes uh, where the user handle of the like um, equals the user handle of the user that's trying to like again or trying to like not um, potentially not again so request dot user dot handle because this is protected again that means we have access to that handle and we chain another where here where scream id equals request dot params because this uh, the idea of the screen will be in the url itself dot scream id all right, and let's do limit one, because this is a query, that means it's gonna return a couple of documents. And even, by the way, when we limit to one, it's still gonna give us an array with one document. It's not gonna give us one document. So let's do const scream document equals db dot doc slash um, screams slash dollar sign curly braces um, request dot params dot scream id. All right, let's do let's initialize let scream data equals an empty object. Let's do scream document. So the first check is we check that document that this scream document exists dot get dot then doc here we do if um, if not doc dot exists and return um, actually let's start with doc exists because um, it's more efficient to start with the case that you think is more probable to happen so if doc exists then um, we need to actually give the scream data this data so scream data equals we don't have to actually initialize it as an object because it's going to become an object now so scream data equals doc dot data and we need the scream id as well so we do scream data dot scream id equals doc dot id and here return like document dot get and here we do else that means if the document does not exist we do return res.status 404 and we're gonna have a json with an error scream not found all right so after the, the then um no not catch we have another then because we did return a like document so this will give us a, a query snapshot. So data, if, so data has an empty property if if the array is empty. So if data dot empty, that means we don't have the like, so we can actually create it. So let's do return db dot collection likes, likes like this dot add. And here we pass an object and this object will have a scream ID of request dot params dot scream ID and the user handle quest dot user dot handle. And the thing is we can't do return here and and then handle the promise in the next then because this the problem is that even if it's not empty, it might it might actually go through. So we're actually gonna put, we're gonna nest the then inside of this if block to avoid that problem. Uh, so we're gonna do then scream data dot like count. So we're gonna increment the like count because we liked, so we're gonna increment the like count of the scream. 
uh, by one. So we do screen data dot like count plus plus. So let's do now. So now we've already added a like to our likes collection. What we need to do is we need to actually persist, not persist, add uh, increment the like document. Uh, Sorry, the like count in the property in the like in the document of the scream in the database. Oh boy! All right, so scream document dot update, and we need to update one property, which is the like count, and we set it to scream uh, data dot like count. Because uh, remember, this screen data equals the data that we got from the screen from the database, and we've already ex imp incremented the like count here, so we just pass this here, and and the, here we chain another then, and this returns a right result we don't need, so we here we just say return res .json. so here everything went successfully, so we return the screen data, which will hold the screen, and yeah, without any likes, just the screen with the new like count. So here, this if block, let's do else. That means we have no likes, uh, rather we have a like in this data uh, array. That means we can't like this because it's already liked by this user. So return res.status um, 400.json and the error will say scream already liked. All right, so after this, then we do dot catch error res dot status 500. Error dot code. That's console error as well. Don't know why I'm formatting because pretty is going to format it anyway. All right, let's save all of this and let's save this. Let's comment this because this unlike doesn't exist yet. Or let's actually create it and just return nothing. Or do we write the whole thing? Screw it, let's write the whole thing. So exports dot unlike, and I did say screw it, I'm keeping it PG. <laughs> I request response const is very similar to um, to like so we can actually copy everything now I I know I could do everything in one function the like that but unlike but the code will get too massive and we could just add another route it doesn't harm anyone so here we have the like document same thing scream document same thing let's scream data uh, but here instead it's the opposite down here. So if the um, if the data is empty, this is where we return the error. So let's copy this return. Let's go here and say error scream, um, scream not liked because we can't unlike a scream that we haven't liked yet. Otherwise, if we do have something in that array, data array, what we need to do is we need to delete that entry. So let's remove all of this. Let's do uh, db dot collection. Um, hey, do we do that? Oh, we have the path for it. So what you need to do is that db dot collection likes dot um, actually dot doc. We haven't done this yet. Db dot collection dot doc. So this already adds the slash um, thing. Or maybe we can do this. Let me try something to make it more simple. So db.doc like this, uh, backticks slash likes slash, and we remove this bit of code. Then we add data, the array of data, zero, the first member of data um, dot. Oh, actually, no, what am I doing? Data.docs zero, because this is the, the array dot data. The function dot id should give us the id so this is the actual path for that document and we chain dot delete which will delete the function um, the document rather and then here we chain dot then inside of this block 
and then like this we don't need the right result so we do a scream data dot like count minus minus to decrement it by one and we return scream document dot update like count is scream data dot like count and to put a colon here scream data dot like count and then dot then as well here and we'll say we just return a response res dot json uh, we return actually the screen data and here after this then we have the catch it's gonna have the same error cool all right so unlike unlike scream is done as well so let's save everything make sure you're running let's go to postman so here we already have an authorization token because we were trying to comment now we will try to actually like so slash like and let's not send anybody and it's a get request so let's send this okay it says scream already liked because we added that uh, document so let's actually put them side by side so we can see update in real time let's do unlike let's try to unlike this comment uh this scream okay there's an internal server error db doc delete is not a function oh detail wow <laughs> all right save you probably didn't make this make this mistake all right Oh, well, that's weird. It didn't delete the actual like. And the like count is no. Oh, it's because the scream itself, it didn't have a like count in the first place. Let's give this a value of zero. It's decrementing the like count, but it's not deleting the like itself. Okay, let me have a look at this and come back. Okay, it's actually this db um, data dot docs not dot data. The ID is actually stored in the document reference and not in the data itself. My bad. Okay, let's. Um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to the screams. So this, what scream was it? It was this scream. Well, it was this screen. So let's put the like count to one because that's what it was because there's only one like and it's on that screen. And let's send the like again. It should say screen already liked. Cool. Let's do unlike. Cool. It deletes the document. And if we go to screams, it uh, decrements. Oh no, it's this one. It decrements the like count to zero. And if we send like, It increments the like count to one, and if we go to likes, it created the like document, a different like document, but with the same credentials. Since we're already here, and this video is not that long yet, we could keep going and create the delete um, scream route. Uh, but before we do that, I want to fix uh, something. One functionality that's missing is that here, when we uh, comment on the scream, we actually have access to the scream document. So we could actually uh, just increment the comment count right here. So here, instead of this return collection uh, thing, let's cut this and let's do return document, which is the scream document. And here to use the update function, we have to add the prefix reference and use update. And here we need to update the comment count. So let's, let's do an object and comment count will should be equal to doc dot data dot comment count which is the current comment count plus
plus one. All right, so here let's chain a dot then, which will have a right result, which we don't need. And then here we paste back the uh, adding the comment. So db.collection comments, add new comment. All right, so this should do the trick. And if we go to our database, we see we have three comments all on this um, screen. So if you go to that screen, actually does, that screen doesn't even have a field comment count because it was created too early. So let's do comment count and it's a number and it has three comments. So now if we submit a comment to this, we should see this comment count incre increment by one. And of course the comment would be created. So we have that ID right here. Let's um, write comment here. Let's get a token. Well, we already had the token, but whatever, let's take the new token. Let's go here in headers. Come all the way here, paste the new token. And over here it's comment and comment is a post route. So post and in the body, let's say comment number four. Let's send. And let's look here. Uh, I mean here, cool. <laughs> Common count has incremented by one. So we have four comments now. And in our comments, we have a new one. Comment, yeah, there we go. Comment number four. Great. All right, so let's write the route for deleting a screen. So in the index, let's instead of this comment, let's do app.delete, because it's a delete request. And it's gonna point to slash screen slash scream um, colon scream ID. Of course, it's going to be a protected route. And the function will be delete scream. Let's import that. Delete scream. Let's save, go to screams here at the bottom. Let's do a comment delete. I always misspell the word screen uh, delete for some reason. All right, so exports dot delete screen delete. I hate the word delete. <laughs> Request response. And uh, we need a reference to it. So const document equals db dot doc uh, backticks slash screams slash uh, dollar sign curly braces request dot params dot scream id now here we do document dot get uh, dot then we get document and here we do if not doc dot exists um, well, if it doesn't exist, we say, mate, it doesn't exist. You're trying to delete something that's already been deleted or potentially never existed in the first place. So rest.status404.json error um, error dot JSON, um, error, the good old not found. Else, if it's found, um, what do we do here? Actually, here we need to check because we need to check that the uh, the user ID of this uh, screen is the same as the user ID of the user decoded from the token. Because we need to make sure that this user is the actual owner of this screen. Because you can't delete someone else's uh, screen. So we need to check doc data dot user handle has to be. Um, so if it's not equal to request dot user dot handle, because we already have that through the middleware, um, we need to return rest dot status four hundred three unauthorized with a JSON with an error of unauthorized. Else we return document. Uh, this is why we actually put it in a variable because we needed to uh, to use it again. Delete. Oh boy, I misspelled delete. What is happening? <laughs> but then I need a button on my mouse that whenever I click writes delete because I don't like that word. 
Okay, so a message would say scream deleted. Yes, I did it successfully. All right, let's, uh, let's add a dot catch just in case. Uh, console dot log not log error error and return response that status 500 json error error code all right let's test all of this and we're already running so let's go to postman and so i'm user and this um wait let me make sure so let's go to screams so this scream is uh, by user and i'm logged in as user so if i send a delete request to this scream slash the scream id slash delete um we should actually successfully delete it um wait do i actually we don't need this delete because this can be the same this can be like this without the extra path here oh not here here where are we okay oh we don't have the delete okay my bad i confused myself there so if i send this it should successfully delete it cool and it does if we go to our database that scream is gone yeah the scream is gone and if we try to delete it again, it should say scream not found. Brilliant. I have a question for you. How can we have a social media platform without bombarding our users with notifications? Answer, we can't. So let's implement notifications. I want to start by explaining something. So if we go to screams right here, you see when we like a scream or unlike, it's already like a bunch of requests to the database. Now. Notifications uh, don't have to arrive instantly, so we can handle them separately. And we can do so by taking advantage of something called database triggers. So if you go to Fire, Firestore documentation and you just scroll down to triggers, there's a bunch of different triggers on authentication, on real-time database, on, and on Firestore. We're interested in the Firestore one. So basically these are kind of like events that watch changes in certain documents. And then on those changes, it triggers an event and it does something. So you have on create, on update, on delete, and on write. All right, you can read the documentation page. I'm not gonna talk too much about the theory. Let's actually implement this. First thing is we need to have, we need to create a, a notification whenever someone likes a post. Okay, or a scream, it's not a post. What is a post? That's not a thing. <laughs> All right, so export dot create. I'm really trying to push the idea of like a scream is like kind of an ape screams and a, a bird tweets like Twitter and this would be different, but yeah. Anyway, <laughs> so create notification on like, and this would be equal to functions dot, and I'm gonna chain this region function. Maybe you don't have to, maybe you do. So check with your, depending on your case. So I'm gonna add the region Europe West two and I'm going to chain here the namespace firestore dot document. And the document we're interested in is in slash likes slash, um, or is it slash? We could just do likes slash like this ID in curly braces. And here our event is the on create. So whenever a document is created and this will have a handler that will take a snapshot and a context for us, we don't need the context. We just need the snapshot, which is basically a snapshot of this like document that has just been created. So here inside of here, let's do DB. Oh, we can't do DB because we haven't imported it yet. Let's import it. So const db equals require and if you remember this is in the util so dot slash on the same level slash util slash admin uh, okay like this and here we do db dot uh, document and backticks slash screams slash uh, we want to get the scream 
because we need some data from there. So slash scream slash snapshot uh, dot data dot scream ID. Remember that this is the like document, so we have access to the scream ID. So dot get this returns a promise dot then and this will hold a a document. So here we need to we need to add this check if doc dot exists. Now of course it's always going to exist in this case, but it's just good practice to add it. Stu return. Now inside of here we're going to create the notification. The reason why we fetched this uh, this scream um, because we need some data from it. So because we need the the owner of the scream, the handle of the owner of the scream. So let's do return db dot collection or actually um, db dot doc because uh, we know that it's going to be in the notification. So notifications, make sure you don't misspell anything because I sometimes do that, guilty. Snapshot.id. Now we're going to give the ID, uh, the notification the same ID as the like or the comment later on. And I'll show you later why this is useful. So we do dot set and inside of here we're going to have a created at which is going to be new date dot to iso string and we're gonna have actually let me uh, copy and paste this for you to use as a reference so let's go to db schema and under comments here i'm gonna paste this so this is what our notification is going to be like it's going to have a recipient which is who's getting the notification a sender who's sending it a read of true or false by default it's false because it hasn't been read when it's created a scream id of which scream this pertains to a type in our case we only have likes and comments so two types and i created that all right let's go back to our index so we have a recipient and it's gonna be the doc uh, dot data of this because doc refers to the screen remember dot user handle and we have a sender and it's gonna be uh, the um, the snapshot dot data which is the like document dot user handle uh, we're gonna have a type in this case it's a like so type is like a red of false okay this is five things let's check if we have covered everything one two three five uh we're missing the scream id okay let's go back the scream id is the uh, snapshot or let's just do use the document we can use both so let's do doc.id which is the scream Cool, so this returns a promise that holds a, what does it hold? A, a right result, I think, but it doesn't matter. We're, gonna, we're not gonna need it. So we can just leave that empty and we could just say return. And here, let's do catch error. In case an error happens, we just, actually we don't need a block. We just need uh, to console error. Uh, actually we do, because we need to return. <laughs> All right, console dot error the error and return we don't need to send back any response because this is a database trigger and it's not a um, an API endpoint uh, let's create the next one so here we need to do create notification do the same name but we change on like to on comment and this will be functions dot region again let me copy this bit here uh, functions dot region uh, and the document will be in comments slash ID and we're gonna listen to on create as well and here we're gonna have a snap shot and uh, inside of here we're gonna get the scream again so it's kind of the same so let's copy all of this and here we get the document we check if it exists and we create a, a notification with the snapshot id which is the comment document id and created that the same recipient is the same sender is the same the type is comment so let's change this to comment the doc id is the same everything is the same cool so 
I'm gonna keep going I'm gonna create all of them and then we're gonna test them so let's save and then underneath here uh, we don't have the ability to delete comments so we don't have to worry about that but we have the ability to unlike a post actually I'm gonna put it here so we need to because the thing is we're gonna create notifications but if someone unlikes the post we want to delete that notification I don't want a user to have a notification for some that someone liked their post and then after they unlike it they still get the notification and then they go there and they're like what no one liked it <laughs> all right so this is gonna be called delete notification on unlike like this so it's gonna be a functions again let me copy this bit so functions the region, the document, and the event is going to be on delete. And we're going to have a snapshot. And what we need to do here is we just need to do db.doc and backtick slash, what is that? Okay, slash notifications slash snapshot.id. Remember, because the, it has the same ID. The ID of the uh, like is the same as the ID of the notification that pertains to that like. So slash, slash snapshot slash ID dot delete. This returns, oops, this returns a promise that holds a right result that we're not going to use. So we just leave the, the thing empty and we do return inside of here. And then we do dot catch error console dot error the error and then return all right let's save and these are db triggers that we need to deploy for them to work let's save this and make sure you're in the functions folder and let's do firebase actually i think the command even works from the uh, root folder so I, just, I don't know why i always have to go into functions okay now that it's deployed let's go to our functions in on firebase uh, as you see, we have our uh, DB triggers. Let's go, let's copy the endpoint and let's go here. Let's log in or let's actually create a new account because why not? So sign up, let's just test out just in case the functionality for adding the default, no image picture and stuff like that. Confirm password, uh, the same and the handle will be Jane. All right, we sent the post request to slash sign up. Oh, email is already in use. Um, let's just use like new to, and the handle is new to send. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, let's take this token and let me make sure that the ID is still correct. I didn't delete that screen. Okay, so we have one screen that starts with QED. Yeah, the, the ID is correct. Of course, this is a new account. That means we haven't liked it yet. So we'll change the endpoint to slash like. Oops, not here. And in the authentication, we do bearer and we paste the token and we send the request. All right, so like count incremented to two, we should see a notification collected, collection created and a notification created in a second. All right, so the notification has been created. Um, let's actually unlike that post or that screen and see if the notification is removed. And it is removed. All right, so let's post a comment and see if we get a notification. When we, we post a comment, let's change this to a post. And we have a raw body of type application JSON and we're gonna have a body of the comment we'll say nice scream again let's post the comment all right we get nice scream we get our comment back to us and we should get a notification created here 
All right, we do our get our notification and if we click on it, it says type comment and it has the correct recipient and sender. Uh, the sender was new to the account we just created and the recipient was user, which is the owner or like the person that posted this screen. Cool. So everything works. One other thing that I wanted to edit is in the users handlers file. When we get authenticated user here, we return the user and their likes. We need to return their, um, their uh, notifications as well, because we need to access them and show them on the front end. Mm -hmm. So let's add that. So here, instead of returning user data, we need to do return db dot collection notifications dot where recipient is request dot user dot handle and we order by the created at date in a descending order and we limit by 10. I want to limit to just 10. You can not limit if you want and then we get them. So let me make sure I didn't misspell anything. All right. So here we change another then and this will have a data. So we'll do data dot. Let's actually initialize user data dot notifications equals an empty array. And here we do data dot for each document user data dot notifications dot push. And uh, we actually need to the notification ID as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to push all the fields one by one. So let's do uh, what do we have? Let me put this on the side to just remember what we have. So we have recipient is uh, doc dot data dot recipient. And let's copy this and paste it like one, two, three. Okay, five more times. So we have sender, we have created at, we have the scream ID, the type, and the red. And we also need the ID, so let's say notification ID is doc.id. And so after this, after the for each, uh, loop, we just do res or return res.json user data. And uh, let's test this out. Uh, let's log in as user because user right now is the only user that's got uh, any notifications. So let's change that to login. And let's delete these two keys and change this to user at email.com. So we get our token. Let's send a get request at slash API slash user. Actually, uh, we need to either deploy or, um, or serve. I'm going to serve right now. All right. Uh, if you've served, make sure you're on local host and not the deployed one. And uh, let's send the request. And error nine. Oh, it's because we need to create an index. So let's copy this URL because it's um, it's like a complex um, query and we need to create an index for it. Create index. This will take a couple of minutes, so I'll be back once it's done. All right, so our, our index is now created. So if we send this request again, and there we go. We get our credentials and we get our notifications as well. And if we had any likes, we would get them here, but we don't. Uh, cool. So this is working. All right. There is two more routes that I want to create for users before we finish off this video. Uh, let me close this. Uh, let's go to index.js and create two routes here for users. One would be the route where we use to get a, a user's details, like another user's details or even our users. So this is, let's say 
app.get and it's at slash user or let's say yeah slash user slash uh, colon handle so this is uh, we pass the handle and the application gives us back the details of this user and this is a public route so and we're gonna call this function get user details and one other one is app dot post at slash uh, notifications and these names don't matter by the way these are not front-end routes these are not what the user sees these are just uh, what we send as requests uh, for our backend so slash notifications and we'll call this mark notifications red let me make sure that I spelled that correctly yes okay and this is of course protected all right, let's add these two and we will create them in a second. So here in users, we have get user details and mark notifications red. All right, let's save and let's go to users and create them. Um, I'm going to put the get user one here. So let's call this get another or any user or any user users details. This will be exports dot get user details it's gonna take a request and a response and let's initialize a say user data equals an empty object and here we do db dot doc and backticks slash users slash uh, dollar sign curly braces to put a variable request dot params dot um handle yeah we called it handle and here we do dot get so we get this user dot then we get a document and here we add the credentials but of course let's first check if the user exists so doc dot exists and here we do user data dot user equals do we need to initialize this uh, no, I don't think so. So user dot uh, doc dot data. So this is our user data, and then here we do return. Now we want to get their screams. So return. Remember, this is the users page. We need to see their screams. So return db dot collection screams, and where user is it user user handle not id user handle equals so we have this in our request params so request dot params dot handle and uh, we need to sort these as well so order or order order by created at descending we might have to create an index for this so uh, get, so we're gonna return it. So in the next then block, we're gonna have data. And here we initialize user data dot screams as an empty uh, array. And here we do data dot for each. And we get a document here. For each document, we need to do user data dot screams now here we could just push the data but we need the id as well so we need to do the screams that push and we create a new object so we need the body of the screen doc.data.body and let's copy this and uh, so we have a created that a user handle a user image a like uh, account and a comment count and here we have scream id equals doc dot id so what did we say created at uh, don't forget to click control d user handle user image um, like count and comment count all right so uh, I think this is it. yeah this is it we just need their screams all right, so after the for each, we need to do return response.json user 
data. And here after the dot then we do dot catch error console dot error the error and return res dot status five hundred dot json error error dot code. All right, so this this is sorted. And I'm gonna serve just to start creating the. Oh, I was already serving. What am I doing? <laughs> right, I'm gonna serve and test this just for it to prompt me to create the index and then let it index, let it, let it create. And then we're gonna create the mark notifications red route. What's happening? Uh, route right, post requires a callback function, but got an object undefined. Oh, because we're not, we haven't created this function yet. Let's just comment this out and try again. Oh, of course, let me remove it as well from here because there is no export for that. Uh, actually, we're not handling if the user, if the document doesn't exist. So let's do an else here. So if, if the document actually doesn't exist, we need to return response return response.json or dot status first of 404 dot json error user not found let's uh, save and it's gonna serve again and here let's do a get request without any authorization header at slash api slash user and we get let's say jane do we have Jane? User not found. Actually, I didn't delete the account itself. I just deleted the entry in users table. We have Johnny, I'm pretty sure. Oh, it's going to give us the error for the index, I think. Okay, I misspelled something. Status here. But why would it get here? Oh yeah, okay, there we go. So let's copy this and create the index. Okay, while this index is being created, let's create the other mark notifications red uh, function. So exports dot mark notifications red. Now the way this is gonna work is that when you open a one second, when you open a drop down that has a couple of notifications that are not red, we we are gonna send to our server a an array of IDs of those notifications that the user has just seen. So we can mark them red, so they're not uh, marked as unread on the client side anymore. So we're, here we're gonna need to, need to do something new called a batch write, which is in Firebase when you need to write uh, or update multiple um, documents. So let's do let's, let batch equals db dot batch like this as a function. And let's do request dot body. And here we're gonna have a property called, uh, but actually we're gonna have an array as the body. So let's do for each. So our body is an array and for each notification. And here it doesn't matter, we can call it anything, but let's call it notification. Const notification equals db dot doc and where slash notifications and uh, remember this is backtick so I can use this variable notification um, yeah notification this one but this is an array of IDs but let's so let's change this name to notification ID here notification ID so it makes more sense so now we have this document we need to do batch dot update and this I did I spelled that update and this is going to take a document reference which is the notification that we just created there and what we want to update so the key is red and we want to make it true 
because the user had, has just read this. So once the for each is done, we can do batch dot commit. Oops, dot commit, which returns a promise, and we do dot then. Doesn't hold anything, I think, and we just uh, return response dot json. JSON. And it's gonna have a message. We'll say notifications marked red. All right, and we catch. Uh, do we need to res return response? Yes. Okay. So let's say console dot error the error. Okay, so this is done. Mark notifications red, and let's bring it back here. So mark notifications red, and let's uncomment this route. And what we need to do now, let's. Okay, so the index has been created, so we can send this request to get the data of Johnny, and we should be able to see the data of Johnny here. And we do cool. So we get users, and we get the screams. He doesn't have any screams. User has a scream. We should see here. Cool, user has a scream. All right, so let's try to get, um, so user has uh, some notifications, right? If we go to our database, no, no, authentication database. So in notifications, uh, user has one notification. Let's actually add another notification for user somehow. How do we do that? Uh, let's log in as John or Johnny. Let's get Johnny's handle. Oh, but uh, oh, let's comment actually. So we can comment on John uh, as Johnny. We can comment on users scream. So here we'll say nice scream from Johnny, and we send this post request. Yeah, nice scream from Johnny, and we go here. Find that there is a comment. Actually, there's multiple comments on the same post, on the same screen, but we don't have, okay, now we have two notifications. So let's take these IDs. This is why we needed to send back the ID of the notification, because we need to use it when we wanna mark it as, as red. So our body is gonna be of type JSON. It's gonna have an array of strings. So the first string is gonna be this ID. And then the second string is going to be this ID. And um, remember that they are false. They have false for red. They're not red yet. So this is the second ID. And we need to send this request at slash API slash notifications. There's a post request. And we need actually Johnny's token. Actually, we need user's token. Oh. All right, we send this actually a slash API slash notifications. Did I make a mistake? Okay, I misspelled notifications. Let's send this request. We get notifications marked red, and if we look at our database, they have true for red. Cool. So this is gonna be the last video in right in the back end of our application. We're gonna uh, add two more DB triggers to finish up the functionality of our server logic, or our serverless logic, I guess. But before we do that, I want to fix a couple of things. So let's start with users. Let's go to users.js and in the signup. So yeah, here in the signup, 
we uh, here at the bottom when we return errors here if an, a server error happens I want to actually return something to the client so let's say uh, general and uh, not error like general and I want to say something went wrong please try again just in case this happens we will show it in the front end and one other th another thing here when we handle our e authentication error in login we want to we don't want to check for this password thing we just want to return in general wrong credentials and by the way if you want there is two um, status codes two error status codes two main ones related to uh, login in the oops the auth wrong password and the auth uh, user not found it's not recommended but you can actually use them to show on your front end that either this user doesn't exist or it's the wrong password but uh, i'll stick to this safe just return like this just return um general wrong credentials please try again uh, but you it's up to you what do you want to do all right so two more things in screams.js uh up all the way up here in get all screams we want to get the user image of the of the post so that we can show it in the post card so doc user image equals doc dot data dot user image and down here in uh, comment on screen when we validate the body we want to return the error as comment must not be empty all right cool so these are the fixes now let's add our DB triggers. But actually, uh, I wanted to fix more stuff here. If you have been wondering why you've been getting these uh, weird errors from our DB triggers saying function returned undefined expected promise or value, uh, I, tr I tried before returning zero and it doesn't work. You either return a Boolean value like true or false or you just return a promise. So what we're gonna do on our triggers is uh, here, for example, in, well, we're gonna change all of them, so here, uh, when we do our promise here, we add the return in front of it. So we return this promise and Don't worry just because we wrote return here doesn't mean it the execution stops here We actually get through here and then here when we return this promise We don't do another dot then and return nothing. We just do like this and we don't return anything when consoling the error we just do that and in delete notification we actually do return uh, db dot doc dot whatever dot delete and then we remove this then block and here as well on create notification on comment we return db dot doc and we remove this block and one thing that I wanted to fix I noticed that we are creating a notification on like and on comment even when we like our own posts which is obviously not a good thing uh, so what we need to do here when we check um, if document dot exists we also need to check um, that the ID so not the ID the handle of this uh, for example of this uh, like is not the same with the handle of the post because what this would mean it would mean the person that liked this post is the same person that posted this screen so we don't want to notify them if that's the case so what we want to do here is and no not here so if doc exists and doc dot data dot user handle so this refers to the screen does not equal snap not span snap shot dot data dot user handle so this would be the like actually let me make sure it's user handle so likes yeah they have a user handle so if we do this and we would copy this and we would go to create notification on comment and we do the same right here now we no longer get notifications if we like our own post or uh, our own screen or comment or our own screen. All right, so now I wanna add two more triggers. The first one is that, uh, what I wanna do is that if a user 
so for example, right now we have screens and each screen has an image URL, a user image of the user image at the time they created this screen. What I want to do now, if the user changes their profile picture, I want to add a DB trigger that actually changes the user image of uh, all the screens submitted by this user to show them as well on the card. So let's add a new uh, new trigger here called export um, called well exports dot and we're gonna call it on user image change and this will be a functions and for me I'm gonna add region Europe West one and Firestore dot what is going this going to be i think it's yeah on an up, on update on update and we will the doc wait on update wait actually i forgot to change document so document so we need to say first what document we want to listen to so slash users slash curly braces user id and then we want to say on update so on update and this will take a, a change in context. We don't need context, so we just take change. And what's cool about this change object is that it has two properties. So let's actually console log them so you see how this works. So let's do console log change dot before dot data. And if we were to just copy this and then type after here, it's, it's exactly that. Uh, this snapshot has two values, the before, before it was edited, and then the after. So we can compare these and we can see what's actually changed. So what we want to do here is we want to re uh, change the image of the, the posts that this user has created. Uh, actually, this is we're going to change multiple documents, potentially. So we need to do a batch, re uh, not read, write, a batch write. So let's do let batch equals db dot batch. As a function like this. And then here we do return db dot collection screams. Where, oops, what is this? What am I doing? Okay, so where uh, what is it? User handle equal equals um, what is it equal actually? Yeah, change. We have the data and change. Change dot doesn't matter which one we use because we can't use we can't change the user ID a uh, user handle anyway. So change dot before dot data dot um, it's just handle in the uh, document of the user. And we do get, and the, then here we get data. So data dot for each, so for each document that this user has created, I'm going to do const scream equals db dot doc backtick slash screams slash dollar sign curly braces doc dot id so this is the document and here we do batch dot update and we pass the document which is scream and our change would be user image will now be change dot after so this uh, the snapshot of after the change of this user document dot data dot image url all right, so here after the for each, yeah, we're after the for each here. So we do return batch dot commit. Yeah, that's it. So, oh, actually, oh, we need let's pay, we need to only do this if the user image uh, or the image URL has changed because the user can also change the um what we call them, the, the details, like the bio, the website, and the location. And we don't want to run this uh, batch uh, right if they didn't actually change their image. So what we want to do here, if we want to do it, we want to check if change dot before dot data dot um, image URL does not equal 
change dot after dot data dot image URL. So we'll execute this only if the image URL of this user document has changed. Let's do a console here just to make sure that it's only executing when the image changes. Image has changed. And yeah, I, th I believe this is it. We can actually test this. Um, yeah, but actually let's write the other trigger and then let's test both of them to save time. I don't want to make this video long because the last one was quite long. Um, so export dot. So for this one, what I want to do is um, a problem is that if we have screams and each scream could have likes and comments and notifications, and if a user deletes their scream, what I want to do is that I want the uh, trigger to delete all the notifications, the likes, and the comments that are related to that one scream that was deleted. All right, so we'll call this export dot on scream scream deleted or on scream delete let's do functions well, let's copy this i don't like writing this <laughs> let's do functions functions dot region the same dot document screams scream id dot on delete and here we're gonna have a snapshot and the context. I have an arrow function here. Uh, we're not gonna need the snapshot. We're just gonna need the context because the uh, context is has the parameters that we have in the URL. So let's do const scream id equals context dot params dot um, scream your uh, scream id choosing the url and let's do our batch here so const batch equals actually here we could have made it into a const as well const batch equals that so batch equals db dot batch it's a function like this and now we do return db dot collection let's start with comments comments where the where um, scream id equals scream id dot get wait is it yeah yeah okay so dot get dot then and then we have data now data dot for each doc um let's do can we do it in one line yeah batch dot delete and we can say db dot doc back text slash comments slash dollar sign uh, doc dot id like this yeah, this is, I think this is it. Yeah, slash comment slash doc dot ID. Yep. Now we need to also, um, after the for each, we need to delete as well the uh, likes. So let's do return db dot collection likes. Oh my God. <laughs> Where? Scream ID equals scream id i think we can copy this block and then we just paste it and what we do here delete slash likes slash doc dot id like this and then so we've looked for comments and then deleted them and then we looked for likes and then deleted them now we look for notifications and then paste this, oops, not this, let's paste this block. Yeah, so we paste this block and so data and delete slash notifications slash this ID. And then here we just return uh, batch dot commit like this. And we do a catch block. So catch error um, console dot 
error the error all right so we have to deploy because these are db triggers so file base deploy okay let's test out our so what's cool about db triggers is that we don't have to actually just uh, send requests we can change stuff in the database here on the interface and it will trigger the db triggers so if we were to go to this okay so this screen was submitted by user let's change the user the user dot image url right here all right so let's change this from oops no image to no image is like with an S, even though that this image doesn't exist, but the database knows nothing about actual images. So let's look for change here. This should change to no images and it does. Cool. So the DB trigger is working. And if we will go to functions and to logs, we scroll down, you see, this is the before and this is the after. So this is the before and you see here the before had no image and then the after had no images. So these are the before and after. And here the image has changed, was triggered, this uh, this uh, conditional. Actually here in the if we need to do as well an else. Let's do else return uh, true in case actually it goes through this because it can go if the user just changes their details or just if I were to go here and change something that's not the image URL, actually, let me open this on a different window so I don't keep waiting for it. So here, if I were to go to user and change something else, like, uh, I don't know, location would be London again. And I'll do update. And if I were to go to screens, of course, nothing changes. And if I were to go to the logs, because that trigger will still happen. Yeah, that trick. Oh, but I think it's because it hasn't been deployed properly. So, okay, let's just change something one more time. So let's change, for example, not the email, the website from google.com to Twitter. And then if we would look here, we're still, oh, we're still getting function returned undefined because uh, it went through here and this uh, this was not satisfied, this condition, so we didn't return anything. But with our newly deployed code, this, this problem should go away. It doesn't, or does it? Oh, it does. Okay, so we get before, we get after. So here we changed Google to Twitter, but image hasn't changed, so that, block of code of course didn't get executed cool so let's test out as well uh, us deleting our own post so we will log in as user because user has this screen and then there are these notifications that are related to this screen so you see the id is starting with 14 and it's this post and here the likes are these two likes are related to the screen and then this comment as well is related to the screen so if you were to delete this screen all these comments and likes and notifications should be deleted so let's make sure that that's the case. So we log in as user. We take the to token and let's do slash API slash scream, scream slash, and then we change this to a delete request. We remove the body and let's get the ID of this scream. And we do this and this should delete the screen. It says unauthorized. Oh, because we didn't add, oh, oh snap. I have to log in again. We didn't add that token and now I don't have it in the clipboard anymore. <laughs> Sorry guys. Oh, I changed this to a post. Let's get a token. Let me put the token in the authorization. Do I spell this correctly? Also, yeah, like this authorization. Cool. Bearer token, and then change this to a delete. Take the ID from here. To slash scream, slash that ID, and it's a delete, we send it. 
screen deleted successfully and then we go here so everything should be deleted from these three uh, collections Okay, I must have uh, made a mistake in the code. Okay, it says in the log it says data dot for each is not a function. Oh, what am I doing? Of course, uh, here when we return these db dot collection dot whatever, here of course we do get can't get anything without chaining get after it just like here okay it should work now let's save and let's deploy my bad and we need to create that uh, that scream again manually because it's deleted now so let's get the ID of that scream from here Screams. Oh, the collection is gone because it was the only scream there. So screams, and the ID is this, and well, it's gonna have a user handle of user and a body of this is the scream. Um, what else we need a created at it doesn't matter could, could just be anything let's give it actually a string I don't know just this just give it a like count of three or two number these don't matter guys we're gonna delete it anyways so why did that one go away so Number is one. Okay, I think this is it. Yeah. All right, we create it. Let's try to delete it again. This code has been deployed, and this time when we delete it, it should actually the our code should delete the notifications, the likes, and the comments. So let's send this request. Scream deleted successfully. All right, notifications deleted, comments deleted, and likes deleted. Uh, sorry about that mistake, guys. One more thing, though. If we would go to the Google Firestore REST API documentation page, uh, you could find that th this is basically a, a REST API that any Firestore or Firebase um, application can use to access their database. So if we would actually copy this endpoint right here up to slash documents, and if we were to go to Postman, and paste this here and then get our project ID. We can get our project ID from our config file. So this is our project ID. Let's copy that. So if we paste it here and we do, let's say document slash screams and send a get request, it will actually Oh, we have no screams. Let's try users. Yeah, we'll actually get our users formatted in a different way, but it will still actually get our users, which is of course a big no-no. It's a big security um, hole. So let's patch that hole. So if we were to go to Firebase and go to database and then go to rules, here, because what we're doing is we're using only the admin SDK to access our database. Uh, here, instead of allow read and write, we can say allowed read and write colon if false, which means don't allow read and write basically. So we're locking down our, our database. So now if we were to go back to uh, Postman and we send this request, it will say unauthorized. But if we were to send a request at our endpoint, out our API endpoint, at slash screams, we will still get our screams. 
Now we get an empty array because we have no screens right now, but it's a 200. We did get the data from the server. So yeah, this is the last thing that I wanted to add to actually finish off the uh, backend. So yeah, guys, we're done with the backend and uh, now we will start working with the React applications. So look forward to that. In this video, we're gonna start to create our React app and we're gonna get create React app to scaffold all the boilerplate needed to run our application. But before we do anything, I wanna show you something. So um, I didn't emphasize enough the point of why we had to write all the backend in cloud functions instead of using the Firebase client uh, library. So this is basically our, event, our eventual bundle, our complete project bundle. And um, this is by the way, a tool called Source Map Explorer that you can use to see which packages are uh, have which size in your bundle. And I'm using it to uh, look at the final bundle of our application, which will be uh, 457 kilobytes in size. And as you see here, material, material UI has 171 kilobytes from that. And the rest are all necessary stuff that we need. So this is the bare minimum that you we can use to actually have the full functionality of our application uh, work properly. And if we compare this to something like this, which is a project I worked on before that uh, has very minimal uh, functionality actually, but uses the uh, Firebase library um, uh, implementation, Firebase client library to actually access the Firebase uh, database and uh, perform operations on there. If you notice, this package is 907, uh, this bundle is 907 kilobytes, which is double the first one. And Firebase alone is almost 500 kilobytes of that. And stuff like React uh, Redux Firebase is 60 kilobytes. So you see how using Firebase on the client can inflate the size of the bundle by a lot. And this is important for many, many reasons of which uh, you can use services that charge you with uh, by bandwidth, like a most notably AWS um, S3. Uh, so you will get charged more because your users will request bigger chunks of data. Second is if you're shipping your single page application to slower mobile devices, they will have to unpack this massive JavaScript bundle. And and by the way, this project doesn't even have a material UI and, and the other stuff that we're using in our project. So this will be more than one megabyte, which is, um, which is kind of a lot for a React app that uh, of this scale. So yeah, I just wanted to show you this quickly. All right, so let's actually start to create our application. In the desktop here, I'm gonna open up git bash. And if you don't have create react app installed, you can just, uh, of course you have npm installed, I'm assuming. You can just run npm install dash g create dash react app. I already have it, so I can just run create react app, and then the name of the directory will be uh, social ape-client. Now this is gonna take some time, so I'll be back once it's done. All right, now that it's done installing, we can cd into it. So cd social ape dash, uh, what do we call it? Client, yeah. Okay, let me open it in VS Code by running code dot. All right, so create React app comes, uh, ships a, uh, a webpack development server that's already configured for us. So we can just run npm start and it will start our app. Actually, let me open it up here. All right, so this is our app right now, nothing fancy. Let's clean up the, um, the stuff. We don't need this logo, so we can just delete the logo. So let's delete this. Actually, I need this font family uh, thing from here. I'm just gonna delete this file. Let's go to app CSS, let's delete everything. But here I wanna keep that font uh, family thing just in case the user doesn't have the Roboto font, which is the main font that the Material UI will use. So let's go to index.js uh, and remove index.css from it. Let's go to our app.js, remove that logo because we deleted it. And here I'm just gonna say, I'm just gonna have a header one that says our app. All right, let's save all files. 
All right, cool. Our app. Let's. Um, I want to change the icon here and change the name of the app. Uh, I already have the icon downloaded, but I'll post a link uh, to this in the description. So if you go to our app public, we paste it there and we delete this uh, favorite icon thing. And uh, let's go to public index.html and change fav ico to icon.png or whatever you named it. I named it that. And change the title here to social ape. Let's save. Let's go back and everything is changed. Cool. All right. So here in the source folder, there are a couple of conventions of, on how to group your components. I'm going to have two folders, one that's called pages for the actual pages. We're not going to have a lot of pages. It's going to be like five of them. And here we're going to have components. So I'm going to put, I'm going to create three pages for now. So home.js and the pages uh, I'm going to have with lowercase, um, with camel case, I'm going to, they're going to start with a lowercase uh, letter, basically. So I'm going to have home.js, login.js, and signup.js. All right, so here, because uh, remember, guys, I'm using ES7 React Redux GraphQL React Native Snippets extension. I'm just going to, sorry for reading the whole name. I don't know why I did that. <laughs> just going to do RCE. So this is a class-based component, and it's already exported for us. And here I'm going to have a header one that says home page. Uh, let's copy the whole thing, go to login and change this to control D, control D and do login and then paste here and then do control D, control D, login or lowercase login. Oops, no, this is sign up. What am I doing? Sign up. Cool. Save everything. Let's go to app.js and here uh, I I already want to install uh, React Router DOM so that we can have our different pages in different uh, routes. So I'm going to open up a new command line, um, a new terminal, and say, whoa, it's bugged. Okay, let's do npm install dash dash save react dash router dash DOM. Let's hit enter. And while that installs, let me create a component here, the good old navbar. Can't have a website without a navbar, can you? All right, so still RCE here, even though we're not going to use it yet. And here in the home or in the app, rather, let me close the index HTML, the app CSS, the index CSS. We don't need these. So here in the app, uh, okay, that's done installing. Let's import a couple of things from, um, from React Router DOM. So we have browser router. We have oh, router. We have switch and route. Well, my OCD is telling me to sort them alphabetically. <laughs> so these are from React Router DOM, if I can spell correctly. <laughs> All right. So for React Router DOM to work, or for the router to work, we have to wrap everything here in a router, um, in the router um, component. Actually, let me name it router because that makes more sense. So as browser router as router, and here I'm gonna put our routes, but we're gonna need to put a switch, not. Not the JavaScript switch, but the component switch. Close this and then put our routes here. So the first route will be the home route. And this will be two, not two, sorry, path equals slash. And this will have a component, which we haven't brought up yet, brought in yet, of home. So this is the home page. And let's bring them. Let's say here pages and let's bring our pages. So import home from slash pages slash home. Let me copy this two more times. And here select this control D and do login and sign up. And actually this will be exact. So it will be exactly this path. 
So if we add something here, it's not it's not that path. Let me copy this, paste it two more times, and this will be to slash login. And the component will be login, and this will be to slash sign up, and the component will be sign up. All right, let's save everything, and let's see if this is working. So we get a home page here, and we type slash, we get home page again. Slash login should give us the login page, and it does. And slash sign up gives us the sign up page. Now, obviously, we want some sort of like navigation bar here with those links. We don't want to type them here each time. So we're going to install Material UI right now. So let's do npm install dash dash save at material dash UI slash core. Now, um, you can go to material, material uicom They have really good documentation. And here you can go to actually getting started and it will tell you to install it. And if you want to link it with um, through HTML, no, actually this is the font. And any component you want to use, you go to component API or component demos rather. And in this case, we're going to use the app bar, which is the nav bar technically. And yeah, so you can take any of their examples, you click on show the source and you actually get uh, the source code and how to use these uh, nav bars. But the way I'm going to want to use the nav bar is different to all their implementations. So I'm actually going to do it manually right now. But there are certain things where I'm going to copy some code. So so that I don't waste time. All right, so material Y has been installed. Let's go to um, nav bar. And here we need to bring it, uh, bring app bar and a couple of other things. So we're going to have a lot of imports in our file. So I want to put some comments on our imports so that we can navigate them easily. So here I'm going to do MUI stuff, which is material UI. So here I'm going to const, oh, not const. Forgot this is ES6. All right, so uh, import app bar from uh, material no, actually at material, material UI slash core slash app bar. Now we could actually app bar we like this. Now we could actually um, group all our imports like this. For example, we're going to need now something called tool bar and just do this. This would work. But this is not good uh, practice right now because we're going to need to do something called tree shaking where we import each module alone. Plus, the problem with uh, doing stuff like this is that each time you run your app, it's importing the whole uh, framework and it's going to make your compile time a bit slower. So we're actually going to do uh, the practice they actually recommend. So just do app bar and here slash core slash app bar. And if we were to go back to the documentation page and expand any of them, you notice that every app bar needs a toolbar inside and then you have your um, buttons inside of that. So let's go here and let's import the toolbar. Let me just copy this actually. And then select this, control D and do toolbar. Where is the bar actually? Is the B capital? No, it's just toolbar like that. Okay. So here for our navbar, we're going to need to do return like this, um, app bar. I'm going to want, I want to have it fixed at the top. So let's do position fixed. And by the way, if you're wondering how I know that there is this thing called position, um, here, you can just on any, on any element, you could just scroll down and you will see the API reference, or you can go to component API and pick your component. And if we would go to app bar here, it will show us that these are all the properties that this component can take and the values that they take. So I'm using right now position and uh, these are the values you can have. And uh, actually the default value is fixed. So I shouldn't even type that. <laughs> all right, I learned something right now. So I should just leave it like this because that's the default value. So let's do toolbar. And here, uh, what do I need to do? Actually, there's nothing right now. I'm just going to leave it like that. And I want to put some buttons inside. And for this, I'm going to bring in button from material UI. 
And it's not actually 100 kilobytes. This uh, import cost uh, extension sometimes doesn't calculate the size properly. Okay, so here we'll say button, and this has a property color. Um, I'm gonna do in. I'm gonna give it inherit. And and button actually can take some. This is this is a uh, can be a higher order component, and you, you can pass it a component, a different component, and then pass it the properties of those components, and then you will have that component as a child. So what I'm talking about, you can right now just say button, and let's say to what is this? This is login, and then let's paste this two more times, and then say home, and then this would be sign up, and let's save. Let's go to our app. Now, what we want in our application is that we want the navbar to be at the top and then the navbar never changes. It's only the content of the page that changes. So this navbar right here is not gonna go inside the switch. It's gonna be outside. Of course, it's still gonna be in the router, but it's gonna be right here. So let's say navbar, and let's actually bring it in. Let's say components, and let's do import navbar from components slash navbar let's save let's go to our app and there we go we have our navbar and we have our buttons but the text is gone because it's actually behind the navbar so let, let's give our let's make this section that's got the text a container like a bootstrap container if you've used that before. So let's go in the actual, actually I'm gonna go to the global CSS file, app.css, let's do dot container, this class, and I wanna give it, so I wanna give the container margin top so that uh, the top content doesn't hide behind the navbar. So actually let's do margin, and then here let's say, so the way margin works, you can uh, you can give four uh, numbers. You can give one or which applies to all. You can give two values which apply to top and bottom and the left and right. And then you can give four. So the first one will be top and then goes clockwise, right, bottom, and then left. So here I'm gonna do 80 for top, not 20, 80. And then for, um, for right, I'm gonna give it auto. For bottom, I'm gonna give it zero, and then for left, I'm gonna give it auto, so that it it actually stays in the middle by giving it auto. I'm gonna give it a max width of 1200 pixels, so that it's actually kind of pushed to the middle. All right, so let's save that, but we need to give this class to something. I think, what do I surround with? Do I surround, I think I'm gonna surround the whole thing. So let's copy the, uh, cut that and then do dot container and then put our stuff here. Let's look here. All right, cool. Actually the navbar shouldn't be in the container. So the navbar should be outside like this. All right, uh, but our buttons right now don't do anything. So Let's go to the navbar here. Like I said earlier, we can pass it a component and here we need the uh, the link component from React Router DOM. We can do import link from react-router-dom. And here we're using tree shaken as well. So we're importing only that component. So here, let's take the link. Let's do, let's write in all of these fields and let's do component equals link and here we can actually pass the properties of the component link and it will be under the button so in, in a way it's like actually putting it here but it looks cleaner so here let's do so the link needs a two property and for login it's going to be two slash login for home it's going to be two slash to just slash <laughs> and for sign up is going to be to uh, slash sign up so we save and then we go to our app 
And there we go. So if we click on our buttons, it actually takes us to those pages. Cool. Let's bring these buttons to the middle. Um, how do we, let's give this toolbar a class name of uh, nav-container. And let's go to our CS, uh, CSS, app CSS, and do nav-container. And we're just going to have margin auto. Let's save, save everything. Let's go, and there we go, our buttons are in the middle. Cool. All right, so our application so far has uh, no content. I mean, there's no markup, our pages are empty. So let's start working on the home page. Let's start showing, let's fetch the screams that we have and show them here. All right, but before we do that, let me go to the material UI documentation and show you something. So first thing is I want to implement a theme. All right, where is it? Utils, no, 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 customization, yeah, themes. Okay, so we don't have to necessarily, uh, you know, create a theme, but I want to create one. Uh, you can do so many things with the theme. You can set a color scheme. You can um, have like a font, your font size, your global styles, all this stuff. So I'm going to create a theme and just set some colors and uh, because I don't like this blue. All right, so to do that, let's go to our app.js. So here, we need to bring in two things. Um, let's go right here and do import MUI theme uh, provider from mater at material-ui slash core slash MUI, not actually slash styles, slash MUI theme provider. Uh, next thing is uh, the create theme function. So import create theme, oops, theme from uh, at material UI slash core slash styles slash create. Actually, it's create MUI theme. Let me copy that and put it here. All right, so to create the theme, we just need to do const theme equals, and we just call that function, create MUI theme. And here we pass it an object with some options. Oh, oops. So here we pass it this object with options. And for me, I just wanna have like a color palette theme. If you wanna create yours, you can go to here, color, and you can take any of these colors and you can scroll down and there's a color tool here. Pick your colors. You can just have the primary colors or you can have multiple shades. Uh, I've already got mine. Uh, I stored it in this text file. I'm just gonna copy it. You can take the time to create yours. I'm just gonna paste mine here and I'll just save. Actually, one more thing. We need to provide the um, MUI theme provider. I'm just gonna cut all of this and do MUI theme provider and it has a property of theme and it's just theme because we named this variable theme and close that and let me paste everything back in it all right so now everything that's got the color primary will have this main and everything that's got the color secondary will have this main and this contrast text is basically the color of the text that's on this element and for me both colors they have to have white text on them which stands out the most so let's go to our app and there we go, the color has changed to this beautiful blue that I chose. All right, so next thing, let's let's start showing, let's start showing the screens here. So to do that, let's go to, so the home. In the home, what I wanna do is I wanna have a section here on the left for screens and I wanna have a section on the right for the profile. And I want to have, uh, like, if you've used Bootstrap before, you're going to have a, co um, a row, and inside of that, we have columns. I want a column on the left that's of um, the width 8 out of 12, and the right one would be 4. And for that, we're going to use the grid system. So the grid is uh, basically this. So if we expand this, you just bring in grid, which is right here from Material UI, and you just put um, the container would be grid, and you add this container property and then the elements will have this item property. So let's, let's do that. Here in the home, I'm gonna 
I'm gonna remove this stuff and I'm gonna um, put grid container and close this and then inside of here I'm gonna put um, grid item and this will have a property small of 8 which means up to small screen it's gonna have a width of 8 and XS which is extra small of 12 so in really small screens it's gonna take uh, uh, take the full width for now I'm gonna put the text saying uh, content and then let me copy this paste it and this will be 4 and on extra small screen it's gonna be 12 as well and this is gonna be profile profile like this so let's save oh we need to bring in grid of course Port grid from material UI slash core slash is it just grid yeah just grid like this we save and let's go back to our app and there we go we have this which has if we inspect we'll have oops let me bring this let me put them side by side if you can see here takes on the full width uh, right now actually I want to edit it because this is right now leaving no space between them and as you can see here you can have this property uh, spacing okay let me look at the example the proper example so here yeah the second example so if we would look here it's got this where is it yeah here you give the value of the spacing okay right here so grid spacing and then you give a number so for me I want the number 16 so uh, here I'm gonna say spacing equals 16 I'm gonna save let's go back and right now if we inspect you're gonna see that this would have a padding yeah there we go so it's got a padding which is gonna push the content a little bit to the middle so there would be space between our element elements all right so let's go back to our app so here in home we have um, our our grid here that says content but here we content is not enough obviously we want to put our um, our screams so for this we need to fetch them from our server so in component did mount I'm gonna send the request to our server and for that actually we're gonna use Axios so let's install that open up a terminal and say npm install dash dash save Axios and let me go to my Firebase um, dashboard and grab the the endpoint or the uh, base URL of our API. Let me go to the project, to functions. And if you're just doing the React bit, uh, this is going to be in the video description of part 14 or in a comment in the first video or in both. <laughs> All right, so I'll copy that. And if you've done the back end, of course, you know what to do. And it, so in React, the way we set up our base URL, in, instead of using it everywhere, we can just go to the package JSON. And here at the bottom, we can add a property called uh, proxy. And let's paste this. And without the last uh, slash, because I want to add it on each request, because it makes more sense like that. All right, so Axios is installed. So let's bring it in. So import Axios from Axios. And here in the component did mount, we can do axios dot get, and here we send a request to slash screams. And if you remember, or if you've seen the backend, okay, let me send this request. This is the type of data. Oops, it's a get request. And remove the body. So this is the type of data that we're gonna get. This is one scream. It's gonna have this these properties. So here to slash screams, of course, this returns a promise. So then result, uh, what we want to do, we want to store these screams in uh, the component state. So let's initialize that. So state, state equals an object and it's got screams and that's going to have an initial value of null. So here, if we get a result successfully, we do this dot set state. And in the state, we set the screams to, because this is Axios, we don't just say response. Uh, the data is actually stored in a key called data inside the response. So you do res data, 
and let's handle any potential errors. If there's any error, we just console log it. Error. Cool. All right. So let's actually um, show our screams because right now we're just fetching them. And when we get them, let's, you know, just in case, let's just console log them and see res.data. Cool. All right. So here, content. We, get, we want to put like a variable here and let's call it, um, we haven't created it yet, but let's just call it, because these are the recent posts, excuse me, we we'll say recent screams uh, markup. And let's create that. So here, let's say let recent screams markup equal. And what we want to do here is we want to check if we have screams in the state. If the screams in the state are still null, that means uh, are still null, that means we're still loading them, we're still fetching them from the server, the, the request hasn't got a response yet. So we can use this in a ternary operator, we can do this dot state dot screams as a condition. That means if it's, if it's not null, that means we've got the data. So let's actually show the data. So what we want to do here, let's do parentheses and let's do this dot state dot screams. So if it's true, that means it's got some value in it. It's not null. So this dot state dot screams dot map. And for each screen, let's for now, uh, let's for now return, just return a paragraph. And in that paragraph, we put the open bra uh, curly braces. And remember, this is the data we get. Let's show the body. So let's go back. So for each screen, let's show screen dot body. And as you see right now, we have only two screens. All right. So for each one, we show that else if it's still null, then we'll just show a text that says loading dot dot dot. All right. And we put that markup uh, variable there and we save. Cool. It compiles successfully. We go to our app. And it says loading because and require status 404. Oh, there's another problem here for materially, materially why? Because of uh, the typography. Are we even using typography? Oh, we need to add this to our theme. I've seen this error before. So we go to app to our theme, we add this property at the bottom, typography use next variants, and that error should be gone, but we're still not getting our screams because we get error 404. Localhost 3000 slash screams is not found. Maybe we need to rerun our dev server when we change the proxy. Let's, let me do that. So I stop it and run it again. All right, so yeah, we had to restart our server and there we go. We get the text for the body text of our screams. Uh, for each screen, we get the body text. So the first one says, hello user. And the second one says something. So there we go. We get them. Cool. Uh, let's actually show them in a better way. We show who posted them and when and stuff like this. Now for this, we're going to need to have um, to create a compo. Where are, where are we in home? Let me close this and this. So here in the home, uh, we need to sh actually use a component uh, that's specifically made to show us details for screams. So let's create a component. Let's say here scream and for scream we pass, we actually pass a property called scream, which is going to be the scream and let's close this. Let's import it and then create it. So import scream from, and then we're going to put it in. Uh, so go back one level and go to components, do slash scream. So let's create this. So here, let's do new file scream. Of course, this is a component, so it's um, it's Pascal cased. So the first first letter is a capital. So let's do RCE tab. Let's remove this export. Uh, now for this here, like I know we're gonna do some styling later. So let's. Let me show you something in the Material UI. Material UI, they prefer to use the CSS, um, JSS uh, type of styling where um, 
where you actually write uh, write an object, a JavaScript object, and then use a higher order component to apply those um, those styles and make them into classes, and then use them. If you know, uh, if you want to see an example of that, let's go to, for example, buttons. And as you see here, they import this uh, with styles component or higher order component. And then they create a styles object and it's optional if you want to bring in the theme, the global theme that you created in your app.js, you can do that. So any stylings that are kind of shared between components, you actually write them in the uh, theme in app.js and then get the theme and then use them there so you don't have to repeat yourself in multiple components. So it's like this, you bring in with styles, you create your styles object and then you export your uh, component with this higher order um, component with styles. So you pass it that styles and then you pass it your component. And then this will create an object called classes in the properties of this component. And then you get the classes and then you use it like this. So for each component, you say class name equals classes dot button. And now these styles in the button will be applied to this button right here. So let's, let's implement that. Okay, so let's, for now, I'm just going to put like some random style just to apply this method first. So here we'll have styles and here, um, well, we're going to have a card. So let's put here for the card. Let's just say display flex, which I don't think changes anything. And let's bring that with styles. But well, it doesn't change anything for this example. Of course, in many cases it does. So let's do import with styles from material at material UI slash core slash styles slash with styles. And then we go here at the bottom, we do export defaults with styles and then open parentheses and pass the styles constant to this one, close parentheses, open parentheses, and then pass our uh, component screen. Now this will give us access to a variable classes in the properties. So inside, actually inside the render, we can destructure this variable. We can say const uh, like this, when classes equals this dot props. And of course, this is the, this is the equivalent of saying const classes equals um, this dot props dot classes. This is called destructuring. So anyway, so now we have classes, we can actually access them. But let's create the markup of our of our screen. And each of our screens is gonna be a card. So let's look at the card element. So if we go to cards, component demos cards, uh, this is the card. This is one of my favorite elements in material design. It's this card that actually has these the side shadow that looks, it's kind of like on top of the background, like kind of extruded a bit. So this is what we're going to use. We're going to have an image, but it's going to be on the left. So this is the kind of, um, the kind of structure that we're having. We're going to have a card with a card media. Uh, let's take some of these, um, imports. So namely these four right here or these five, let's paste them up here. Let's say movie stuff and space these, but we're not going to need actions or action area. Let's delete these. Let's do card, oh no, not like this, card. And inside of card, we're gonna, first thing is gonna, we're gonna have the image. So card uh, media. And this will have an image property. And this will be the image of the, uh, if you, the image of the post of the screen, it's gonna be in a variable called user image. So let's do uh, image equals screen. Or actually, let's just say user image. Let's extract all those um, those properties. So let's do const. Or actually, it's in the props as well. So the scream is in the props. This uh, remember, guys, the scream that we pass here. Excuse me, is in the props. So here we we can we can further destructure properties from property from an object inside of props by doing this. So scream like this, and then we do colon, and then we do another object here, and then we uh, extract properties from inside this screen. So what we need is, um, we need the body, 
uh, we need created at user um, image we need the user handle uh, I think this is all we need for now maybe the scream ID well let's get all of them the like count and then the comment count alright so this will extract them and we're gonna access them like this so alright so the we have the image so it's there is this title property for the card me card media let's say profile oops profile image if I can spell <laughs> alright so after card media we're gonna have uh, our content but I wanna or the or just let's, let's just put the card content for now let's not worry about the styling for now let's look at what it looks like and then style it so here we're gonna have the um, the handle of the user so let's, let's, we're gonna use this thing called typography in uh, material UI it's uh, preferable whenever you have some sort of text that you want to show you want to use this typography um, object so here if we go to component demos oh actually it's up here yeah in the style typography typography is uh, any type of uh, text you have in your app you use typography and then you give it a different variant which is gonna give it a different uh, size and styling so for this we're gonna use typography and by the way whenever you're confused with these objects you just um, or with these components you can check them uh, the documentation and the API component API and you can as well when you put a uh, they have types so when you put a component you can press control space in VS code and you can see all the properties Oh, actually I haven't imported it so we can't see any <laughs> okay so let's import typography from material UI slash core slash typography now if I press control space there we go we get all the properties that can exist on this and then if we type let's say one of them which is variant and we do equal and then we can get as well more properties here uh, for this we're gonna use the header 5 we want it to be slightly big and let's close this and let's say the value will be user handle and then after this we want to sh show when this was posted so let's do typography variant is it body board let's give it body 2 okay body 2 and let's give this a color of text secondary which makes it a bit gray because we don't want it to distract from the content it's just like metadata so this will be the created at and now we want the actual body of the uh, of the of the screen so typography variant um, is it body body one let's give it body one let's see what this looks like all right, so this is the screen. All right, let's save and let's save here as well. It's compiling. It complains that we didn't use those variables. Uh, let's look at our app. All right, so there we go. We get our card, but there's the color of the card and the color of the background are kind of the same. So let's change that let's go to app CSS uh, and the global CSS and actually here the body I want to give it some sort of background color let's give it like a very light gray uh, RGB I'm gonna give it 245 245 245 and let's save cool so we have now gray and these cards are white so they stand out um, let's give this some kind of like margin and this should be a link to the user's page uh, here scream actually this we want to give it the component uh, link and the two oops two not co two will be uh, actually a template string so curly braces back ticks and let's do slash users we, we haven't created this page yet but let's just do slash users and then pass user handle um, we need to import a link import link from react router 
dom slash link. All right, let's check our app. Oh, this is underlined and the color is still the same. Let's fix that. So here, let's give the anchor tag globally. Let's give it no text decoration. So text dash decoration, oops, decoration, none. And to change the color, let's go to scream. Uh, where are we? We're here. So to change the color, we're just going to give it the color primary to get the, our blue color. Uh, let's save everything. Cool. So there's no underlining and the color is blue. We click on it and it takes us to slash user slash Johnny. Cool. But we don't see the image actually because for some reason it has zero width. Can we inspect this and try to fix this? So... Oh, it's it's oh it's in a div. That's that's interesting. Uh, let's just actually um, edit some styling here. So starting with the card, I want it to have a, a margin bottom, margin bottom, so that we'll have some space between the cards. Let's give it twenty, and I think that's it for the card. Let's edit. Um, Let's give this a class of classes dot uh, details, which we don't, or let's say content because it's the card content. And let's give the card itself class name of classes. Remember, we have this classes object, so classes dot card. Oh, we actually didn't give it earlier. And where is the image? Do I give the image a class? Yes, I think so. Okay, classes, class name equals uh, classes dot image. We go here, let's give image some styling. Uh, let's give it a minimum width of 200. And yeah, that's it. Let's style the content. So content, um, what do we wanna do actually? Okay, let's give it some padding because it's too close to the edges. Give it like padding of 25. Uh, let's see what it looks like. All right, so we get the image now, but I think the image is kind of being stretched. Okay, I don't like this. Uh, well, let's do object fit, uh, no, cover the same but I think if I were to make this div longer it will stretch this because uh, we need let's let's give it object fit cover because that's a good property to give your images so that they don't get uh, stretched by the uh, change uh, the changes of the dimensions of the image uh, let's save this and let's look at this all right it's looking much better of course, we need to format this because we don't want to show this ISO time string. In the last video, we started working on the homepage. We created a screen component and now we're showing our recent screens on the homepage. Um, now, I've, I went ahead and added one more screen and some likes and comments, which we can't see right now because we're not displaying that data. So, um, but I noticed something. If you open up the console uh, window, we have a couple of errors that we need, a couple of warnings that we need to fix. Um, by the way, this is the data that we got back from our uh, API endpoint, from our request. Um, we printed it right here. Here, but I'm gonna remove the print because we don't need to have the data. Let's look at these errors. So first one is uh, React Router DOM apparently doesn't like it when we import link separately. So let's fix that. So here um, in the screen here, so let's destructure link from the entire um, library. I think we're using it in the home as well. No. Yeah, in the navbar, we're using it in the navbar. So here, let's remove the slash link and just 
do like this. And by the way, my uh, server is still running, my uh, development server. If yours is not, just run npm install. I'm gonna close this window. I'm gonna save all files. Let's go back to our console window. That error is gone. And here it says each, each child in a list should have a unique key. Oh, this is a React thing. I think it's in the home, yeah, here. Whenever we are looping through an array and we're showing some data, each child has to have a unique key property. So let's pass this a key property. And we know that our screams, they have the scream ID property, which is unique. So let's do scream dot scream ID. And that error should be gone when we save. And it is, uh, apparently I gave some class a class instead of class name. It's in the card content, so that's in scream. Yeah, right here, so class name instead of class and all the errors should be gone and we only get these warnings that we're not using these values. Cool. All right, so I wanna format this. Like you see in Facebook and Twitter, whenever someone posts something, you see like five minutes ago or like two days ago or whatever. And uh, for this, I'm gonna use a library called DayJS. Now we could use moment, uh, moment is great, but moment has like loads of extra functionality that we're not gonna use. Uh, and it's, it adds like more than 50 kilobytes to our bundle size. So I'm just gonna use an old, a lightweight alternative called day, day JS, as my voice is cracking there. <laughs> so npm install dash dash save day JS. And as it's installing, I'm actually gonna bring it in here. Let's do import day.js from day.js and not days, day.js. So if you if we were to go to the uh, documentation, you'll see it's it follows the same um, conve or like same format that you would use a uh, moment. You just call the, the class or I mean the library and then you pass it the date like here and then you do dot format and you format it like you want. But for this one, we don't need dot format, we need um, Actually, we need a functionality that comes from a plugin. Where's the plugin list right here? So I'm gonna search for from now. Yeah, so it's this from now thing. We wanna show the date like this, um, this relative time plugin. So we need to bring this plugin just like this. So let's copy this. Uh, let's go here. So import relative time from there. And the way uh, DayJS works is that we need to call this extend uh, function to actually add this plugin. So at the start of our code, we need to do day and uh, not in the class in the random method. So here we say day js dot extend and we pass it our plugin. So relative time and here where the date is right here, we cut this created that we say day js and then we pass it the created that date and then we do dot from now. Simple as that, we save, go to our app, and we close this uh, console. Cool, we get, uh, this was posted an hour ago, this was posted 17 hour, hours ago, and this was posted 19 hours ago, cool. So we get the relative time thing. Now, we could keep working on the buttons that are on the card, um, on the screen cards, like uh, like buttons, the comment and the expand and the delete button. But most of these buttons actually depend on our authentication state. So for example, the like button, if you're not logged in, it will, if you click it, it would lo um, direct you to the login page. If you are logged in and then if you're liked, if you have liked the screen, it will be a full heart. And if you haven't, it would be like an empty, just outline heart. Now, because all this functionality depends on authentication, that means let's actually work on authentication and then come back to um, continue with the screen cards. So let's actually uh, implement the login page because there's nothing there. <laughs> all right, so let's go to login. And here we're gonna use uh, text fields. So let's go to the MUI doc, let me close this. Let's go to component demos. We're gonna use something called text field. And it's this thing right here. Well, there's multiple implementation, but we just need a simple text field. So as you see, you just bring in text field and and yeah, you just put text field inside of your form, which, form, which is a standard HTML form, and you put these um, properties inside of it. All right, so let's go to our login. Let's first implement the with style with styles thing because we're gonna need, later we're gonna need to bring in some global styles and access the global theme. 
So let's do import with styles from uh, material UI slash core slash styles slash with styles. All right, let's create a styles object. Um, for now, it's going to be empty. Uh, let's do export default with styles path pass the styles and then for the second thing pass login actually login should be lowercase login yeah login and here we're gonna have inside the render actually we'll do const let's take our classes well we have none right now but we will in a moment so let's do equals this dot props we de uh, destructure it from props and let's actually use prop types uh, it's a good uh, practice to use prop types which is a, a way that uh, a built-in method in uh, react for type checking it, it, it minimizes like the uh, the potential errors that you can get in your application so let's do import prop types from prop dash types and here we do login dot prop types camel case so the first p is lowercase equals an object and here right now we only have this classes so let's say classes and this will be an object so let's do prop types remember this prop types uh, capital p dot object uh, dot is required because it is required and now we're gonna have our form here but what I want to do is um, here in the login page I want the form to be in the middle so not to take up the whole space so what I'm gonna do maybe there's a better way of doing it but for now I'm just gonna have a grid and then have uh, three columns and then have the one in the middle have uh, hold our form so let's bring in grid let's do here MUI stuff let's import grid from uh, material dash UI slash core slash grid uh, yeah that's all we need right now let's here let's remove this div and let's do return grid uh, this is gonna be the container and let's give it a class name even though we haven't created it yet say classes dot I know this is not the form it's the form container but I'm just gonna call it form for now uh, let's do three grid items so grid item and I'm gonna give this a value of small for on small they will take up the whole width and let me copy this and paste it two more times and then here this one is gonna, it's gonna have a it's gonna have content so it's gonna have a closing tag like this and for now here let's just say I don't know yo uh, here we need this form class so say form and what the form is gonna well I know we're gonna have a text align we might add some stuff more later let's do text align center on the everything to be aligned to the center like uh, the the title of the page and we're gonna have an icon as well let's save this for now and let's look at it so we get yo and it's in the middle and if we inspect this uh, if we, if you see, we have three divs and they have, they share exactly like what's cool about material UI is that I don't have to say that this is, this has a width of four and four and four, uh, by default, if you put three elements and you don't give any default, um, any width, uh, value, I mean, any like column width value, it will automatically split. Uh, split the uh, by the number of you of the children you have so if you have four grid items it's going to give them 25 percent each if you have five it's going to give them 20 etc right now it's giving them 33 percent but uh the problem with these divs is that they don't have any padding we need some spacing just to push uh, or do we actually we don't it's just like because we're not going to have other divs from here, this side and this side i'm not going to have any content from the left and right so let's leave it like that let's um so here at the top i want to have the uh, the monkey image thing uh, let's actually bring it from the public folder so let's copy this icon png let's create a folder here called images and let's paste it let's close it 
let's bring it in let's do import uh, what do we call it app icon it doesn't matter we can call it anything we go back one level we go into images and what is it icon dot dot png cool here let's put image with a source what is that source <laughs> I don't know why I type CRD equals what is it app icon I already forgot what I called it yeah app icon and yeah let's give it an alternative property because react uh, warns us if we don't let's just say I don't know monkey image or just monkey close this and under here, I'm going to have a title that one, that says typography. Actually, I noticed something here that I made a mistake here that I forgot to fix. I imported typography and typography. And as well here, I use typography instead of typography in one of them. Yeah, this one. So let's paste this here. Save. Cool. All right, here, let's bring in typography. Typography from from material dash UI slash core slash typography. Cool. All right, here we're gonna have our title. So we're gonna do typography and variant. It's gonna have a variant of, do you do header one or header two? Oh, let's do header one. It's good for uh, search engine optimization to have a header one in each page. And let's give this class name of um, classes dot, let's call this page title. Um, this is going to say, oops, this is going to say login. And let's just look at it right now. Oh, it's massive. Let's use header two. Okay, header two is better. Let's have some padding uh, or margin between um, this monkey image between, I want it to like kind of have its own space. So let's give this a class name of classes.image. Here, let's do image, oops, image and uh, margin let's give this so I want to give it 20 on the top auto on the right and then 20 at the bottom and then auto on the right on the left cool there's some space between it and the title and let's create our form now so under the typography here let's do form uh, I'm gonna give this no validate because we're gonna have an email here and uh, by default HTML5 will try to validate the email field. And uh, let's give it a n on submit. Uh, this dot handle submit, which we haven't created yet. Let's create it, S handle, oops. Handle submit. We're gonna make it an arrow function so that we don't have to bind to it. And it's gonna take an event. And here we're gonna just console log, I don't know, hi for now. And here we're gonna have our text fields. So did we bring in text field? We haven't, let's bring it in. Let's do import text field from at material UI slash core slash text field. Now if we type, text field you can do control space to see all the, the stuff you can add to it I already know what I'm gonna use I'm gonna give it an ID um, of email and name of email which we're gonna use later for when we are handling the change a type of email which is to be honest not that important but it's just good practice let's just add it a label uh, the label is just gonna say email this is what is written on it before you type anything uh, I'm gonna give it class name of classes dot text field. This is a Java JavaScript object, so you stick to like we should stick to camel case variable names. I'm gonna come here. I'm gonna give this a value. 
actually we haven't uh, declared our state yet it's gonna give us a value of this dot state dot what is this the email dot email and here uh, I'm gonna there's two well there's two main ways of handling uh, forms in react one is the references where you create references for your input fields and then you get the values of the references and the second one is the the more popular one called uh, controlled component which is uh, using the state I mean they're both the same, I just prefer the uh, controlled component one, so I'm gonna use it. Actually, maybe they're not the same, maybe there's different applications for different, uh, different uh, you know, scenarios. But I prefer to use the uh, controlled component one because we can use the React dev tools and uh, check out the state to make sure that everything is working fine. So let's do this dot state equals, we're gonna have an email and a password because this is our login form. I'm gonna initialize them as empty strings. Uh, actually, we're also gonna have a loading property, which is false by default. This is when um, when you press the login button, I want it to show like a spinner as it's requesting stuff from the server because we're using um, cloud functions. Well, in general, it's a good practice, but we're using cloud functions. Sometimes the first execution is kind of slow. It's called a cold start. So uh, having a spinner actually gives uh, makes the user gives the illusion of the app being more responsive, and and actually doesn't. It seems like the time it takes loading is less when you see a spinner. Okay, so we're gonna have an errors array in case any errors happen or invalidating the uh, the form. Uh, Okay, so we're here, and what do we, what else? Yeah, on change, which we haven't created yet, is gonna be this dot handle change. Let's create that. So we could actually do handle change and pass this the name of the field, but since we already have a name here, we can do it in a, uh, in a more generic way by doing handle change equals um, so we'll ha have an event and here we're going to say, wait, what did I put the handle submit outside the class? <laughs> All right. So handle change is going to take an event and this event will have, because we're here, well, or any on any other text field, this event will have a target uh, property. And if we're on this text field, this target will be this text field or the input actually in the HTML. And the input has a couple of things. One of them is the name because we gave it here the name. And then one of them is the value because it's what's written in it or, or what's in the state. So what we can do here, we can do this dot set state. We want to set the value of the input to the value of the, to the, to the, to its correspondent value on the state. So we can say this dot state and we want to set um, so this is generic. It's gonna take an ev event dot target dot name. So if it's if it's the email input, it's gonna have email. If it's the um, the password input, which we haven't created yet, it's gonna be password. And the value of this is gonna be event dot target dot value. All right. So this would work for both of them. And yeah. Okay. So. We have this on change, and I'm gonna add this full width um, property, which is gonna let this text field take the full width of uh, of its containing div. And I'm gonna close like this. And by the way, the, if you're wondering how I know this full width thing or anything else, you can just go to here, text field, go at the bottom to the API reference, click on, where is it, text field here. And you can see all the uh, all the properties that you can actually use. There's there's tons of different stuff that you can use to uh, make the experience better. We're gonna use a couple more later, but for now let's uh, let's copy this text input or text field rather, and let's paste it. And the second one will have the ID of password. Well, let's just actually select email and then Control D three times or four times or three times rather and do password. So yeah, ID is password, name is password, type is password so that we don't see when we're typing. And the label is password with capital P. Class name is that text field value is this dot state dot password. And on change is the same and, uh, and full width as well. All right, so now we need a button to submit this form. 
And for this, we're actually going to bring in the uh, material UI button. So let's do import, yeah, import button from material UI slash core slash button. Oops, button. All right, so where are we? We are here. So here we say button um, of type submit. And I'm going to give it a variant. Uh, you can go to the material UI uh, doc and go to a button, not the API, the demo. And pick any variant you want. You can have the um, this one. I don't know what you call this, actually. What's the variant of this? This is the default, maybe. Yeah, it's the default. But this is called um, contained. So I like the contained one. It has the whole color and it has this drop shadow. It looks cooler. All right, so let's give it a, a variant of contained. Contained and the color of primary. And the class name of classes.button. And we need to create all these styles actually. So, okay, let's close this. And Let's go here, let's do, what do we need to style? We need to style the uh, the page title. So page title, I wanna have like some margin for the page title. So let's give it margin. Let's do the same for, same for the image. Let's save, let's look at it. All right, oh, this looks weird. Okay, so we have our inputs, but there's too much space between the login and the image. Let's just reduce this to um, control D, reduce this to 10. Let's look at, okay, this is better. Actually, I want the inputs as well to have some margin on the top and the bottom. So let's style that. Let's do, uh, what is it? Text field. Um, yeah, text field. Text field. So I need to give the text field a margin as well. Um, uh, let's give it let's give it the same as the title. And let's look at it. All right, cool. I don't know what's wrong with the button. Why is it doing that? Oh, actually, what am I saying? Of course, I know what's wrong with the button because <laughs> the button needs some text inside of it. Of course. <laughs> Login. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> All right, so the text field and what do we do now? Uh, we need some margin between the button and the input. So let's do button margin or just margin top. Yeah, I'm just margin top because the, let's just say 20, we can do a number and yeah. This is it. All right, let's test this out. Email at email.com. Oh, well, of course we didn't write the, the handle submit. What am I saying? <laughs> okay, we need first to prevent default behavior because of course we don't want to show this information here and we don't want to reload the page. So, Let's do here, let's do event dot uh, prevent default. And here what we want to do is we want to send the request to our server and then show um, any errors or, or if it's successful redirect to the home page. So we're going to use Axios, so let's bring it in. So let's do import Axios from Axios and here what we need to do well actually we need to implement the loading thing as well so once the uh, this so the form is submitted we do this dot set state to and then we give loading true and once everything is done we're gonna set it back to false and now we're gonna do axios dot post um, and it's gonna be at slash login. 
And by the way, if you if you haven't if you don't remember or if you haven't forgot or if you haven't seen the part for the API, this is how the login works. You send an email and a password, and if it's wrong, you, if you like if the email is wrong, you get an error. Actually, if anything is wrong, you get a general error that wrong credentials. Please try again. And if if the email is empty, you get an error just for the email. So we're gonna use this errors object and give just that input the error that that corresponds to it. And if it's it's like if it's correct, we get a token. When we get oh user not users. Yeah, so if it's correct, we get a token and a, of course an okay response, which will allow us to redirect to our homepage. So here, so post that login, let's get the data. So const user, user data, let's call it. And it's gonna be an object. And this will be, we'll have a, an email. This will be this.state. So remember we bound those values to our state, this.state.email and the password will be this dot state dot password and then we pass user data here I mean we could put this object here but it looks cleaner like this and this returns a promise so we do dot then and we, if we get a result so if we get here that means we're successful so let's actually console log our result result oh this is axios so we the data will be in result of data so if we're successful, we want to redirect. So we want to do, um, oh, let's set the loading to false actually first. Let's do this dot set state loading to false. And then here we do this dot props dot um, history dot push. And this is a, this is a method we use in react to, um, to push state um, a, a URL and then we go to it or a path so here we push slash which is the home page so this should redirect us to the home page and but if we have any problem if we have any errors so we do catch error and here we need to set the errors of our form so what we need to do is this dot set state and we want to give the errors the value of uh, error dot response dot data and we want to set uh, actually this is errors and we want to set the loading to false uh, right now the loading is not being used by anything uh, let's get the loading from from the state let's actually get the errors as well so we can display them so let's get errors and loading from state this dot state using destructuring again and here for the input we're gonna use uh, something called helper text so if you uh, if you click on an input um, actually not the here so if we go to text field yeah this is the helper text this text right here and you can use it to display errors or you can use it to display hints um, we're gonna use it to display errors if there's any so here what we need to do we need to say uh, helper oops helper text equals and this will be because this is the email this will be errors dot uh, email and we don't have to worry about if if there is nothing in errors if there's no emails it's, if email property is just not gonna show anything and here as well we need to um, have an error property which sets the field to be read so here we say error and the way we determine whether we have an error or not is because this is the email we say errors dot email and use a ternary operator so that means if we do have this key that means there's an error in the email because we've received an, an email uh, key in the errors array um, object so we say true else it's false there's no error that otherwise if we don't have this so let's copy this and give it to the password as well. So here, let's do errors.password, control D, and do password like this. So now when we get our response and we get errors like this, or is it errors like this? Let me cause an error to happen. Actually, no, let me have this empty. 
we can have this email and we can show it in the helper text. All right, so let's save. So let's leave them empty and we click login. Oops, it says type error, you cannot find data. Oh, it's because I misspelled response here, response. All right, so if we send, there we go. We get our errors and they are put in the helper text and the input is invalidated. And if I would put an, e an email here, so let's say, I don't know, like something at something at, whenever I type something random, it's like sad, what the hell? All right, so log in, the error is gone. And if I give like a random password, Oh, actually we need to show if the credentials are wrong, we need to show some error right here. So, so here, let's show it under the button or no, actually we should show it on top of the button. And let's say here we do like a conditional errors dot, because if we have um, wrong credentials, we get, um, we get a, an error called general. So let's check for that error. Let's do errors.general. So if it's the case, so and and if we have errors.general, then render this. And let's do typography uh, variant. Let's give this body to. And this will have a class name because we want to change the style of this. Classes.custom error, I'm going to call it. And here. We're gonna have the value of that general uh, key, so we do errors uh, dot general. And uh, here, let's um, let's get this. Let's style this. Mm, let's give uh, okay. So custom error. Let's give it a like a red color, color red like this, and. Let's give it like a smaller font size, font size. I don't know, let's give it like a not point eight rem. Uh, yeah, I think that's it. Okay, let's try some, I don't know, wrong email and some wrong password. Cool, we get wrong credentials, please try again. Um, let's give it some margin so it's not too close to the, uh, to the input. So let's give it margin top, uh, let's say 10 pixels like this, or just 10 like this. Oh, I mean, I have to put something. Yeah, there we go, much better. Uh, let's as well add some text here that says, if you don't have an account, go to sign up and with a link that redirects to sign up. Uh, let's go here under the button. Let's say, let's give a, let's put a small and say, don't have an account, um, sign up and then put a link here to slash sign up. This is the React Router DOM link and it will say here. So this will, the word here will be a link. So let's go and bring in link import link, oops, link from react router DOM. All right. Oh, actually, um, as well, I want to do something. I want when we click, oh, this is not cool. So I want when we click on login, I want to show a spinner inside of it, inside of the login button. And I want to make it this um, disabled so we don't, we can't click it again. All right, let, let's make this actually come down like under the button. Let's just add um, a line break. So yeah, all right, it's cool. So if you click here, it goes to the sign up page, which has nothing right now. All right, by the way, this looks purple because it's visited. You can change the color of that. I'll, I'll, I'll add the, uh, the login, uh, the spinner thing. If you can go here, uh, yeah, progress. This progress thing, we can add the indeterminate progress one. So, which is just the, uh, what is it? Yeah, it's circular progress, we can copy this. 
let's go here on the movie stuff let's bring it in and here it's gonna be inside the login button so here let's do if loading so if we're loading we do we return this circular progress thing and let's do class name because it's gonna need some styling classes dot progress Uh, now the way I want to do it, I want to have it in the center of the button So what I'm gonna do to the button is okay. Do we give class progress? Yeah, okay, so So the button will have a uh, position of Relative So that we can give the uh, the spinner a position of absolute so that we can put it in the middle so position position absolute all right okay we get a spinner for like a fraction of a second it's actually why is it being too fast I want it to be slow all right so let's give a wrong password let's send it's being too fast but oh the spinner is a bit too big Let's give it, uh, can take actually a size property, which is just a number. Let's give it a size of 20 or, or 30. I think 30 is okay. All right, I don't know. I can't see it right now, but we get a spinner. But I, oh, actually, it's, a, it's in the middle. It's cool. It's fine. Um, what do we do? Actually, I want to I want to make the button disabled when we're log uh, when we are uh, loading. So we'll do disabled, which is a boolean, and we just pass it loading. So if it's loading, it's disabled. If not, it's not disabled. So let's refresh, hit the login button. See, it becomes like disabled for a second. Cool. And if we have the correct credentials, so not email, user at email dot com. And we get one, two, three, four, five, six for the password. Cool, we redirected the home page. And of course, we're, we're not setting the state to be authenticated or anything, we're just redirecting right now. So, in this video, we're gonna create the sign up form. But before I get to that, I wanna um, I recommend you guys download the uh, React Developer Tools Chrome extension. Uh, I'm assuming you're using Chrome. If not, find an equivalent in your uh, browser. It's really uh, helpful. If I open up my developer tools, uh, put them side by side, open up the React tab, you can see we can drill in all our components and see what's happening, what components we have, what state they hold. For example, if we click on our login component, you see the state right here. And if we type stuff, it updates, you see update live. If we get some errors, you can see our errors here. You can see the loading boolean. You can even trigger change values and see how your uh, front end reacts to it. You see, I can put the loading and I can see that animation there. All right, so it's just that one, one thing I recommend you guys do. All right, let's actually create the uh, sign up form. It's actually going to be so similar to the um, login form. So let's go to login, copy everything from here, and then go to sign up. Let me close the terminal, paste everything, and uh, we're going to change a couple of things. So first thing, first thing, these styles are shared between the two components, so we can make them global. So let's copy everything here. Let's go to app.js, and here we can paste them in our theme. And we can get them by um, making the styles actually a function that takes the theme um, object and returns the following. And here we can just spread the theme and we'll have access to everything that's in the global theme. So let's do the same for login actually. So let's go to login and here instead of styles, we just do styles like this and we're gonna have the theme in there. Cool. So now here, let's change a couple of things. So the class is sign up. And here we have an email, a password, and we have a confirm password. And we have a handle as well. All right, so th that's the same. This is the same. Here we have new user data. And we also sent the confirm password. 
this.state.confirm password and the handle as well. So this.state.handle. All right, so here we send an Axios request, post request to uh, slash sign up, and we send the new user data. <coughs> One thing I forgot though, when we get the token in res.data.token, we need to actually store it in uh, local storage so that if our application, someone refreshes the page or closes the browser and opens it again, we'll have access to the token locally. So we can do local storage.set item. I'm gonna call this um, FB for Firebase ID token like this. And the value will be a template string bearer space and here we do a dollar sign uh, curly braces res.data.token and we need to do the same for login actually let's copy this one line and go to login and here when we get a response we do the same all right so let's go back to sign up okay so we set the state to load loading to false we push to the home page everything is the same we get classes and here the title will be um, sign up, <coughs> excuse me. Here the, the first text field is the same as the email. The second one is the password is the same. Uh, and here we need uh, two more text fields. So let's copy this and paste it. The third one will have the ID of confirm password. We're not really using these IDs, but it's um, if you wanna use them to style or anything you can or to do anything else. The name will be confirm password like this and the type will be password the same. The label will be confirm password like this. The class name is the same. The error will be um, error.confirm password. Same thing here. And here it's dot state.confirm password and handle change is the same. The third one, uh, the fourth one rather will be handle. Uh, the type is text, the name is handle, the ID, the label is handle with a capital H and here the error is errors.handle so we can do control D twice and write handle and the rest is the same. And here the button should say sign up and here we should say um, already have an account And we should say login here. And this will redirect to slash login. And this will be, let's do control D here as well. So you can, we can change both of these and do sign up. Dot prop types equals classes is an object and is required. All right, I think this should be fine. So let's save all files. I've already got the server running, the dev server up and running. So if we go to our app, we go to sign up. We see this form, cool. We send, we get our errors, and we actually, if we actually like do new three, let's say at email.com, and the password will be one, two, three, four, five, six. And we let's do a handle that exists. It's gonna check, it will say that. Let's do new three, we sign up. Cool, so it works, it redirects, everything is fine. Uh, these are just the requests that we sent and were not valid, so that's fine. We go to application. If we look at local storage, we find that our token is now stored. All right, that's cool. Uh, one thing though, if we refresh, actually, no, not if we refresh, if we go to the login now or the sign up, it still lets us through, even though we're logged in. So let's, let's implement something that uh, prevents this behavior. So let's go to um, here in app.js. Actually, let's move all of this because I don't wanna scroll this much here. Let's move all of that object and let's create, let's create a folder here, call it util for utility. And let's create a file in there called theme.js. And inside of here, we'll say export default. And we just export this, uh, this theme. So this object, let's save. And here, let's bring it in, let's say, import theme, or oh, there is a theme. So let's say theme file from, we go back one, uh, we're on the same level slash util slash theme. Since it's the default export, we can name it anything. And here we just pass it to the create movie theme and the behavior should still stay the same. And here, what we wanna do is that 
once uh, this code that's here executes when, once the application is started. So what we want to do, uh, we want to get the token. So let's do const token equals, so we can do local storage dot get item, or actually we could just, uh, local storage is an object, we could just access this property. So local storage dot FBID token. So we get this property and we do if token. So if we don't have a token, this will be undefined. So this condition would be false. So um, here what we do is if we have a token, what we want to do is we want to get this token, decode it, and inside of the decoded token, we have an expiry date. And actually to decode the token, we need to install a library. Let's do npm install dash dash save jwt dash decode. It's a library that decodes uh, JSON web tokens. I know this is a Firebase ID token, but if, um, essentially it's a uh, it's still a JSON web token. So let's bring that in. Let's do import JWT decode like this, a uh, camel case from JWT. Well, you can name it anything, but just don't, whatever you name it here, you name it where you use it just to avoid any errors. So here let's do const decoded token equals JWT decode and we pass it our token and now this will have a, um, a property called exp and if you were to go to the dev tools to the console you'll see we have this token actually we can't decode it here but let's do console.log decoded token and here it will find the token, it will console log this decoded token and it's got this exp value, where is it? It's right here. So this is a, a time value that's like um, a, a time from epoch it's called. So if you do new date and you pass it this, actually this is in seconds, so we need to pass it this times 1000, you get exactly when this token is going to expire. All right, so what we need to do now is we need to compare it with, with now actually. So let's do if decoded decoded token dot exp times 1000 is lesser than date dot now uh, as a function that means it's actually expired so we need to redirect to the home page or to the login page so we do window dot location dot href equals slash login and actually let's do a, let's do let, let's do a property, a global variable called uh, authenticated and it has no value initially. So here, if it's expired, we say authenticated equals false. Now else, if it's not expired, authenticated equals true. And now here for our routes, for the login and sign up, we want to do something where we check that um, if, we're, if we're authenticated, we redirect to the home page. So here, let's actually, instead of this route, let's control D and let's type auth route. And let's create this component. Let's bring it in and then create it. So let's do import auth route. And you'll see what this auth route does in a minute. Component slash, uh, actually this will be in util. Util slash auth route. And in util, let's create in. Actually, should we put it in util or in the? Let's put it in util. Yeah, it's a utility, and we're not going to use it. In, it's not a markup component. So authroute.js. And here, let's uh, do. It's going to be a functional component. So RFC tab. I'm going to change the syntax. Let's do const auth route equals uh, props and then gives us the following and let's do export default auth route or actually let me destructure straight away what we need from it so we're gonna pass it a component so from the component i'm gonna get the component with capital c now capital c which is gonna hold the component that we passed it and here we're gonna get uh, authenticated the property authenticated and we're going to spread the rest of the properties. So if we add anything, it's going to be added here. So here, what we return, 
Actually, we can uh, change this syntax to just parentheses, so it straight away returns something. And here we need the route from React Route to DOM and redirect React Route to DOM. All right, we close that. And here we do route and we spread the props, the, the rest props. So rest, and here we're gonna trigger a render method. And this so will take the props and it's gonna check for authenticated. So if authenticated equals true or equals true, then um, we render a redirect, redirect. And this is, so if we're authenticated, we redirect to slash, which is the home, and we close this. Else, we just give that component, which is gonna be either the uh, login route or the um, sign up route. Now props, let's spread, the, let's spread the props here. I mean, not rest. All right, this should be fine. Uh, we need to close the route tag though, a route component, and let's save. All right, so one more thing though. Here we actually pass it authenticated. So click here and hold Alt and click here and do authenticated equals authenticated. All right, let's save this. Let's go to our app. Let's make sure we have a token and it's not expired. So if we go to login, cool, it redirects us back to the home page. And if we Actually, if we delete the token now, it's not gonna redirect us to the home page because this doesn't execute again. It only executes once uh, the app runs. But when we implement Redux later, it's gonna fix it. So now we don't have a token. If I refresh the entire page, if I go to login and sign up, they're gonna work fine. But yeah, once we implement Redux, uh, and we're gonna have like a global state and it's gonna update each time we do something, it's gonna, th this will gonna behave much better. As our application grows bigger and we will have more components and all these components or most of these components will need to have access to the data we have and to our user, it would be better that we would uh, implement a solution that manages a global state for our application. Uh, there are a lot of situations where something called context API, which comes shipped with React is actually better than Redux. Uh, you can look into that if you want, but for this uh, application, uh, it's better to use Redux. And to use Redux, we're gonna need to install a couple of packages. And if you don't know what Redux is about, I will uh, post a link to this uh, really cool article that I think you should read to understand what Redux is and why we use it. Um, it will introduce you to concepts like uh, prop drilling, like, uh, and funnily enough, it uses an example that's like what we're making right now, which is a social media platform that's similar to Twitter. So if you look here, you will see that it becomes a problem, for example, in here, if we wanted to have the user in this avatar component, we have, we'd have to pass it from the app to this avatar and then down all down this chain of, or rather hierarchy of uh, components. So it becomes really inefficient and it becomes really ugly code. So what we need to do instead, we would have something a set up like this, where we would have a, a store and whatever component, no matter how deep or down in the tree it is, it can directly talk to the store, fetch data or send uh, actions that will, uh, tell our reducers to mutate our uh, our global state and change it so that all the other components will be aware of these changes that are happening. Now there's a really cool um, uh, diagram that I want to show you in this article, which I will link a description um, link it in the description as well. But funnily enough, I don't want you to read this article because it. I don't know, this guy, I feel like is trying to use too many like buzzwords and fancy language and try uh, referencing other libraries that maybe you're not even aware, like, uh, aware of. But I just wanted to focus on this diagram because it kind of encapsulates what uh, React is. Essentially, we have um, events triggered from our um, UI or user interface, like someone clicking a button, submitting a form, whatever. Any of these actions could trigger an event and then an event will fire up an action. And this action will dispatch an action with a, a type and sometimes with a payload as well. 
and then that type gets received by the reducer. And the reducer will then decide, depending on what type it received, what to do and how to mutate our state. And then once the state has changed, all of our application is aware of the state. Now this might not make sense right now to you, but once we get into the code, trust me, it will make sense. Uh, one thing you need to install if you don't have it already, uh, if you're using, I'm assuming you're using Chrome, if you're not, then do. Or, or use Firefox, it's cool as well, but I don't know if they have Redux DevTools on Firefox. You can install uh, Redux DevTools uh, as a Chrome extension, which will help drastically. Actually, this is one of the reasons why I prefer, always prefer Redux over Context API, because of this DevTool makes, makes our lives much uh, more convenient. All right, enough of the chit chat and enough of the theory. Let's actually start to uh, implement Redux. Okay, so let's go to our app. I'm gonna open up a new terminal and we're gonna install three packages. So npm install dash dash save. First is Redux, which is a standalone JavaScript thing. Second is uh, React Redux. And third is Redux Thunk. So React Redux is the library that kind of is the middle middleman between Redux and React. And Redux Thunk is a piece of middleware that gives us access to something called Dispatch, which allows us to uh, run asynchronous code in, in our uh, Redux actions. Uh, it's something that you shouldn't worry yourself too much about right now, to be honest. All right, so in the source, I'm gonna create a folder called Redux. I like to keep everything re uh, related to Redux inside one folder. And here we're gonna create two folders, reducers and actions. I'm gonna create two files, one called store.js and one called types.js. All right, so here in the store, uh, our store is basically what contain uh, the container of this uh, state. So here we're gonna bring in a couple of things uh, from Redux. So let's do like this from Redux. And here we need a create store to create our store. We need combine reducers, which is something when we, because we can have all our reduce, uh, you know, reducers in one file, but it doesn't look good. So we, we split them into a couple of files and we will use this to combine them. We'll have apply middleware which does exactly that. And we will have something called compose. And I'll tell you in a second why we need that. So we need to bring in thunk, which is a piece of middleware or, or store enhancer as well. You can call them that as well. And here we need to initialize an, issue, um, an initial state, which is gonna be just an empty object. And here we're gonna have an array of middleware is just gonna have thunk actually. You can use other middleware, you can create your own depending on what use case uh, you have. And here we're gonna have our reducers, which uh, let me actually create. I'm gonna create three files, but I'm not gonna write anything in them right now. Uh, data reducer.js, which is gonna handle every all the actions related to our data. I'm gonna have re user reducer.js. And we're gonna have UI reducer.js. And here in the actions, well, might as well create them now. So data actions.js. And what's the other one? User actions.js. And we're not gonna have a UI actions because we're gonna fire those from both the user and the data actions. So here we do const reducers. Actually, we need to import them. So import uh, first is user reducer in no particular order. Calls import. What am I doing? From this is not ES5. From slash uh, reducers slash user reducer. I'm just gonna copy this, paste it two more times, and here I'm gonna say Control D and do data reducer. And here I'm gonna do UI reducer, whoops, reducer. And here we're gonna combine them. So reducers equals combine reducers. 
And if this code is a bit confusing to you, don't don't make it confusing because this is just one thing you're gonna write once and then you're gonna do the actual code inside the, the actions themselves. All right, here, this is our actual state. And here we get to name um, our objects inside the state. And for the user data, I'm just gonna name it user and give it the user reducer. So everything that comes from the user reducer will be stored inside of this user object. In, not, uh, yeah, inside the user object inside our state. We're gonna have data and this is gonna be from data reducer. And we're gonna have UI from UI reducer. Now we, we can create our store. So we do const store equals create store. And here we pass it three things, our reducers. And the second is uh, our initial state. And the third will be, um, usually it would be just the middleware, but if we were to go to our application and we do F12 and we go to the uh, Redux extension, I don't know why it's saying that we have a store. We don't actually have a store, but um, to have like, let's look at the Redux dev tools setup because there's a, this, this long string that, that we need to, Im to put, yeah, this one right here. So window dot Redux dev tool extension. We need to apply it as a store reducer uh, so that we can, so that we can see the data shown on that on that uh, extension. So apply middleware, and here we spread our array of middleware. So a dot 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 middleware, and then the second uh, argument to compose, we actually paste that uh, the string we copied from from the React DevTools GitHub page. So we save and it formats. Let me close these uh, console windows. Yeah, so okay, so this is our store. Uh, we actually need to export it. So let's do export default store. So this is basically what contains our application state. Now we need to actually give it to our application. So we can do this by going to uh, app.js. And here we're gonna bring in two things. Let's say Redux. Here we need to bring something called provider from uh, React Redux. And what do we need? We need our store. So store from one level uh, or on the same level rather, Redux slash store. Yeah, we just need these two things and we need to wrap all of our application inside of this uh, provider. And it doesn't matter, it can wrap the MUI provider or the MUI provider can wrap it, it doesn't matter. They don't interact with each other. So we can just put this uh, provider and it takes a store, which is gonna be our store. We close this. And now let's cut everything and put it inside of this provider. So now, as you can see, everything that's inside of this provider will have access to our store, which is our uh, our state. And by the way, we can remove this div app because it's not styling anything. It's not doing anything actually. Let's save. Okay, right now we just introduced Redux, but we don't have anything. And if we would go to our application and refresh, my dev server is still running. If we go to uh, Redux here in our state, Actually, we haven't initialized it. Um, okay, so now what we need to do is that we need to go to our data actions, uh, rather user actions. Let me close everything. User actions, because what we're going to start to do is we're going to start to move this code or this login code from the login component and the same from the sign up component and move them into the user actions. So here in user actions, um, I'm gonna actually before that we need to create some types. Now you don't have to create types. These types can be just strings, but the fact that we create them and we put them into variables, it makes it impossible for us to make a mistake because we can actually pass. Because uh, if we make a mistake naming a variable, it's it's not even gonna run. So that it makes it easier to spot our mistakes. So let's do export const, and here I'm gonna create a couple of types. Uh, first one will be set 
um, authenticated authenticated which equals actually exactly that but as a string we also need oops a type for set and it's uh, it's just a convention that we named them um, in uh, all caps uh, set unauthenticated which is going to be the same as a string so we paste it here and we need also a set user a type called set user what else we need a type now we're not going to use all of them in this video but I just know that we're going to need them later. We need uh, a loading user, which is going to be just that. And we actually let's let's put a comment here. Say user or user reducer types, and here we say UI reducer types, and we're also going to have data reducer types and here for the UI reducer we're gonna need uh, export const set errors let me just copy this we're gonna need um, uh, what else loading UI UI like this loading UI uh, clear errors All right, I think this is it for now if we need any more types we're gonna create them so let's go to uh, user actions and let's bring in let's bring in these types that we need for users so set user uh, we need set errors we need clear errors and we need um, loading UI UI from go back one level and go to types and here we're gonna actually uh, just move this code that's inside of the handle submit so the login code, so let's copy actually from here this Axios call and let's paste it into, let's call this action export const login user and it will take user, user data and here it's gonna, uh, we're gonna as well get dispatch because here we need the um, to access, uh, we need to use dispatch because we, need, we have some asynchronous code and so we paste that code in but actually here we need to set the loading to true actually we can remove the loading code from login and we can even remove it from the state so we can set the login from the action itself so here what we need to do is we need to say dispatch and this is where we actually send an action so this action is gonna have a type and this type will be loading UI. You can start to see how this works. We dispatch a type and then we will catch the type from the reducer. So let's actually just check if this code is sound. So we log in and then when we get the data back. Okay, so here when we get the data back, we wanna, um, we wanna actually fetch the user. I'm gonna create a new account, um, I'm gonna create a new action that we for some functionality that we didn't even have in the last video and it's gonna call this get user data and it's not gonna have any it's not gonna take any argument because it's gonna use the token that we got back and it's gonna use this patch but actually before I do that now we get the token so if we get here that means we have the token in res.data.token so what we need to do we not only need to set it into the local storage but 
Now, each request that we need to send to a protected route, we need to add the uh, authorization header, but it wouldn't be efficient for us to each time we send a request, we add we add it there. We can take advantage of this Axios, um, Axios default headers thing, and uh, we can do Axios dot, uh, what is that, defaults dot headers dot common. And by the way, this is in Axios uh, GitHub documentation page. And here the header will be authorization. And the value of it will be the actual token that we got plus bearer. So we can do bearer. Um, actually, we could put this in a variable. So we can say const fb id token equals template string bearer and space. And then we do uh, uh, res.data.token so now we can give this a uh, variable here and we can as well assign it here to the headers so now when we do this each time we send a request uh, through axios it's going to have a header uh, an authorization header with this value even to not uh, unprotected routes which is not a problem at all so here in get user data we can just say axios dot uh, get and if you remember we can send a get request to slash user which will get us the uh, user data so here we do dot then res so if we get a result a success result we need to dispatch an action so here we dispatch an action of type and this type will be set user and this action actually takes a, a payload and a payload is basically some data that we send to our reducer and then the reducer does something with it. And the data here would be just response.data which we get back, which is the user data. And of course we need to handle in case there's an error, um, catch, and if we get an error here, we just console log it, console.log error. All right, so we get the user data when we log in. And here, what we need to do when we get the data, so there is no state because we're not in the component and we don't log it. So here, what we need to uh, to do is we need to dispatch uh, the get user action. We can actually just do this after all of this. We can just actually just do dispatch and we can dispatch this function that's right here. So we say get user data and it's going to call this. And thing is, oh, actually we need to redirect. So what we need to do, actually, we need to pass. So here, when actually we, we need to pass the history from this component to the action and then the action will use it. So we can put it as a second parameter here. Let's call it history. And here we just do history dot push and it will actually work. It will redire redirect even from, uh, from the action. And uh, so here, like we get user errors and we need to dispatch another another type. Actually, we, we're not handling these types yet. You'll see in a moment what these types do. So here we need to dispatch another type, uh, another action with the type clear errors, clear errors, just in case there is any errors in our form. And then we actually redirect. And if there is any problem, we need to um, not set state we need to dispatch an action with the type set errors and with a payload of error dot response dot data very similar to what we had inside the component but this will actually do this to the global state now let's let's go to the reducers and handle these types so let's go to the the user reducer so here, uh, we're gonna need the actions, uh, I mean the types that we have as well. So let's do, let's bring in set, we can actually just copy, um, not from login, from the actions, we can just copy these types from, that we brought in. Oh, actually, I forgot something. We need to bring in uh, Axios because we're using it inside the actions. So from Axios. And here we copy this, we go to user reducer, we paste them. And here as well, we need to uh, give an initial state, uh, an initial state, uh, 
to our, this is not the global state, but this is, remember, this is what's stored inside of this user. So this user reducer is actually this state. Of course, it's gonna change, it's not gonna stay the initial state. So we're gonna have a an authenticated Boolean, which is gonna be false by default. And we're gonna have credentials. If you remember, if you've seen our um, API, you know what these are. We're gonna have a likes array, and we're gonna have a notifications array. And initially everything will be empty. And here we do export default function. And this function will take a, a state. And here we give initial state as the initial, like the default value of the state. And the second parameter is gonna be the action that we receive. So here we're gonna have a switch. So depending on the action, we're gonna do something. Actually, no, depending on the action type, we're gonna do something. So here, this is where we catch our types. So ca case, the first one will be set authenticated. And here uh, we do, and um, remember this switch, so we do a colon here, and we, we here if we get the type set authenticated, this is a simple type that I'm gonna actually call from the app.js. This just uh, returns the state, and each time we return the state, we actually spread the state that we already have, and then we change a couple of things in it. Here, what we change is the authenticated, we make it true. And let's handle the set unauthenticated state. We're not using actually these two types in this video, but we will set them for future um, use. And here, we just, if we set unauthenticated, this is gonna be used when we try to log, when we log out. So here we just actually return the initial state, which has um, authenticated a false on and no data. Now here we can handle the set user type, which we just uh, dispatched from the user actions. And here we simply return uh, authenticated. We set it to true because we got user data and we need to spread action dot payload because remember from our api when we send our token to slash users and we get the data we actually get something like this with credentials and likes and notifications so if we just spread it like this it's gonna bind the credentials to credentials to likes to likes and notifications to notifications and of course this is a switch so we need a default case so default we just um return return the state that we have right now which is this all right, so let's save this and let's go to our login. And here in the login now, we need to connect this component to uh, to the app state. So here we bring in two things. Let's say here Redux, Redux stuff. And here we bring in something called connect, which does that. And this is from React Redux. And we need to bring in that action, the login user action. So here we do import login user from, um, so we go back actually one level to Redux slash actions slash user actions. So here, instead of doing what we did earlier, we actually just do this. Um, actually, we need to bind it first, but let's just type this, this dot props. Oops, this dot props dot um, login user. And remember we pass it the user data, which is the user data right here. And we pass it this dot um, props dot history so that it can use it to redirect us on success. And here at the bottom, we need to actually use connect, which is another higher order co um, component. Let's cut this and let's do connect and let's leave this empty for now and the second one will be our with style styles login and here it, it takes um, it takes three things but we of those three things we need two one is called map state to props we'll create these in a second and one is called map actions to props and the map state to props was will be const map state 
to props. It's going to be a function that takes our global state and um, returns. So now it takes our global state and then from the global state, we take what we need basically. So right now what we have is we have user data and UI and for the login component, we don't need data because we don't need to show any screams in the login uh, thing. So it makes sense that we only get uh, the uh, user and the UI. So let's actually do that. So let's get user will be state dot user and UI will be state dot UI. All right, uh, UI like this. And uh, here we need to say as well, const map actions to props. And this will, we're, we're telling which actions we're actually gonna use. And in this case, we just need login user. So we pass them here. And actually these will be props. All of these will be props. So let's add them to our prop types. So here we say login user is a prop types. It's, a, it's actually a function. So prop types .funk is required. And we have user, which is uh, an object. I'm just gonna copy this. And then we have UI, which is as well an object. And I'm gonna paste this. So yeah, all right, so now the user and the UI are actually brought in from the global state and mapped into our component props. So these will be in our props right now. And uh, so is gonna be the uh, the login user. This is why we can actually here do this.props.login user. And here, what we need to do is the loading now, we no longer have it in our uh, local state, we have it in the props. So we can get it from the props. But of course we can't just get it like that. It's inside the UI. So we do UI and then colon and we get it from inside the UI. And I think this is it for here. Um, one thing we're not doing is we're not actually here when we uh, get the errors, we're not handling that. So user actions here, when we do set errors, we need to handle that from the UI reducer. So in UI reducer, we need to bring in uh, set errors and clear errors and loading UI actually as well. Loading underscore UI from go back one level and then types. And here we need as well a, an initial state for this. And our UI reducer will hold the loading which is initially false and an errors object, which is null initially. And here we do the same thing, export default function, which will take a state, the initial state, and we'll take an action as well. And here we do a switch. And here depends on the action dot type, types type. And here we have a, Let's do default first on so default, which is return state. And uh, here we can do case. What's the first one set errors. So if we get any errors, we uh, actually, we just spread. So we do like spread the state. And uh, we, what do we do actually? Actually, yeah, we set the loading to false because we finished loading, we actually got some errors and we set errors to our action uh, dot payload. And if we get the clear errors case, we do return state and we set the loading to false and we set errors back to null. And we have loading UI actually as well. So let's do case uh, loading UI. Oops. Here we just uh, return, oh my God. <laughs> return state. And we just set the loading to true. All right, is that everything? Get set errors. 
Clear errors, loading UI. Okay, this look, looks good for now. I think this is everything. Let's check if we have any errors. We don't. Let me actually stop this and run it again. Hmm, no errors. That's strange. <laughs> Okay, so let's open up the console. Let me put them side by side. All right, do we have a token? No, we don't, okay. All right, oops. All right, that's our first error. Login user is not a function. Is it not? Oh, because I didn't save this file, okay. Okay, let's try to log in. So user at email.com and one, two, three, four, five, six, log in. Oh, we actually log in successfully and we get the token in the storage. Uh, let me delete the token. Actually, let's look at the Redux state. So state, all right, cool. We get our st like user details mapped into our, um, into our user object in the state. Oops, let's go back to raw. Yeah, all right. So we get our user, we get authenticated equals true. Let me actually reload to see the initial state. Yeah, the initial state is what we uh, had it and authenticated is false. And if, let me actually try uh, wrong credentials. Oh, interesting, we get an error here, but we don't get it here. Hmm, we get errors here, but they don't show up. Oh, okay, okay. It's because these props don't come straight away, actually. We need to do component, um, component will receive props. And this takes uh, next props. And here, what we need to do simply is uh, this dot set state. Yeah, we need to get the errors and then set them to our local errors. So set state and we do errors uh, equal next props dot UI dot errors. All right. Actually, we need, um, we need to actually put a check because we will always be receiving props and this will be inefficient. We need to do if next props dot UI dot errors. So if we get this, then we actually set the uh, errors to the that errors object. This should fix it. All right, let's look at our state. We have no errors and, and there we go. We get our errors and they're shown on our login form. And if I fix just this, I want to say e user at email.com, I hit send. I need the password. If I have a wrong password, cool, we get the general one. And then if I have the right password, we get redirected. Sweet. Let's go to the sign up component. Where is it? It's right here. Okay, we need to actually first let's create the action. So let's go to uh, user actions. And here let's create an action that's like login user, but it's the sign up. Uh, it's actually going to be very similar, so we can just copy this and then paste it here. And instead of login user, this will be sign up user. It's going to take the same stuff here. Let's call this new. All right, let's wait. Let's let's control D and then call this new user data just for readability. We dispatch login uh, loading user uh, loading UI. That's fine. We change this to slash sign up. We send the request to slash sign up. And the same thing happens here. We set the token, we get the user data and we clear the errors. We push the home page and we set the errors, if any, cool. But uh, one thing though, this code is repeating itself. So let's, m let's make it into a um, helper function. So let's cut this. Uh, let's make a function here. Let's call it a set authorization header and it will take the token 
And here we will have that same code, but instead of res.data.token, it will be just token, which is this uh, function argument. So we can just actually um, call it from here. So here as well. So here we just do um, set authorization header when we pass it res.data.token. And let's copy this. And instead of all of this in the login, we paste it. So set authorization header res.token header data dot token cool let's create actually another action for um for login out so const uh, export const log out uh, user and this won't take anything and i think it won't even take this batch or will it i think it will all right yeah it will all right so here what we need to do is we just need to remove the token from the storage so we do local storage dot remove item and we just pass it the name of the item which is uh, as a string of course fb id token and and here what we need to do we need to remove the header uh, the authorization header from uh, the defaults of axios so we can actually just delete the entry by doing delete like this axios dot headers no actually dot default defaults dot uh, headers dot common and the header is authorization and here we need to dispatch a type uh, an action rather and of type set unauthenticated have we we brought a, yeah we brought that in and we have it in types so this will um, clear out our user state if you remember if we go to user reducer it will set unauthenticated will return the initial state and it will, it will set us back to being not authenticated and having no credentials and nothing let's remove these unused imports right now so I can get rid of the warning let's save this and this as well. Let's go to sign up and actually start using that. So here we're gonna bring in. Um, so we're gonna bring in. Oops. Import. Connect. Let's say Redux here. Redux. Redux stuff. And here is the connect from not equal from React Redux. And we need to bring in the sign. Um, the sign up user from Redux, go back one level, go to Redux slash actions slash user actions. All right. And then let's go at the bottom and actually connect the component. So here we do export default connect and we pass a map state to props and a map state. Now a map actions to props we close this and then we open another parentheses and we close another set parentheses and here let's say const map state to props equals yeah equals it takes the state and it returns so we need the user so user equals or colon state dot user and we need the UI so state State dot UI. Okay, so yeah, we need the map. Actually, we we can just pass it like this because we only have one action, so it's still clean to type something like this. So log out user without actually putting it into a variable and putting it there. Let's add them to the prop types. So we have user is a prop types dot almost typed user dot object that is required and we have UI which is prop types dot object dot is required and what else we have the function logout user is a prop types dot func dot is required all right and we brought the function so we need to use it here when we submit so we can cut all of this actually we already have it in the other code so we can just 
here we just say this dot props remember it's in the props already log out user and we pass it um, the new user data or just call it user data here let's change this to new user data it doesn't make that big of a difference but it, it's more readable so this dot props dot history we pass it so that we can redirect and yeah I think actually no we need to set the errors let's just copy this from login component will receive props let's put it here and let's remove the loading from the state we keep the errors because we can set them from here and here we from the props we get from the props from the UI we get loading we remove the loading from the state and this should be fine let's save let's see if we get any errors we do logout user is not defined in sign up oh not logout sign up why did I put logout it's actually sign up okay and here as well it's sign up no it's sign up this dot props dot sign up all right so that should be fine if we go to sign up or oh, actually we're logged in so let's go to application let's remove the token let's go to sign up actually we need to fix this because it needs to know okay we go to sign up we'll fix the author out in a bit all right if we send cool we get the errors and uh, let's try to sign up a new account new six at email.com one two three four five six one two three four five six handle will be new six we send sign up cool we get redirected we get our token everything works all right uh what else let's go to the app so here the way i want to check is that i want to check if the token uh is in the storage but this authenticated obviously it's really bad practice to have global variables like this so we need to um call the actions from uh, from from our user actions and set ourselves to to be authenticated and then edit the state accordingly so here at the top uh here under redux we're gonna bring in we're gonna bring in two types because we can actually call them from here as well so we're gonna bring in set authenticated uh, we're gonna bring in set um errors or do we? I don't think we need it actually, no. So just set authenticated from, go back one, actually we don't, it's on the same level, redux slash types. And we bring in the uh, logout user, because in case the token is expired, we just log out from here. Logout user and uh, get user data. Have we created get user data? We have, yeah. Oh yeah, of course we have. From uh, redux slash actions slash uh, user actions and here when we compare the token so if it's expired we just do uh, we can actually do store dot dispatch and here what we need to dispatch is we need to dispatch the action logout user and that will um, delete the token and log us out let's get rid of this authenticated variable and we are as well like set the href to slash login so we get redirected and let's remove this authenticated equals true but instead let's do store dot dispatch and here we dispatch an action with the type set authenticated which just sets authenticated to true and then when we go to the home page we actually um, get the data or when we call get user data we get the data so um, let's do store dot dispatch so after we dispatch that we are authenticated we dispatch get user data and actually actually for this to work because when we set axios default headers when we actually refresh the page those headers are like those defaults are gone and axios is reinitiated again we need to again do axios dot default or Oh, we need to bring in Axios and uh, 
VS Code did me the courtesy of doing it itself, but it, it did this capital thing. Uh, Axios.defaults.headers.common. And here we say authorization. And it's equal to the token that we have up here. Not Roken, token. All right, and then we get user data. This should work. But because we got rid of the authenticated uh, thing, we can't use it here. So let's delete that. And, but I think authorout would complain because we're, we're mm. let's fix authorout as well. We might, we might as well, since we're here. So let's bring in connect. We need to connect to this component as well to our, uh, to our state. So let's bring in connect from react redux and uh, no, actually, yeah, that's it. Just connect and let's export default connect uh, map state to props. And we don't need any actions, so we can omit that the, um, the argument. And here we do const map state to props equals it takes in the state and here oh yeah, actually it's a function it returns an object and here we can actually even get a certain key within an object so we can say authenticated and then do state dot user dot authenticated and you will get just that one key one property and here it's it's going to be in the props so nothing changes here so we get authenticated from the props and then we get it here and we uh, redirect if needed let's do actually prop types as well because you know you never know what's going to happen so let's do prop types and it's always good to practice these uh, these best practices so that you get used to them all right so prop types and here we say what is it auth route auth route dot prop types equals and what do we have we have just user so prop types dot object uh, dot is required actually this is a capital p and everything should be fine let's save all files sign up axios is defined oh actually we don't need axios anymore here because we're doing that from the user actions we have Axios in the login as well. Let's get rid of that. All right. We will use these, so let's just ignore that warning for now. Let's go here. Let's see, we have a token, and if we click here, it redirects us, and if we delete the token, now we click here. Huh. Somehow that the auth route is not working. We deleted the token, but we're still we're still logged in. Oh, because we need to actually oh this executes once uh, the app is submitted. Actually, yeah, it's behaving uh, it's behaving normally. I don't know what uh, I was thinking there because that would be triggered. Actually, because a login would not be triggered by someone deleting the token, it would be triggered by us deleting the token from the app. Uh, there would be a login button and that login button when you click it it doesn't just delete the token it actually sets the state to unauthenticated so yeah no one will actually go and delete the token like this if they do they will actually break our app and we have no way of fixing that <laughs> all right so this is our application right now and right now we don't have a profile so let's actually create that let's create a section where we show the profile because if we go to our dev tools to redux we actually are fetching the profile we have all these details we just need to show them on the interface all right so let's go to the home page where's the home page yeah here so here where we have this text profile let's actually put a component profile which we haven't created yet. Let's uh, import it. Import something that hasn't been created yet because why not? <laughs> All right, let's go to components. Let's create a profile.js. 
and here let's do RCE tab oops again it didn't work come on yes third time is the charm I guess all right so let's remove the uh, that export and here we're gonna need a couple of things of course we're gonna have prop types so prop types what is that prop types from prop dash types we're gonna need with styles from material you are slash core slash style slash with styles uh, we're gonna need some movie stuff so we're gonna need the button from material UI slash core slash button uh, we're, I know we're gonna need some icons we actually need to install the package for icons so let's open up a new window and do npm install dash dash save at material UI slash uh, slash icons uh, let's actually look at the documentation so basically these are all the um, so we go to styles icons these are all the material uh, Google material design icons they are SVG icons and the way you use them is just like you import the icon with the name of it so let's say delete so import uh, at material UI slash icons slash delete and you use it as a react component and if you would go here to see the full list of the uh, of the Google material design icons I don't know why I said the whole thing again <laughs> you can see all the icons and if you want to use one basically you just camel case the name so for example play for work will be um, not camel case pascal case so it would be like play for work and you will get that icon all right so let's head back to our application we're not going to use any icons right now but here at the start actually we need to uh, first let's say with styles styles and wrap the profile as well and then let's wrap the entire thing and here let's connect it connect which we haven't brought in yet and it brings the connect from HTTP to okay VS code <laughs> map state to props uh, I don't think we need any actions for now so here let's do um, we bring connect no actually from react redux and we, we need to create the map state of props and it takes the state the usual and it returns an object and we only need to access the user so user state dot user and oh we need to do the prop types so let's do what is this profile so profile dot prop types we have user an object and it's required and we have uh, classes from with styles um, almost typed classes <laughs> and this is required cool okay so here at the start of the render let's get um, let's get classes and let's get some details from our user so from user let's as well destructure from this uh, actually inside of user we have credentials and from that we're gonna need some stuff this is some nested uh, destructuring so we're gonna need handle we're gonna need created at uh, image URL um, what else oh yeah we need the details so bio and website and location all right so this is what this is after credentials I confused myself a bit yeah that's it we need the, the credentials and we need the well actually well, actually we need to create another property I forgot about so inside the user we're gonna have um, so here we put a comma and we do loading we're gonna have a um, loading for the user let's not forget to say this equals this dot props and let's save so it formats we're gonna have actually a loading property so when the profile is loading we can see um, a loading skeleton so which is different to the UI loading so let's go to our user reducer and here we need to bring from types uh, loading user and here we need to initialize a property loading with false 
and here let's add a case for that. So case loading user and all it does here we just return the state and we do loading equals true and here when we set the profile we actually um, stop the loading so we do loading equals false in case it was true so let's save this and so let's go to user actions let's bring it in as well here so from types loading user oh it's already created actually it's already in the types okay so loading user and um, here when we try to get the data let's before we try to get the data we dispatch an action with the type loading user i think we're done with this part yeah we're done with this part so let's go back to our let's save the home let's close this let's close this let's not worry about this or oh, let's create const styles equals empty object for now. Uh, I noticed I'm, uh, I'm spending too much time writing CSS rules, which is not the main focus of this course or this series. So what I'm going to do for now, I'm just going to paste in like styles for this profile because there's quite a bunch of them. I don't want to, I don't want to waste time doing that. I'm going to, of course, um, uh, post the link to this, uh, st this object, styles object. And so you can copy it and paste it right now as we're um, doing this video and then you'll have everything styled. And you can go, of course, through it and, and you know, and understand what's happening there, why I wrote what I did. Okay, so here we're gonna actually create one object and then return it and then we're gonna call it profile markup. Because this markup is gonna be completely different depending on whether we're loading or whether we're authenticated. So here we have, uh, let's do let profile markup. Now we're going to have, this is going to be a bit confusing. We're going to have two ternary operators. So the first one, let's say, if not loading. So let's do a question mark parentheses, colon parentheses. So if we're not loading, show this. If we're loading, show this. So for loading, let's for now, let's just show uh, a paragraph say loading dot 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 and if we're not loading don't worry about this it's gonna be fixed once I write anything here so if we're not loading we check if we're authenticated so if we're authenticated show this else show this so if we're not loading sh if we're loading show loading if we're not loading check if we're authenticated if we are authenticated show the profile of authenticated if not we're gonna show um, uh, you know, a, a section that says there's no profile data, please log in or sign up and we'll show two buttons uh, for users to do exactly that. So here I'm going to use um, something called paper from Material UI. It's basically just like, um, where is it? So component demos, paper. So yeah, it's this, it's just this kind of surrounding frame thing that stands out from the background. It looks like a card because Basically, a card is built up on top of a paper. So here we do paper. I'm going to give it a class name of classes dot paper. So we already have the styles, so these styles will apply and it will look cool all off the go. So here I'm going to do a, a oops. So let's tab here. Let's do a div with a class name of and name this profile. And here I'm going to have a wrapper for the profile image. And actually we could still use traditional class name, you know, strings. Uh, we can, if you go here and you see, we can still use stuff like this. So inside of profile, we can say and space, and then we give the class and it will still work like traditional um, uh, SAS. And yeah, so we can do that. So this is profile image, actually not image profile. So profile. Or is it? Let me check again. Yeah, profile dash image. So here inside of this div, we're gonna have the um, the image. So I'm gonna do image or just image tab, and the source is gonna be image URL. We already destructured that, and the alternative will be just profile, and it's gonna be yeah okay. I'm just gonna leave it like that for now. Here we're gonna do a, a horizontal ruler. 
which I've already styled to not have any border, so it will be invisible to just create some space between them. And here, here actually I'm gonna put a link, but this is not gonna be like the normal React link. Actually it is, but indirectly. But here let's first put a div with the class profile details. And I'm gonna bring in something from Material UI. So actually not, this is not movie stuff, this is Redux stuff. So it's a Redux. And here from Mui, I'm gonna bring in, um, uh, what is it? From material, material, why is it not IntelliSensing? Material dash UI slash core slash link. And um, I can name it anything because it's the default, it's the default uh, export. I don't wanna confuse it with the React router DOM link, which we need to bring in as well. So import link from react router dom and here, uh, where are we? So we're here, here I'm gonna say um, movie link and I'm gonna give it the component of link and here I'm, it's gonna have the two, actually it's gonna be uh, like this, template string it's going to be to users slash uh, put a, a variable there and it's going to be the handle of this user. So this is going to be like a title uh, that says the name of the user and it's going to be a link as well to that to the page of the user and the color will be primary. And since this is built on top of typography, we can give a variant to change the size and I'm going to give the vari variant of um, h5, header 5 and this will say at handle just like in Twitter and here we will do an HR and here I want to show um, and I want, I want to show the details of the profile so first first will be the bio so and these we don't have to have them because a user can have no bio so it's gonna be null so what we need to do we need to first check if they have a bio then we show the bio so here what we're gonna use we're gonna use typography typography and is it imported from the right place? Oh, not like this. I need to tree shake this. So typography, and I need to put it with movie stuff. Okay. So here, this is gonna be typography of variant. Uh, what variant do I give this? Body two, I guess. I think it's body two. Pretty sure it's body too. So here, bio, not bio, and bio. And after this, I'm gonna put another HR to make some more space. And here, I'm gonna check if a user has the location. And here, I'm gonna do parentheses because it's gonna be multiple things. I wanna use like an icon on the left uh, that shows um, a location icon. And this is called location on. Let me bring it in from icons. So this will be here. Import location on from material UI. Actually not slash core slash icons slash location on. I'm gonna need two more icons, so I might as well excuse me, bring them now. I'm gonna need the link icon. I'm gonna call it link icon. Ion icon and it's gonna be from icon slash link. Actually, let me check. I don't remember what the other icon was that I need to bring. Uh, styles, icons, it's calendar, but it's a calendar. Yeah, calendar today. Okay. All right, so it's gonna be, let me select this, control D calendar today all right so here uh, where are we so location on color primary and yeah that's it and here next to it I'm gonna do space uh, actually with that we just do span location inside like this and 
I'm gonna put an HR, but it has to go inside of here because if there is no if there's no location, I don't wanna put two HRs on top of each other. Oh, this is giving me an error. Must have one parent element. Oh yeah, okay. Let's wrap this in a fragment, which if you don't know what it is, it's a React a component that actually doesn't render anything, but it just wraps things so that they will be in one element. So let's actually bring that in. Fragment. And here we need to show the, uh, was it the web? yeah, the website. So website and and. And let's do a parentheses expression. Let's do another fragment as well. And here let's um, let's use the link icon. So link icon with a color of primary. And under the link, I'm gonna actually have a normal anchor tag, uh, anchor tag with a href to the website. And I'm gonna give it a target underscore blank so that it doesn't open in this window, it opens in a different window. And this is a React thing, you have to give this rel equals no opener, no referrer, otherwise React will complain. So we close this and inside of here, I wanna do like, oops, because this icon is kind of thin, I wanna give like some uh, it's kind of wide, so I'm going to give some space and then put the website like this and put in a, like a horizontal ruler, HR. And here under the website, I'm going to put the um, the joined since date thing. So I'm, I'll put the calendar today icon with a color of primary again. And after it, I'm going to put some space like this and I'm going to put a span and say joined and here actually we need to format this so we need to bring in um, day.js so let's say import day.js from day.js and where are we we're here wait here so here I need to say day.js pass this the created at and here I want to format it and pass a string say MMM which is gonna say like the month but in three digits line three letters and quadruple Y to just show like the the year in a normal format all right so this is it for the profile but here I want to show as well uh, if we're not authenticated so here let's do paper again with a class name oops class name of classes dot paper and close this and then inside of here uh, we're gonna have some text so typography with a no no color a variant of body 2 and I'm gonna give this a line takes a property align and say center so the text is actually aligned in the center and let's say no profile found please log in again um, here I'm gonna put a div a div and it's gonna have a class name of classes dot buttons is it button or buttons buttons yeah buttons all right so buttons and here I'm gonna put a button I did we bring in button we did okay all right, here I'm gonna put what is this like this button and this will have a variant of contained Ooh, contained like this uh, with a color primary color primary with a component of link so that we can actually uh, go somewhere within our application with a to to slash login and this button will say login and we can actually just copy this copy this button but here we'll have the color of secondary and it will go to sign up and it will say sign up 
think this is it for our profile markup. Yeah, so yeah, if we're logged in, we will show this. If we're not, we'll show this. If we're loading, we'll show this. Okay, let's save. All right, paper is not defined. Oh, we need to bring in paper. So let's copy this. Select this, control D, say paper. What else? Authenticated is not defined. How come? Oh, we need to take authenticated as well from user. So authenticated. So theme is not defined. Oh, we need theme. We need to spread theme here. Actually, we need to take theme. So do like this theme and then wrap this in parentheses so that it's returned as a, from the function. All right, let's save and it should fix everything and it does. Cool. Oh, okay, so our image is massive, but the rest is cool. Oh, because this image um, needs the class. What is the class actually? Profile image, yeah, this. So, where is the image? Class name equals that. Let's save. Oh, it's aligned to the left for some reason. What's what's wrong actually? Oh, actually the div that contains it is um, is image wrapper and not not uh, not profile image. So delete this and then so wrapper. All right, cool. So our profile is uh, like this. We show the website. This person has Twitter as their website. Joined in March 2019. And if we would like log out, of course now manually, like we will implement a log out button in the next episode. When we finish up the profile, cool, we get the buttons. And if we click on login, it goes to login. If we click on sign up, it goes there. If I would sign up as let's say John, who doesn't have any bio or anything, Go hit enter. There we go. We don't get the details that uh, this user doesn't have and the image is rendering quite nicely. Uh, let's start implementing some action buttons where we can add details for our user. All right, first thing I want to work on is the uh, image upload functionality. I want to add a button when we click it, we can select an image and upload it to our server. So let's go to profile.js. And here, right under the profile image, I'm going to add an input. Input of type file. And it's going to have an ID of image or let's call this profile image or image upload or image file. Image or image input. I don't know. I didn't feel creative in that moment. <laughs> so on change equals, uh, so this input itself is gonna trigger the um, the handler function. So let's call this handle image change. And this, the way a, a file input, um, a file input works is that the on change is triggered each time you select a file. So if you click and you select a file, the on change is uh, triggered. And the way I wanna set this up, I don't wanna set up two buttons where you select one image and then you click upload because that's a bit too much for our profile. What I wanna do is that once a user selects an image and clicks um, select, it automatically up uploads to our server. So let's go here and create this handler method. Let's call this um, handle image change. It's going to take an event because it's an input after all. And here, what we want to do is we want to get the file. So how we get it is let's do const image equals because this is a, a file input. So event target, it's going to have a property files. And because we said file, we can only select one, but it will still have them in an array. So let's select the first one. So files zero and um, here we can we can like do a comment here, like send to server. I just want to look at it right now and see if it's working. Okay. So we can actually spend some time and style this and change these, uh, these things that come to choose file message and remove this message. But what we can do, which is uh, more easy and convenient is that we can just hide this and put a, a button here and that button will trigger the input. So what I want to do is I want to add this, a property hidden 
with value hidden, so we, we don't see this. But what we would do is that we add a button next to it that when clicked, it triggers this input. So let's do icon, uh, icon button I'm gonna use, which is a, it's built on top of a button, it's just um, an icon that triggers an event and then you put uh, a button inside of it so that it looks like a, well, it has a button. So on click equals, and let's call this handler handle edit picture and let's give it a class name of button. I've, uh, remember we've already written those um, CSS rules. So here I'm gonna put a an edit icon, which if you go to material UI icons or material design icons, you'll see it's just a pen. And I'm gonna give it the color primary. So let's bring these two things in. So here under MUI stuff, I'm gonna do import icon button from at material UI slash core slash icon button and the edit icon import edit icon from material UI slash icons slash edit like this. All right, so let's create this handle edit picture uh, function. Let's go here and say handle edit picture equals takes no arguments and what it does is that it needs to find this input and just click it basically. So what we need to do is const file input and we can get it since it has an ID. So let's do document dot get element. I don't know why I'm not getting intelligence here. It's a bit slow. Okay, so get element by ID and the ID will be was the other image input. Now that we have it, we could just say file input dot click simply, and it will actually click it, which will open the selection file selection window. And then uh, when we select an image, it will uh, trigger this. So let's save. And there we go, we get our button and the other input, the actual input is hidden. And the button is already placed in its perfect spot because of the CSS rules that we pasted in the last video. So if I click it, it will actually trigger the input and I, I can select a file and I don't see the name of the file selected or anything. It's just done behind the scenes. All right, but what I want to do actually, this button maybe is not that descriptive. So I want to use something called a tooltip, which if you go to material UI and component demos, uh, right here, tooltips. It's basically when you hover over something and you see this message that kind of helps you, tells you what this does. And you can place it on any side. I prefer the top. So the way you do this, you just bring in this tooltip from Material UI Core Tooltip. Let's copy that. Let's go here under MUI stuff. Let's paste that. And the way it works is that you surround your element with a tooltip like this. So if you want this button to have a tooltip, you just surround it and you put a title and a placement. So here. Uh, our icon button here. Let's cut this and let's do tool tip and it has a title and here the title I wanted to say edit profile picture and the placement is top. I think the default placement is bottom. So okay, let's paste that. If you want it on the bottom, you can you can do that, but I just prefer the top. So let's save and let's see what it looks like. All right, cool. So we get our message when we hover over, which is very helpful. So it's it's a good UX um, ex uh, practice. All right, so let's actually send our file to the server. So, oh, not here. Here, what we need to do we we need to send a request of type uh, with a with form data. So let's create that. So let's do con const form data equals new form data Pascal case because this is a class. So let's do form data dot append. So then we're gonna append a val like a, an input to the uh, to the form data, and this takes three things: a name, which is gonna be a string, and let's just say image. This doesn't matter because of we know what our server code looks like, but let's call it image. A value which will be image, which is this file, and a blob which is gonna be image dot name 
And here we can actually send an Axios request from here, but of course, since we have Redux, let's centralize everything in the user um, actions, plus we need to trigger the user loading um, action. So th let's do this dot props. Let's call an action that we haven't created yet. It's upload image and let's pass it this form data. Simple as that. And let's go and create this action actually. So let's go to actions, user actions. Here at the bottom, I'm going to do export const upload image. It's going to take form data and then do the following. So let's do axios.post. But actually before that, let's call the uh, the uh, user loading uh, action. So let's do let's dispatch an action with type um, not user loading loading user. And actually, I forgot to include the dispatch. So here we need dispatch. So let's uh, add it here. So dispatch. So after we dispatch the action, we can send our request. So post. If you remember, this is to slash user slash image, and the data will be that form. Uh, not dorm form data and here dot then we get a response uh, what we need to do here we just dispatch the get user details get or get user uh, data and then get like basically get our user so and then here let's do catch error we just console log that error And here we don't need this result, so we can just have an empty um, function uh, argument there. Yeah, I think this is it for the uh, upload image. Let's actually import it in the profile. Uh, here, import. Let's import the logout uh, function as well, because we're gonna the, we're gonna use it. The logout action as well. We're gonna use it later. So logout user and um, upload image from Go back one level, redux slash actions slash user actions. All right, let's go to the bottom and create a map actions to props. So here's the const map actions to props equals an object which has logout user and upload image. And let's pass that as the second argument to our connect. So map actions to props and let's add them to the prop types. So here, let's say logout user is a prop types dot func dot is required. And we need upload image, oops, upload image, uh, prop types dot func dot is required. All right, let's save all files and the dev server is still running for me. Let's go to the application. Let's click on the uh, on the button. Let's select this guy's image and it loads. And there we go, we get our image and it even uploads on the spot right there because we dispatched the get user data action. And if we do it again, we put this monkey image and there we go, we get the image uploaded again. So cool, it's working. And if we go to our um, data or storage bucket, we see that, well, of course the image is here. So the latest one is this. Actually, we might later add a, uh, a DB trigger that deletes the user's old image and then uploads the new one as well. Uh, so in this video, we're going to create two buttons in the profile section, a logout button and a edit details button. So let's do that. All right, let's go to our uh, text editor and let's go to profile.js. And here where we are not loading and authenticated at the bottom here after this div, let's add. So first, let's add the logout button, which is um, we've already we've already imported the logout um, user function or action, so let's do that. So let's use it. So here, let's say, um, I'm gonna surround this with a tooltip as well. And the title of the tooltip will be logout. And the placement will be at the top. And here we're gonna have our icon button. And the on click for this, on click 
is let's call this this dot um, what do we call it handle logout and let's close it and inside of here the icon that I'm gonna use is called keyboard keyboard return and it's gonna have a color of primary let's close the tag and let's what's there's there an error here no it's fine let's bring in the icon so here under icons let's do import keyboard uh, return oops import keyboard return from material UI slash icon slash keyboard return all right and this handle logout let's create that so handle logout is actually just gonna call this um, this dot props dot logout user all right did we actually add that to our yeah we have that we have that here we've imported it and uh, it should work fine let's save let's look at our app did we get an error no cool so we get this uh, arrow back and if we click it we actually get logged out all right let's look log back in so the user at email.com one two three through six all right we're back in now let's create a button for editing these details and for this i'm going to use the um the dialog if we go to component demos dialog and uh, let's try this one no not this one the one with a form yeah this one so we're going to have something like this a dialog that has three fields one for the bio one for the location and one for the website and if we do like it's going to be save instead of subscribe and that will send a request to our server and the way dialogues work is is that you're going to have a button at the a button at the top uh, it's this one that triggers um, the dialog to open and then you're gonna have the content of the dialog But since this will have a lot of code, let's actually put it in its own component. So here uh, Under the logout button. Let's say let's add this um, component called edit details Which we haven't created yet Let's go up here and let's import it in so edit details from we go back one level we go to components slash edit details all right let's go to components uh, actually it's in the same direct uh, same and it's on the same level so we just do like this so here let's create a new file called edit details.js pascal case of course and here let's do rce tab again Come on, there we go. <laughs> let's remove this export. Uh, let's take these three imports because we need them. Because we're gonna need fragment as well. Gonna need prop types. Let's let's do a, uh, a styles here. Const styles is we're gonna need the global theme. So let's take the global theme and return. Let's just spread the theme for now. If we need to add anything, we're gonna add it later. And we're gonna need of course redux to get our details from the server and actually show the values on that form so uh, let's say import connect oh, from react redux and we're also gonna need an action that we haven't created yet let's actually create that action first not data actions in user actions let's go to the bottom here Let's do export const and this is going to be the function that sends a request to edit our details. Let's call it edit user details and you will take user details and you, it needs dispatch. So let's take dispatch as well. And here we start by dispatching an action with the type loading user. Is it? Yeah, it's loading user. And here we send our request, so axios.post, and it's gonna be to slash user, and it's gonna take the user details uh, object, not post, dot then. Here when we get our response, actually we don't need the response, because we're just gonna call get user data from here. So we dispatch get user 
data and here dot catch if we have any error let's console log it all right this is done let's save this and here let's bring it in so import edit user details from we go back one level redux slash user actions slash not just user actions actually slash actions yeah slash actions slash user actions all right uh, let's connect our component let's cut this edit edit details and let's say export default connect and we're gonna have map state to props oops to props and here we're just gonna have one action so let's do an object like this with the action edit user details and here let's do with styles we pass in styles and then for the second one we pass in our edit details component all right let's create our prop types as well so let's do edit details dot prop types equals uh, the first is the function so edit user details is a prop types dot func dot is required and uh, we're gonna have we're gonna need classes as well prop types dot object dot is required and I think this is it yeah okay so here we're gonna need uh, to initialize a state and in our state we're gonna have three fields uh, bio which is gonna be initially an empty string website an empty string and location an empty string uh, we need a, a boolean for open which is gonna be initially false because by default it's it's closed the dialog and here what we need to do is that we need to once this component is rendered uh, once it mounts we need to get the details from that we have of this user and put them as the values of our input so let's say if our location says uh, Los Angeles California we want to when we open the dialogue in location it will be already written there so that the user can edit it or change it and if we don't have anything of course it's gonna be empty so here in component did mount actually we need to create our map state to props const map state to props it's gonna it's gonna be a function that takes the state and returns the following and we can actually get credential just credentials we need so we do credentials it's gonna be from state dot user dot credentials all right so here in component did mount we need to do this dot set state and we need to set the bio and we could actually in our credentials not have a bio so we need to check for it otherwise we're gonna set it to undefined so what we need to do is we need to do um, this dot props or actually let's de destructure the, the credentials const credentials equals this dot props and here what we need to do is that we need to say credentials dot um, bio so if we have so a ternary operator like this if we have them if we have a bio let's say uh, so we just say that again so the value would be this else it's gonna stay empty so let's copy this let's add a comma let's paste it paste it twice so let's replace here control D and say website and control D and say location all right, so when the component is loaded and mounted, it's gonna set these values. So let's create our our dialog. So here, instead of this div, I'm gonna use fragment. Oops, it didn't close. Did we not bring it in? We did. Don't know why it didn't close there. there. So fragment. All right, so inside the fragment. So first thing is gonna be our button, which is gonna be inside the tooltip and the title of the tooltip is gonna be um, edit details placement as usual on the top 
Don't know why these tags are not being closed. Is it because I didn't import them? I think because I didn't import these things. Let me import uh, the stuff that we're gonna use. So import tooltip from material UI slash core slash tooltip. Uh, let's copy this. We need icon button. Um, actually, we can just bring in uh, some stuff from here. So let's just bring in all this stuff until here. Let's paste it before. So we're gonna need these icon button, and we're gonna need uh, the edit icon. So let's say import edit icon from material UI slash icon slash edit. I'm here. I'm just gonna say icons. Here I'm gonna do Redux. Oops. Redux stuff. And here say movie stuff. All right. So now if I do this, yeah, it closes the tooltip. And here we have our icon button. Icon button. The on click. Uh, let's call it uh, handle open and let's give it a class because I, I know we're gonna need to, to style it later of class classes dot button classes actually let's destructure classes as well so let's do const classes equals this dot props let's close this and inside of here we're gonna have our icon which is the edit icon with a color of primary let's close it actually let's create our handle open and handle close functions so let's do handle open is takes nothing and it sets the state to open so open will be true and actually here as well we need to get the um, the details uh, we need to do this, but let's make this into a function of its own because we, we don't want to repeat our code. Let's call this uh, set user details to state or map makes more sense. And it takes the credentials because we need them. And here, let's paste this and it so here we get the credentials and, and we call it with credentials. And here as well, we need to call it. So uh, let's do like this. And we can just pass it this.props.credentials. And it will do the same. Let's create the handle close. Which takes, uh, yeah, it takes nothing. And here we just say this dot. Uh, set state open is false. All right. Um, I think this is it. Okay, so here we need to, after the button, we need to put our form. Uh, but here, let's create, uh, let's actually do the dialog. And the dialog will take the open. The open would be this.state.open. And is the on close callback or or font method? This would be the this dot handle close, and I'm gonna give it a property of full width, which will make it take full width, and I'm gonna give it a property max width of sm. Um, if you see, there's a cool example here. Let's close this. Uh, the full width dialog, and if you change here. You can actually customize the width. So I'm gonna do the SM, it seems the most, you know, the one that makes the most sense or the one most appropriate or for application. Don't know why these tags are not closing. Let's close the dialog. Pretty sure I imported the dialog. Yeah, I did. Excuse my text editor, guys. All right, so here we need the dialog tech um, title. So dialog title and this will say edit your details 
and under under here we put dialogue content all right it closed this one cool form and here we'll have a form but it's not going to have a submit action because our dialogue actions are going to do that for us so here we're going to have uh, text fields so i'm going to have text i'm going to say text field and oh actually no I need to give it some properties so first we'll have a name so the first will be a bio we'll have a type of text I have a label of uh, bio with a capital B and I'm going to give it a property of multi-line which will make it a text area because this is a bio so it will need some uh, some more space and we give it three rows and let's give it a placeholder like it will it will work like a hint so here let's say a short bio about yourself uh, let's give it a class name of classes dot remember we have access to our global theme so we can do classes dot text field and it will style in the same way the um, sign up and login text fields are styled so here we'll give it a value as well this will be this dot state dot um, bio and an on change which we haven't created yet will be this dot on change and let's give it full width so it takes up the full width let me close this let's copy it and paste it two more times but from these two let's remove the uh the multi-line and the three rows because these will be just normal text fields and this will be website and the label is website and text holder will be uh your personal slash professional professional I can't spell website <laughs> this dot state dot website and same for the rest and here will be the location so location is the name and the label is location with a capital L and here let's say let's just say where you live and here let's say dot, this dot state dot location and yeah that's fine let's create the on change actually it will be a generic on change that we have already written so let's just copy it from from here from the login or from the sign up but did we say this will be actually let's call it um, handle change change because you want to stick with the same names that you've used across the same project so that it makes more sense so let's paste this handle change here and we also need at the bottom here we need our actions our dialogue actions which, which will be outside the dialogue content so here let's say dialogue actions which will be the buttons at the bottom of the dialogue and we'll have two of them so the first one is a button and it has an on click and this will be the close button so this dot handle close and this will be the button if people want to cancel let's give it a color of primary and let's call this cancel and let's copy it paste it this is this will be the save so this will be the one that sends the request and let's give it the handle submit which we haven't created yet um, okay so we have handle change let's create handle submit uh, will be handle submit um, it won't take an event because it's not based on a form and uh, let's do const uh, const user details equal let's get the bio from this dot state dot bio let's copy this twice this will be website and this will be location and here we just need to call our function so this dot props our action edit user details and pass it our user details and here we actually close the the dialogue after we submit so this dot handle close like this and I think this is it for this dialogue let's remove this dialogue text because we don't actually use it 
and let's save all files and look at our app okay map user details to state is not defined map user details to state oh it needs to go before the other ones so that they will know what we're talking about oh Silly mistake. This dot map user details. All right. Let's look at our app. Cannot resolve icon edit. It's first of all, it's edit icons, but edit i or just edit. Yeah, I forgot the slash. All right. So we get the edit button. So let's say I wanted to change London UK to, let's say Paris. France and I wanted to remove hello I'm user and say I don't know I am the user so let's save loading cool we get the new details Paris France and I am the user but I want this button to be on the right so let's go here under theme let's say button we gave it a class button I think. yeah we did so we're simply gonna say float right and we save cool we get our button on the right and it says edit details when we hover it and it works just fine if we remove this text we see our placeholders yeah all right so right now if we log in the um the navbar doesn't change the buttons still remain the same so let's actually change it so that when we are authenticated we have uh, buttons here to add a post and to see notifications and stuff all right, let's go to our project. And here in navbar, uh, the navbar now needs to know whether we're authenticated or not. So it needs to connect to the state. So let's bring in, so here let's import, import connect from React Redux. And let's connect our navbar. So here export default connect. And uh, let's say map state to props. And it doesn't take a Mac, uh, it doesn't use any actions, so we just emit that argument. And here, let's say const map state to props takes the state and returns the following. So we need authenticated, so we can extract only that. So authenticated, it's going to be from state dot user dot authenticated. All right, um, let's let's bring in prop types as well. We might as well. So prop types from prop dash types. And here let's say navbar dot prop types. We have authenticated, uh, not state, um, prop types dot bull because it's a boolean and it's required all right so here now that we have uh, the authenticated let's extract it so inside the render let's say const authenticated equals this dot props and inside the toolbar here let's cut this let's say let's do an expression and say authenticated so ternary operator if it's if we're authenticated we show something and here colon so else we show this and because there's three elements here we need to wrap them in a fragment so fragment and we need to actually import that so inside of here let's paste our buttons and let's import fragment so here add fragment and here, if we are, uh, if we're actually authenticated, let's do another fragment here, fragment tab. And here we want to show three buttons. Uh, one that's actually a plus. So here I'll do, of course, with the tooltip, uh, we're going to use the same pattern from uh, this button here. So tooltip, icon button, and, uh, but actually there's like a bunch of, uh, elements here. Let's create um, a component for this button that so that we don't actually have to import all these things into uh, our components whenever we want to use this button. So let's create a custom component in util. Let's create my uh, my button dot js 
you can call it whatever I chose to call it my button. This is a functional component. So RFC tab. And here we can just say export default like this. And we're going to destructure from the props. It's going to have children. So the way this thing works is that, um, let's go back here. So the way it works is that it's going to take a, a tip. So for the title of the tip, and it's going to take the on click. And in case we need to style the tooltip or the icon button, we're going to take two class names for both of them. And of course, we don't have to have them, but if we do, it's going to style them. So here we're going to take children and children is going to be whatever that's inside. And usually it's the icon. So we're going to have my button and then we're going to give the props. And inside of that, we give any icon and that icon will be, will be the children will be rendered inside the button. So we're going to take an on click. We're going to take a BTN class name, which is going to be for the icon button. We're going to take a tip class name, which is the class name for the tip for the tooltip. And we're going to take a tip as well, which is the title for the tooltip. And here, instead of doing return like this, we can actually just do parentheses because we don't need to process any logic here. And here we'll say tooltip. Let's actually import the tooltip and the icon button. So here import tool tip from uh, not at yeah at like this material UI slash core slash tool tip and we need the icon button material UI slash core slash icon button all right so here we say tool tip with the title that's tip class name of tip class name. And of course, this is uh, if we don't give a class name, it, it's not a problem. It's just not going to have a class. So we can have it like this. And inside we'll have icon button. <coughs> we'll have an on click of on click and a class name of BTN class name button class name and actually let's do this because we're going to have stuff inside of it and here will be just children which is going to be the icon all right let's save this and uh, let's go to navbar here let's uh, import it so here, let's do or here at the bottom here let's say import my button from we go back one level to util slash my button and here instead of tooltip we do so this will be the plus button my button and it's gonna need the it's not gonna have an on click right now it's not gonna do anything so we just uh, give it the title of the tip or just tip which will say um, create a scream or post a scream and inside it's gonna have the add add button or add icon. Let's say here icons. Actually, I'm gonna bring all the icons we need right now. So we need the add icon from material UI slash icons slash add. And by the way, this is the like I said before, this is a default uh, export, you can just have add. But the fact that I add icon to it makes it more readable in my code. I'm like, okay, so this is an icon. All right, let's copy all of this. Let's paste it twice. And here we're going to have home icon here. This is going to be home and here I'm going to have notifications from notifications. All right, here we're going to have the icon, the add icon. So add icon, let's give it a color of primary. Let's close this. So that's the first button. The second one is going to be uh, the home button. So my button and the tip will be home. Uh, will we have a class? No, I don't think so. So here we'll have the icon. So home icon color primary. Uh, actually, this is going to be a link to home. So let's wrap it in a link. Let's cut that and do link. We already imported link. Let's do two slash and 
close this and inside paste our button and the third one is going to be the notification so let's say my button um, with a tip notifications um, let's close this and inside we're going to have the notifications icon with the color of primary all right, so if, with, if we're authenticated, we should see these buttons. All right, let's save. I'm already running my um, project. Let's refresh. Oh, actually, the tip is not showing, and the color shouldn't be primary, of course. Uh, I don't know what I was thinking there, because it's going to be the same as the bar. Uh, but the way these buttons work, they're actually SVGs, so we can actually target them from our CSS. So let's go to our app CSS, and inside of here, I'm going to say... Uh, and oh, actually, this is not SAS, this is CSS. So I can, I need to say dot nav container. And here I'm going to say SVG. So any SVG inside of the container and uh, the nav container. So any SVG inside of our nav bar, let's give it a color of um, hashtag FFF, which is white. Let's save and let's go back. Cool, they're white now. But let's fix this uh, notification, uh, this, the text not working. It must be from the uh, button here. So tooltip, or oh, title, not title. I misspelled title. So let's save. All right, so we get our tooltips. And if we click on a user and we click on home, it actually redirects to home. Of course, these don't do anything yet, but we will fix that. Let's actually change as well the buttons in um, so in profile here. Instead of this, we're gonna have my button. So let's do my button, and it's gonna have a tip of edit profile picture, and we're gonna have an on click of this dot handle edit picture. And because this button has a class name, we're going to give btn class name equals button. And yeah, this is it. And inside the my button, we'll have the edit icon. Um, actually, I forgot something inside the nav bar. We need to remove these color primaries because they they don't serve any purpose right now. Uh, so back to the profile. Here, we actually need the color primary. So primary, we close the icon. Don't know why there's this squiggly. Okay, it's fixed. So we can remove this. And let's copy all of this. Let's come here under this tool tip. Let's do, so the tip will be logout. The on click will be handle logout and we don't need a BTN class name here. So let's remove this. And it, this will be keyboard i keyboard keyboard return instead of edit icon. We can remove all of this now, and we need to remove the imports because we don't need them because they're already in the button. And we need to bring in the button. So here, let's say import my button, oops, button from uh, util slash my button. Oops. Uh, that's fine. Let's go to edit details. So let's remove tooltip and icon button. And here, let's bring in my button. So my button. Again, I did this U capitalized. <laughs> so we go back one level slash util slash my button. And I think I still have it copied. So I'll, oh no, I don't. So I could just say my button and the tip will be edit details and the on click will be this dot handle open and we need a btn class name it will be classes dot button and we close this tag inside we have the edit icon with the color primary so we close this let's remove this let's copy this 
So actually, no, this is the only button we have here. So let's just save all files and let's check if nothing is broken. Cool, this still works and we get the message. But the placement is actually at the bottom. So here, oh, I forgot to add the placement. So in the tooltip, place placement equals top. If you guys want it on the bottom, you can leave it um, as the default. I like the top one. And even here, if, if there's no space, it's gonna be on the bottom, even though that it actually says placement top, and then the other one's gonna be on the top. All right, so now we wanna show the like button and number of likes and number of comments on the screen cards. But one thing I wanna fix is here in the home, where is it, home, here. So in the home, we're still using Axios. We need to create an action for getting all screams. Uh, we need let, we need to create actually a couple of actions that we're gonna use as well in the scream uh, components. So here I'm gonna import some types. Uh, so we have set screams. Maybe some of them we haven't created yet, but we will in a second. So loading data as well, like scream, unlike scream. Uh, I think that's it. Yeah, that's it. From we go back one level and it's types. Of course, we need Axios. And here we need to do the f the first one is the one we need in home. So uh, export const get screams equals doesn't take anything and it just um, first it dispatches a loading. Oh, oops. We need to use dispatch. So here we say dispatch. And here we say dispatch an action with the type of loading data. Like this. And then here we can send our request. So axios.get to slash screams. Then we get our result. We dispatch an action with the type set screams. And the payload will be the response data. And here, if we get any error, uh, we need to clear out the uh, screams. And actually, we don't need a type for this. We can just uh, dispatch. Um, so type will be the same actually, set screams. And the payload will just be null. So we just reset them back to null. Or, or actually empty object. Well, this will almost never happen, but you know, you never know. All right, so let's put some comments here. Let's say get all screams. And now we're gonna uh, create the like a scream. Okay, let's say like a scream like this. And let's say unlike a scream. Okay, here in the types, let's create these new types. So what do we have? We have, so we have set screams, loading data, like scream and unlike scream. So these are all data types or data reducer types. So here we say const or export const uh, set screams equal set screams, not screams, set screams. We actually need another one for way later for getting one scream that's called just set scream without an S. Uh, we need a control D here and do like scream. We need unlike scream, so control D un, oops, unlike scream. And what else? We need the uh, loading data which is gonna be a UI thing. So here we paste, select this, control the loading data. I think this is it, yeah. Okay, let's do the other actions as well so that we don't have to return to this file. So export const like scream. And uh, this will take the scream ID of which scream to like. We'll take dispatch. And first thing with dispatch, do we dispatch a loading? No, actually we don't. Let's do axios dot get and do template string slash scream 
slash dollar sign curly braces scream id slash like and the, then if we get a response we dispatch an action with the type like scream oops like scream and the payload will be res.data because we're going to get the like back and here we can say dot catch we have any errors we actually just console log them console log error all right so unlike scream i think is almost the same we can just copy and paste it here say um unlike scream and it takes the id and it does the same it sends a request to slash scream slash id slash un unlike and here we get the data we dispatch a type of unlike scream and yeah it's the same so it's good like this all right let's go to the data reducer let me close the console window actually it's taking up unnecessary space so we need some types so set scream we need set actually screams we need um, like scream we also need unlike scream what else loading data yeah i think this is it for now so types and we need to initial uh, to do an initial state variable which will have screams so this will be the array that holds all screams whether in the home page or in the users page and we have a singular scream which will be when we want to see just the details of one scream and we will have a loading as well which is initially set to false so export default oops default function that takes a state which is equal to the initial state initially and an action so switch same thing as the data reducer so action type and here first let's take care of the loading case so loading data if we're loading we just return oops return uh, we spread the state and we set the loading to true and next case will be uh, the set screams set screams we return we spread the state and here at the uh, we set the screams to what we get so action dot payload remember here if we get the screams here the response that data which is in the payload will have the array of all the screams so we do screams action not actions action dot payload and we set the loading to false so next will be the like scream so case like scream so in this case what oh, oops what we want to do is let me look at the redux here so what we want to do if we go to redux we go to our state the way we uh, determine whether we like a scream or not we look at the uh, likes array and here what we want to do is that if we like a scream then we add that like to this array here for the user uh, and we also add uh, the number of the so the li uh, the like count let's say the scream has a like count of two we add three to it or actually no actually we get the entire scream back once we like a scream so we just need to find that scream in the scream array um where is it why don't we have screams here oh because we didn't actually have that re we don't have that reducer yet what am i saying so when we have the scream array we will add the number to that scream you'll you'll see uh, when we start testing it I should have explained it later actually but whatever so let index now we want to find the scream so let's say state dot screams uh, dot screams dot find index we need to find the index in the array first 
And here it's a higher order function. So the scream, we want to find the scream that has the scream uh, dot scream ID, the same as the one we got back from our um, payload. So, so if you remember when we like a scream, we get a, a scream, we get that scream back. And then now we have to find it and increment its like count. So now we get the, the index of it. And what we do here, we do state dot screams. Um, and now we use the index equals action dot payload. So we replace it in the state. And now here as well, we do return state. And for the unlike scream, actually, actually it's the same. Even when we unlike, we get a scream back with the different um, like count. So we can we can do this. We can chain unlike scream like this. Yeah, scream like this, and this will that means in both cases do the same right here, and. Uh, we need as well to handle like scream and unlike scream from the user uh, reducer as well. So here, um, let's import the type. So like, oops, like scream. And here we do case uh, like, and here they are actually different, like scream. Here, what we want to do, we want to add that like, so we can, oh, this cap key is annoying. <laughs> All right, so we return the state as it is. And here in the likes array, we return an array and we spread state.likes and we add a new one. So here we add a new like and it will have a user handle, just like the other likes with of the state dot credentials because it's this user so we can use the, the handle from there and you will have a scream id of the same scream id of the uh, scream that's returned from the pay in the payload because after all we return the same scream from our server or from our uh, cloud function and here let's say case unlike scream now here is different. We just need to remove it from that array. So here we do return, oops, return, and we spread the state. And here we do likes equals state dot likes dot. We'll use filter to remove one of them. So here what we need, what we need to do, we say like. So we filter out any like, which has a scream ID, which is equal to the action dot payload dot scream ID. All right, so we're done in the reducers. Now we need to go to our scream and actually show this like button. So here we need to actually, did we connect our home? Actually, we need to connect our home. So here, let's connect our home first. So here, import, connect from react redux and we need to get the get screams from redux actions data actions and let's get prop types And here we need to connect the home. So connect map state to props. And here we have only one action, so we can put it here. So get screams. And we wrap this home in parentheses. And here we say const map state to props. Takes the state and returns the following. So we need we need the data. So data is state dot data. Remember this is our reducer, our data reducer puts all the data in this data object. So we need to get this in the home and we need to do our prop types. So home dot prop types equals, um, we have 
our get screens, which is a prop, oops, prop types dot func that is required. And we have data, which is a prop types dot object that is required. All right, so here we don't have a state because we're going to get them from the props. And here when the component mounts, we just need to call um, get screams. It's actually get screams, not get scream here. And yeah, it's correct there. And here we get in the render, we get our scream, screams rather. So um, from data we get uh, or actually we can do like this. So screams and we need loading as well equals this dot props dot data. So here we do, um, so we check, we don't check the screams, we check the loading. And here we do just screams like this and we don't need this parentheses actually. And here we don't need these parentheses as well because it's one element. All right, so this should fix the home and actually our app is crashed so like scream is not exported because we didn't save let's save here as well assignment fu function called instead home line 14 oh home oh yeah i should call the function um data reduce action is not defined and stay is not defined Yes, yeah, so, oh, here it's state and action. Oh, here is action, not actions. Yep. Okay. Okay. Unlike scream is not defined in user reducer because we didn't actually bring it in or I didn't bring it in. Come on. This time it works. Oh boy. <laughs> Data return undefined during initialization. Hmm. Oh, because we don't have a, I forgot about the default actually, this switch default case. So default, we just return state. All right. Okay, this is loading. Let me reload just in case. Seems to load forever, but if we check the state, we actually have the screams. So must be some problem with the logic here. Oh, actually no, if we're not loading, then show the screams. All right, cool. So we're getting the screams, everything works fine for home. Now let's take care of the likes, um, the like button. Now here under, Actually, first let's connect the uh, the component. So here we need connect from React Redux, and we need like and unlike. So like scream and unlike scream from Redux actions data actions. And let's get prop types while we're here. Okay, so here let's do, let's cut this and say connect uh, map state to props and map actions to props. And here we just paste that. And here let's say const map state to props equals takes the state and returns uh, we need the user not data state dot user map map actions to props oops actions to props um, for now, just the two that we have. So 
like scream and unlike scream and we do the uh, prop types so we have like scream is a prop types dot func dot is required let's actually copy this oops Here it's just unlike and we have user is prop types dot object dot is required we have scream which we actually have been passed here this one oops prop types dot object dot is required and we have classes because of with styles all right so here after after the body I want to put um, we it's gonna be we're gonna it depends on our authentication state we're gonna create a different like button so like button and as well whether we've liked this screen or not and after the like button I want to put a span with the number um, so here we'll have like count and it says likes here so the number of likes next to it the word likes and um, so while we're here actually we can put the I'm, I need to bring in my button we can put the um, comment ones as well so here you have a tip that will say comments and actually it doesn't have any it doesn't do anything but here we'll have a chat icon which I need to bring in as well with a color of not primary color primary uh, yep let's bring in this actually it needs uh, actually as well after this it needs to say how many comments there are so here we say comment count and space comments and so we need to bring in my button and chat chat icon so here let's do import my button from util slash my button and what else the icon so here let's say icons here let's say actually redux space here we have import chat icon from at material ui slash icons slash chat and here this uh, we need to create this like button and the way we're gonna do this is that um, we need to actually find out whether the user this user that's logged in has liked this screen or not to um, so I'm gonna use these two icons so if the user has liked the screen you see this filled heart if not you see this empty heart and as well if the user is not logged in you see this empty heart but when you click on it it redirects you to the um, login page because you're not logged in you can't like uh, scream when you're not logged in so here inside the component I'm gonna create a function called liked scream which will tell us what whether we've liked this scream or not and it takes a scream ID actually it doesn't need to take the scream ID because it only works for this scream so we can do like this and it, it checks if first of all we need to check whether we have a likes in our user object because if we don't uh, that means we don't even need to check it's false it's there is no like there if there's no like array and of course if we don't um, yeah okay let's do this dot props I don't know why I was gonna say that and then I was stopped <laughs> likes if we have this array and the and this array as well has this scream so we do this dot props dot user dot likes and we're gonna need to use find the um, the array higher order method or if I'm forgetting <laughs> like so we need to find a like with the like uh, with this scream ID so which equals to this dot props dot scream dot scream ID 
because remember we have this uh, this screen we have it passed down from the home so th this condition find returns undefined if it doesn't find anything so if it doesn't find one it, the condition is false so here if it's if if it's if this is the case then return true else return false all right we save so this will um, this will check if we've liked the screen or not and we'll have now two functions for like methods for liking and unliking and by the way if you're wondering why I'm like saying method instead of function because we're inside of a class technically a function that's belonging to a class is called a method because it operates on that class alone so this dot props dot scream yeah we just use the like scream and we pass it the ID so dot scream ID and let me just copy this because unlike is almost the same but we just changed this to unlike scream you change this as well all right so here let's create this button so inside of the render let's say const like button equals now we're gonna have two ternary operators first thing is we're gonna check if not authenticated actually we need to get authenticated as well from the props so here in the props we have the user because we mapped it from the state so we do user from the user we get uh, we do we get the likes I don't think we get the likes we get authenticated I think we only get authenticated yeah so if not authenticated then what we need to do is we need to um, show a button my button the tip will say uh, like and inside of this button we're gonna have a link let me make sure do we have it yeah we we have link imported so link to slash login so if we're not logged in it's gonna redirect us to login and we're gonna use um, favorite icon or favorite no actually it's the and uh, be the empty one so favorite border um so yeah this is called favorite border and the other one is just favorite so we show favorite border with the color of primary and yeah we close this let's actually import those two icons so we can just copy this and here replace chat with favorite because i want to call the favorite one favorite icon let's paste again and here alt and select these two and say a favorite border all right so now we have two both of the icons we can use them so yeah if we're not logged in we show the empty heart and we flick if we click on it it redirects to the home page i mean to the login page else if we are logged in we need to do another check now so our check would be this dot liked scream oh actually i called it scheme apparently yeah so liked scream so liked scream so now if it returns true that means we have liked this scream if it, it's in our likes array so we need to show a full heart so here we say my my button with the tip and now because we've already liked it the tip should say undo like and we're gonna have an on click for this so on click will trigger the this dot unlike scream and yeah we're not gonna have any classes and here we're gonna have the favorite icon with the color of primary and here let's copy this else so if we haven't liked it we show a button with the tip like and it triggers like scream and the icon here would be favorite border so favorite border all right let's save all of this and let's let's see if this is working so let's go to social ape and there we go we've actually apparently liked all the screams let's look at our state let's put them side by side like this uh, first of all let me log out 
And yeah, we get an empty heart. And if we press on it, it redirects us to the login. Let's log in. So user at email.com. And one, two, three, four, five, six. So here we have three likes. We've liked all the screens. And if I unlike this, huh, there's something weird with these. Oh, okay, so it's removing the wrong ones. It's removing the other ones instead of removing just that. So I think, okay, so in the user, okay, here, yeah. If I unlike a screen, it should filter out the one that is not equal. So it, it should just leave the other ones that are not equal to that one and remove. So filter, yeah, filter removes these ones. Um, keeps these ones, not remove these ones. Okay, sh this should fix it. All right, so if I refresh, if I like, cool, it shows the number. And if you click on like screen and you click on difference, that's what it did. It incremented the like count of that screen in the screams array, and it added this like to our users like array. And it will do the same here. If you look, click here, you, difference shows you just the difference between this stage and the last stage. And if I unlike this, the unlike scream action, yeah, decrements the like count here and removes the like from the uh, likes array. So let's now add a delete button for deleting our screams. All right, so in the scream.js component, uh, let's add the button uh, under the handle right here. So under the typography that's got the handle, uh, actually, it's going to depend on a couple of things. So let's do here delete button and let's create this uh, delete button uh, object. So here, let's say const delete button equals. And this is going to depend on uh, whether we're uh, logged in and whether we are the owner of this screen. We don't want to show a delete button on this screen because it's not users uh, screen. We're going to show the button on this and this and this one. All right, so here we say authenticated. So we need to make sure that we're authenticated and a user handle, which is the handle of this screen, the user handle of this screen equals, actually we need to bring, um, so from here from user, we need to bring in the handle of this user, the, cur the current authenticated user. So it's inside of credentials. So here we do credentials and from credentials, we destructure the uh, handle, which is handle. And so here, let's say ha user handle equals handle. And here, let's say render this, or actually it's a ternary operator. Cause if it's not, we need to say null. So it doesn't render anything. So here we, uh, we need to say, we're gonna create a component for this. Let's call it the delete screen like this. And actually we need to pass it the scream ID of uh, this current scream because the delete um, scream component will not access um, any data from the state. So we pass it a scream ID of uh, this scream ID that we already have of this screen. So let's create this component. So here I'm gonna create delete scream.js Let's do RCE tab. Let's remove this export. And uh, let's bring in some of the imports that we have here. We're gonna need, let's just copy all of these. We're gonna need fragment, I think. With styles, I don't think we're gonna need link or not none of these actually. We're gonna need my button. And we're gonna need some stuff from the from MUI. Uh, actually, because this button is going to open up a dialogue, so let's import, we need button because the, uh, 
the option the dialog actions are gonna have buttons so theory y slash core slash button now we can just copy this uh, paste it three more times here control D uh, we need dialog control D dialog title we also need dialog actions um, we need the icon the delete icon which is called delete outline you can also use the delete which is a full icon but I prefer the the outline one because it doesn't um, it doesn't distract too much from the screen itself you don't want to emphasize a delete button in your design so slash actually slash icons slash uh, delete outline all right here let's bring in connect because we need actually we need to create the um, the action for deleting a screen so let's say import delete screen from redux slash actions slash um, data actions let's go and create this so here at the bottom let's say export const delete screen it's gonna take the screen ID uh, we need dispatch and here we're not gonna do uh, we're not gonna dispatch a loading we're just gonna send a request axios delete to backticks slash scream slash and we concatenate the scream ID that we got passed and here we say dot then uh, we don't need the what's written in the result because there's nothing there's just a message so here we say we dispatch a action with a type which we haven't created yet delete scream and the payload is gonna be the scream ID that we passed to the to the function this one so here let's say dot catch error we just console log it uh, this is it let's actually copy this delete scream import it from types and let's create it in types so it's it's part of the data reducer so here we say export const we paste that delete scream equals a string delete scream let's go to data reducer or oh, data reducer and here we handle the case so let's say case delete scream because the way this is gonna work is that what we can do we can as well delete the scream and then call get screams but I don't think that looks good because if you delete a scream and then you again show that all screams are loading it kind of gives away that you're actually fetching the screams again and plus we actually send an extra request and that's not necessary because the fact that we get a response here that means that the screen is deleted we can just delete it from the local state because we know that it's deleted on the server so uh what am i doing let's go to data data reducer and here we just need to find the index of that screen and remove it from screams so here we say we can use the same index variable from here it's already declared here say index equals state dot screams dot find index and we need to find the index of the scream that has a scream dot scream id that's the same as the action payload this is why we passed that scream id as the action payload and now we say state dot screams dot splice which removes um, which removes elements of a an array starting from one index which is the index and a number of them which is just one we just remove that one and here we do return and spread the state all right so the action is done now we need to create the component let's uh, connect this and actually let's initialize a states const uh, styles rather object and here let's say let's cut this and let's say 
export connect uh, map state to props and we need one action which is the delete screen and here we connect it to with styles uh, we pass the styles and for the second one we pass the component so here let's do const map state to props actually no we don't need anything from the state so we don't need a map state to props so here we can actually just uh, pass null we just need the action uh, let's create our prop types so delete scream dot prop types equals uh, we have the delete scream function so prop types dot func dot is required we have classes prop types dot um, object dot is required required and we have the scream id that we got passed down from from our scream card scream id prop types dot string dot is required all right so let's create our component here here in the render we need our classes const classes equals this dot props here let's do return wrap everything in a fragment so if, here the first thing will be the uh, the button that uh, triggers this dialog to open so my button with a tip um, let's say delete scream uh, actually with space in between and the on click will be this dot handle open and the btn class name do we need the btn class yeah we do we need to style this let's give classes dot delete button um, actually not like this so we close the button like this and inside the button we need to have the delete icon so delete outline with a color of secondary want it to be red because it's a delete button let's create these uh, handler uh, methods so actually we need to set a state as well because this we need an open vari uh, an open boolean which is false by default we need a handle open which takes nothing and does this dot set state open true and we can just copy this and say handle close set state open to false and we need as well uh, one called delete scream which calls the function this the action this dot props dot delete scream and we pass it this dot props dot scream id which was passed down from the screen so where are we um yeah this one right here so this scream id we we pass it here and then we set the open to false so once we delete the screen we close the um the dialog all right so under the button here we actually do our dialog so um let's do dialog and this will take a what we have yeah the open which is going to be this dot state dot open and the on close which is this dot handle close let's give it a property of full width because i want to specify the width of this and give it max width small sm let's close this and here we'll have a dialog title and the dialog title will simply say, are you sure you want to delete? Oops, delete. Oh, I hate the word delete <laughs> the scream. 
And you can as well add like a body that says this action, like in between brackets, like this action is not reversible or guys like feel free to customize what we're doing. Don't like if you want to add something, you can. So experiment all you want. I actually recommend that you learn a lot by doing that. So we have now actions. We need to do our actions, which are two buttons, one that cancels, which closes and one that says delete which actually confirms the delete and calls this delete screen and closes the dialog as well. So the first one will be button uh, on click. This is the cancel. So it's going to trigger handle close and let's give it a color of primary. Yeah, that's it. And inside the button, it will say cancel. And we can just copy this and add a second one that says delete and we'll call delete scream and the color will be secondary we want it to be red and I think this is it yeah this is it we have the thing oh we need to style this button I want it to be so I want the button scream is undefined in data reducer because we didn't save I think oh did we not oh we didn't import it so delete scream like this Where's the app? Delete screen is not defined. It is. So in screen delete. Oh, I didn't import it. My bad. So here at the top, let's say import delete screen from delete screen. All right. Okay, cool. So we get the button and it's right here, but um, let's actually test this. Let's delete this another one. So we get a dialogue that says, are you sure? If we cancel, it closes the dialogue. And if we click again, it opens it. If I click delete, it's gone and it's removed as well uh, instantly from here. Cool. But I want to place this button right here facing the user. So let's do so here, let's add this delete button style. And here we can say left 80% uh, or actually as a string, 80%. And we need to give this a, pos a position of absolute so we can move it around. So absolute, cool. Let's save. Let's look at it. Where is it? Oh, actually, it's right here. Oh, actually, we need to give the card a position of relative so that the absolute on the button could work. So here in the card, uh, yeah, this here. Let's put it at the top. Let's say position, position of relative. Now it should, um, this absolute should refer to the card. Cool, and it does. All right, and let's let's edit it right here actually. So inspect this, and this button would be yeah this button right here. Let's remove the left because I want to align it with. Let's remove the left for now, and then add a top. So I want to align it exactly with the user here. So say top uh, five percent, actually a bit more. Yeah, ten percent, and then. Actually, the left should be maybe like 90%. Let's do 90. Yeah, perfect. It's, it looks much better like this. All right. So here in the delete, say left 90% and then top of 10%. Let's save. Cool. We get the button and let me remove the inspect window and we get the button and it works. If we delete this yet another one, it works. Cool. All right. Uh, yeah. Uh, by the way, guys, I will put a link in the description for the get, uh, get repository for this, for all this code. And let me commit right now and show you how I've been committing these. Let me clear. So get add, get commit. This is what part 24, I think. Yeah, it's part 20. It's part 25. Yeah, part 25. All right, so get log. Let me show you how you can actually 
So yeah, what is this? Get log. Yeah, okay, so we're at part 25 right now. And if you, if, let's say you're stuck at part like 22 or something, you can just do get checkout and take this. So it's like zero A uh, two five, what is that two zero F. And here you have the code that exactly part 22. And I only recommend you to get the code if you're actually completely stuck and you're like, what the hell, I typed the exact same code, but mine doesn't work and his works. And you can just compare against yours uh, so that you see where you actually typed something wrong or something like this. Let me go back to get checkout master. Yeah, so I will put a link in the description for the, for the Git repository for this code. So let's add some functionality to our post screen button right here. So I wanted to open a dialog and then in that dialog we type our screen and we press submit and then it shows it right here. Here let's create a new component, call it post .js, Pascal case of course. And here in the navbar, let's replace this first button. Uh, yeah, this one right here. Uh, let's say post screen, close the tag. Let's remove the add icon, we don't need it anymore. And here let's import the component we just created. So post screen from same level post screen. All right, uh, we're here. So this one is gonna have a dialogue, it's gonna need a bunch of things uh, very similar to the edit details. So we can actually copy all of these and then edit it. So let's bring the Redux stuff down. I prefer to have it at the bottom. And we need Redux, uh, React, Component, Fragment, Prop Types, all this stuff. We need, uh, we're not gonna need Actions. Let me remove Actions. And instead, um, not instead, we need also need uh, the Circular Progress. So Circular Progress. I wanna show a spinner when we are sending our request. So Material UI slash Core slash um, circular progress. All right, we don't need edit user details. Instead, we need post screen from data actions and we need to create that in a moment. And here we say class post screen extends component. Uh, here, let's do export default connect. Uh, we're gonna have a map state to props. And we only need one action. So let's say here inside this object, post screen. And we connect it with with styles. And we pass it styles. And the second parameter is our component, post screen. Here, let's say const styles. Let's leave it empty for now. Let's do our prop types. So post screen dot uh, prop types. Here we have post screen. Prop types dot func dot is required. And we're going to need the UI. So let's say UI prop types dot object dot is required. Let's do our map state to props const map state the props equals takes in the state and returns the following so we just need the ui so ui is state dot ui okay before we carry on let's actually create the action so let's go to uh, data actions and here i'm going to put it under the get screen let's put a comment say post a screen and here let's say co export const post screen it takes in new screen it needs dispatch as well so we go through dispatch and here i want as well uh, so we got that loading spinner we want to show some loading so let's dispatch a um, an action with the type loading ui after that let's do our axios call so axios dot uh, post to slash screen and we pass the new screen as the data 
So dot then when you get a response, um, here we're gonna dispatch a new one, a new type. So this will be type. We're gonna call this post screen, and the payload will be uh, the response. So res dot data, which is gonna be one screen, and here. Uh, Actually, let's do the dot catch first, so it would make sense. Because we could get some validation errors, if you remember. We could have an empty body and it will say, like, body must not be empty. So here, if we get an error, we need to dispatch uh, set errors. So type set errors. And the payload is, um, so error dot response dot uh, data, yeah. And here, actually, let's dispatch a clear errors just in case there is some errors. So type is clear errors. Uh, let me make sure everything is fine. So yeah, post screen rest dot data. We dispatch clear errors. Okay, yeah, everything is fine here. And let me make sure we brought everything. So we need post screen, which which actually I think doesn't exist yet in the types. So it's set errors and clear errors. And yeah, loading UI. Do we have loading UI? We don't. Loading UI. Let's go to types and create the ones that we, we don't have yet. So for data, we need to say export const post screen equals post screen. And we need loading UI, it's created, set errors, we need clear errors. So let's say export const clear errors equals clear errors. All right, so now we need to go to the data reducer and change the state accordingly. So here, under here we say case post screen. So Okay, let's bring in the type as well, actually. So post screen. So here, if we if we get a screen, we need to add it to our um, to our screens array. So here we say return the state as it was, and in screens we're gonna we're gonna actually put it at the top. So because it's the newest one. So here we do action dot payload and then we spread the rest of state dot screams all right so we're done here let's save everything and let's go to our post screen and create it so inside of this component we're gonna have a state uh, we have a dialog so we need the open so initially it's set to false we need a body for our screen which is empty and potential errors that we can get, which is an empty object initially. So here we need handle open and handle close. Um, doesn't take anything. I just this dot set state to open to true. Let's copy this and do the same for close. Well, not the same, but we just change the value of open to false. All right, here, well, let's do our render. Render. Let's get our errors in case there's any from the state. Oops, this dot state. And let's get our classes. And we also need the loading from UI. Actually, we need just the loading. So what we can do here, we can do in map state props. You can say loading. Oops, not like this. Loading, and it will be, yeah. We need loading, and here we we'll say loading as well, and it will be the state .ui loading. So we get just that. Actually, no, never mind. I'm wrong because errors is in, is stored in there, and we we will need errors as well. Oops. Okay, so from UI here, we need loading. And here we get these from this dot props. And we return. We're gonna have a fragment that's gonna surround everything. And first is gonna be the button that triggers this. So 
my button and it's going to have a on click of this dot handle open and the tip oops the tip will say uh, post a scream with a exclamation mark because it's screaming of course and here we'll have a an add icon with a color of primary or will it be a primary I don't think it's going to be a primary because it's going to be blue. So we just say add icon and let's bring the icon. So here let's do import add icon from material UI slash icons slash add. Here we're going to have our dialogue. So dialogue. And here we need a uh, what do we need? An open. This dot state dot open. We need an on close, which is this dot handle close. Let's give it full width and a max width of SM. All right. Here, let's tab and let's say, uh, what do we need? We need a title first. So actually i'm gonna put a button first i want to put like a, a close button on the top right so let's say my button and this will have a tip that says close it's just i just wanted to show you like you can do this as well i can do a, a cancel button but i just want to show you this style as well let's have some variety this dot um yeah this close button as well has handle close when you click it so it closes the model oops close the dialogue and let's give it a class name because we'll need to style this and what do we call this classes dot close button and inside of here um i think there's a close icon let me check quickly so movie docs actually i need the material design uh, yep, close. So it's going to be just close. So let's copy this and select add and control D and do close. So close icon. So here let's say close icon without any color. Let's leave it black. And here under the button, we need our title. So dialogue title. Uh, this will say post a new screen. And under here, we need our dialogue content. So dialogue content. And here we're gonna have a, uh, a form. And let's say on submit equals this dot handle submit, which we haven't created yet, but we will in a moment. Here we'll have a, oops, what is this? Here we'll have a text field. Uh, with a name of body, a type of text, a label of what do we say? Scream. Because why not? Uh, we're gonna give it multi line because this is gonna be a text area. Let's give it three rows. So rows three. Give it a placeholder. Let's say, I don't know, scream, scream at your fellow friends or apes, since this is social ape. <laughs> and of course, we need an error in case there's any errors. And here, the error is the, the errors.body. If you remember, we have that in our validation. So actually, inside the expression, we say, if it's true, then then true else false all right so here helper text which will show the error message text like this and this will say we will have errors.body of course if it's undefined we're not going to have any text and here let's give it a class name of uh, classes dot text field the global text field um, styling that we have classes uh, actually, to use the global styles, we need to to 
taken our our theme so theme and return this and then spread the theme here so that we can use the global styles what's wrong oh because this is not closed here okay uh, I think this is it actually we need no the on change on change and we'll say this dot handle change uh, say full width yep that's it that's one beefy text field <laughs> here we'll put a submit button so button and I'm just gonna have a type of submit a variant of contained because that's the style we went with we'll continue with that style a color of none other than primary let's give it a class name of classes dot submit button a disabled We're gonna do the same thing like the sign up form or and the login as well disabled on loading uh, on loading and inside the button, we're going to have the circular progress. So let's say circular progress. Let's give it a size of 30. I think the size doesn't matter, actually. As long as you, it's inside something, it's, gonna be, it's not going to be bigger than it. But you can experiment and find out. Uh, let's give this a progress spinner class because we need to make this uh, we need to give it the position of absolute and give this the position of relative so that this would be centered within the button. Okay, so, oh yeah, the button is to say, where are we? So here, inside the button, we need to say submit. And yep, I think this is it. Oh, actually, what am I saying? The circular progress should only appear if we're loading. So. Here we do an expression. I cut it actually, and we say loading and and, not this and and, and do parentheses and put the circular loading inside of it. Okay, so here, in the styles, let's style the um, the submit button. Wait, I give it submit button. Yeah, submit. Yep, yeah, submit button. So here, let's give this a position of relative and the progress spinner, give this a position of absolute and oh, the close button as well. We need to give the close button a position of, so position of absolute I'm like absolute <laughs> left is give it 90% was 90 same thing like the delete uh, button guys and the top let's give it 10% and I think yeah this is it let's see what this looks like let's make sure we don't have any errors and we do of course oh we already had clear errors so let me remove that. Yeah, I don't know what that post screen was. I stopped and ran again and it didn't happen. Okay, so source selector is not a function. Mm. Okay, I added a pair of parentheses here by mistake. Okay, so if we click on post screen, it opens up this uh, modal, cool, this dialog, and if I submit, Okay, it reloads the whole thing. Oh, of course, I forgot to <laughs> write the handle submit function and the on change as well for that matter. So handle change will take the event. And here we'll say this dot set state. Um, so we have event dot target dot name and we set it to event.target.value and for the handle submit oops, submit takes in the event and we do event.prevent default 
And here we use the post screen action. So this dot props dot post screen. And we pass it this object with the body this dot state dot body. All right, let's save. Let's check it out. All right, this is our like dialog. This is the close button. If we click it, it closes it. If we post a screen, if we actually leave it empty, we send. We don't get the errors. And uh, let me check state raw. We do have an error. Oh, okay. I need to do um, use component will receive props and assign the error. So component, where is it? Will receive props next props and here let's check for the error so if next props dot um, ui dot errors we do uh, this dot set state errors is next props dot ui dot errors all right let's check again so if we try to send empty Cool, we get an error. And if we say hello and we click submit, okay, it submits it and we see it, which is cool, but it doesn't close the um, this. Uh, what we can do here, but we still have the errors. What we need to do is that we need to check if there is no errors and the loading has stopped. We actually, from the component received props, close the handle, uh, I mean, close the, um, the dialog so we can say here if not next props dot ui dot errors because we clear the errors on success if you remember from the action and next props dot um, or we could just say and not oops and not not next props dot ui dot loading so if this is the case, this dot set state, actually let's as well um, empty the body because otherwise if we open the dialogue again, the body will have some text. So we put the body to um, an empty string and we do this dot handle close. Um, yeah, which will as well, uh, the handle close as well clear. Actually the handle close should clear the error. So here we say we set open to false and we set the errors to an empty object because if we don't we're still gonna see the errors okay so here we get errors and if we close it yeah we we don't get the errors anymore because we clear the errors once we close it and if we submit now a new one oh i don't know why i saw that error for a second oh because there was already errors in the state maybe i'm not clearing them properly Okay, so we are submitting screens, cool. So it works and it instantly shows them here. Let's delete them. Yeah, so yeah, we're done. A couple of things I wanna edit about this uh, model, this dialog quickly. Uh, this button, I wanna align it exactly. Okay, let's put them side by side. I wanna align it exactly in front of the title. So let's go here. Let me remove the left so we can align it. Let me adjust this. Okay, so 6% seems decent and 90 or maybe like a bit more. Yeah, 90. Yeah, 91. I also want some uh, margin between the submit button and, and I want to put the submit button on the right side as well. So six and 91, let's edit these values. So here, yeah, the left is 91 and the top is six. And the button, I wanna give it a property of float right and some margin top. I think 10 should be fine. Let's save, let's look at our app. Oh, yep, it reloads. Okay, reload again. All right, there we go. Cool, it looks much better now. All right, I like the button on this side. Uh, one problem with this though, that I didn't fix last video is that if I click submit and there's some errors in the state and I close, these errors are still in the state. So if I click here, I don't see them because we only receive them using component, we receive props. But if I would type something and I would submit, we will quickly see the error. 
and then it submits. That's not um, that's not very cool, now is it? <laughs> Let's fix that. Uh, so in the data actions, I'm gonna create a a function. Let's call it uh, export const. Let's call it clear errors, which does just that. It doesn't take anything. We go through dispatch, and it dispatches the action with type clear errors. That's it. It just clears the errors essentially. And yeah, we have that type. So here, when we get uh, when we close the the uh, when we close the dialog, we want to clear the errors as well, just in case. So we add clear errors here when we close the dialog. So let's bring it in as well. So clear errors. Let's copy it. Let's add it here in our map actions to props, and let's add it as a prop type. And it's the same as this, so we can copy this. Put a colon and paste this, and let's oh prop types not prop types. Let's save. Oh shit! I didn't mean to to open that. All right, failed to compile. Clear errors is not exported. Oh, because I didn't save all files. Let's save all files. There we go. Okay, so we open post the screen. We close it. Whoa! What is this? Maximum update depth exceeded. There must be like an infinite loop or something. Um, so handle close. So set state, handle close, and then clear errors. Huh. Clear errors. Um. No UI reducer. So clear errors set loading false, errors null. Oh, I see. There's an infinite loop here because whenever we call handle close, it calls clear errors, which sets the errors to null and uh, loading to false, which triggers this again, which triggers handle close. So there's like an infinite loop. So we can solve it by here instead of calling handle close, we can manually close without calling this function so that it doesn't loop. So we can just give it this. Actually, we could just copy this stuff over here. So yeah, we can close it without calling handle close, which shouldn't have an infinite loop. All right, so if we open here and we close, cool, it doesn't bug out. And if we type something and we get an error, Oh, no, 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 we don't get an error by tapping something. All right, so if you get an error like this and we close it, now we shouldn't get an error once we submit. Cool, and we don't. Nice. The errors are being cleared once we close the dialog. All right. Let's actually start working on the um, uh, on the button that let us expand our screams and see all the details of one scream. All right. Let me close this dev tools. Let's go here, let's create a file called scream dialog. Actually, let's start by creating the action because we're gonna need uh, the action that gets only one scream with all the details. So here, let's um, in data actions, let's export const get scream without S, so singular, and we pass it the scream ID need dispatch as well and here for loading i'm gonna use the ui loading and not the loading that's inside of screams or inside of the screen um yeah the data reducer so here we dispatch an action with the type uh loading ui and here we do axios dot get uh, template string slash scream slash we pass it that scream id and here we do dot then we get a result and we need to dispatch a new type uh oops i meant to enter the type set scream without an s and it imports it automatically and the payload is the res dot data and here after we need to stop loading because it doesn't 
nothing changes the uh, loading from the UI to uh, false if we don't do it manually. So let's say dispatch type stop loading uh, UI, which we haven't created yet. And here if we have any error, we, uh, what do we do? We just console log it, I guess. We will never have an error unless our database is corrupt or something. So let's go to UI reducer and handle the stop loading UI. So case stop loading, oops, loading UI. Here we just uh, return uh, the state as it is and we set loading to false. So the opposite of loading UI basically. Let's copy this. Let's go up here, let's import it. Let's do the same in data actions. And uh, let's go to our types and we have set screen, we only need to create the, um, the stop loading UI. So export const, paste and paste again. All right, let's go to our, to our screen card and here let's import our screen dialog import scream uh, scream dialog from the same directory and let's put it at the bottom right here at the end of the card content so scream dialog we're gonna pass it the scream ID so that it uses it to fetch us the scream so that it knows which screen to get. And we're gonna pass it the uh, user handle, which we will need way later. User handle. All right, we're done here. Let's close this. Let's, let's close all of these. We don't need to use them anymore. Let's save this and close it. Make sure we don't have any errors. We don't, cool. Here we're gonna need a bunch of things similar to, um, where is it, to post screen. So let's take these, paste them here. Uh, we're gonna need day.js as well to show when a screen was posted. So import day.js from day.js. Uh, we're gonna need link to have a link to the user that posted this screen. So no, react user, what? <laughs> react router dom. And here we're gonna need a bunch of um, material UI stuff, which is uh, let's let's copy from the the post screen this stuff, the dialog stuff. Uh, we need let's copy from here to here. We don't need the add icon, so instead we can just put a comment a comment saying icons. And here we need uh, the grid because I'm going to split the card into uh, two sides. One side has the picture, one side has the details from material UI slash core slash grid. And we're going to need typography, of course. Slash typography. And we're going to need Redux stuff. So connect and we're going to need get screen. Let's create an empty styles array uh, object for now, let's say class scream dialog extends component and here let's do the prop types so scream dialog the uh, prop types uh, we're gonna have the get scream function so prop uh, types dot func dot is required we're gonna have the scream ID from uh, passed down. So prop types uh, dot string. 
dot is required. Uh, we're gonna have the user handle that we got passed down as well. Prop types dot string dot is required. And uh, from the state, we're gonna get uh, the screen. The object is required. And uh, we can just copy this. Same thing for the UI, we need the UI for loading. And here we can do our map state to props. We'll take the state and return the following. Uh, what do we need? We need the screen, which will be in state dot uh, data dot screen, and we need the UI, which is in state dot UI. All right, we, we're gonna say map uh, action const map actions to props. For now, it's just gonna have get screams get screen. Um, I need to export default, connect, uh, map state to props, map actions to props, and here we pass with styles, styles, and the second will be scream dialogue. Alright, so in our component, so this is a dialogue, so we need a, in our state, we need an open boolean is false by default. We need a handle open which sets the state open is uh, true. Let's copy it, paste it, change this with close and open with false. All right. Actually uh, we need to call uh, here, when we open the screen, we need to call the uh, the get screams, because when we call when we open the screen, we need to uh, when we open the dialog, we need to send a request to our server to get our screen. So we call uh, the get screen and we pass it the ID this dot props dot scream ID that we got passed down from the scream card. And here inside, oh, we need to create the render render. And inside of here, let's get, so let's do const, let's get classes, and let's get the screen. And this will be, because um, get screen is gonna get us the screen and set it in our um, props as the screen, because we get it from the state here. So here, from screen, we're gonna get everything. So screen, uh, screen ID, we need the body, we need the created at, we need the like count, we need the comment count, even though we're not gonna use all of them in this video, but let's get all of them anyway. We need the user image, we need, uh, what else? User handle. And after scream, actually, why did I do scream twice? Like this, and here. Like this, after scream, we need to get the loading from UI, so UI, and we destructure loading from it. And all of this equals this dot props. Let's save so it formats. And here, after we get all this stuff, we need to return a fragment. Oh, why is it not closing? Come on fragment oh what am I doing this is inside the render so inside the fragment first thing of course is the button that opens this dialog so my button and the on click will be this dot um, handle open and the tip will say expand scream and we'll have we'll have to style it so let's do tip class name let's say classes dot expand button and yeah inside the button we will have an icon 
uh, this will be the unfold more and with a color of primary actually I forgot to import this so here let's copy this and select this alt select this and say unfold more so yeah we have the icon after we put our dialogue so dialogue dialogue close it we can actually get the stuff from post screen it's exactly the same actually uh, even the um, the close button will be the same I think let's copy all of this so let's go back here let's do this yeah this dot state dot open handle close for with max width and the button close has an on click handle close and close button as the class cool all right so here after the button right here we put our uh, content so I say dialogue content and uh, let's give this a class name of classes dot dialogue content and here because uh, we need to check if we're loading or not let's say dialogue uh, markup and here um, after all this stuff let's say const dialogue markup equals if loading then we're gonna use have we brought in the yeah the circular progress so here let's say circular progress and this needs to be massive so size let's give 200 and yeah this is it and else if we're not loading then we need to show we need a grid container spacing let's give a spacing of 16 why didn't it close it grid and here we need the items so grid item this is the side for the image so I'm gonna give it a width of 5 so SM5 and here we'll put an image source will be user image and the alt let's say profile and here let's say let's give it a class name because we need to style this image um, profile image and let's copy this actually it would have been faster if I typed it but whatever actually maybe not and here we will first thing we will need to show is the handle of whoever typed this I mean whoever posted the screen so typography and then here we'll have a component link because this needs to link to the users page color primary and here we give a variant similar to the screen card actually exactly the same variant of h5 and this will go to let's do back ticks slash users slash dollar sign curly braces user handle and here let's close the typography actually no let's close it like this because we need to write stuff inside of it and here we say at and then we concatenate the user handle I misspelled the user handle here like this cool after the typography uh, we need to put a horizontal ruler but I need to um, to style this so let's call this um, uh, let's call this I don't know invisible separator and let's go up here in our styles I think we might we might need the global styles so let's do let's take theme and then return and then spread theme here and this invisible separator will have a border of none because uh, a horizontal rulers by default have some border I don't want to I don't want it to be visible and let's give it a margin of four so it creates some space between um, our elements so let's close this tag and here we get our created at we put when this um, when this was when this um, screen was posted so here the variant will be body 
two, and let's give this a color, same like the in the screen card, a color of text secondary, so it's kind of gray. Don't know why these tags are not closing again. So, oops, inside of typography here, let's do an expression, day.js, and we pass it the created at, and we do dot format, and I've written this in front of myself in a piece of paper. Let me check it. So it's h uh, colon mm dash a, I mean space a uh, comma uh, capital M -M 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 double d quadruple y. So this is the format of the date. And here we'll have another hr with a class name of classes dot invisible separator again and here we'll put the body so say typography and here let's have a, a variant of uh, body one uh, that's it and here we just put body all right uh, this is it for now let's save Let's check if we have any errors. We don't. Hmm. Cool. All right. So we get this expand button, and if we click it, we get nothing. Hmm. Let's look at our state. Re receive true for non boolean attribute container. That's interesting. And here in our state, let's look at the data. We're not getting screen for some reason. Hmm, props dot get scream. Oh, because in the data reducer, I forgot to handle the type or the, uh, yeah, the type gets set scream. So here let's say case set scream, oops, scream like this. And here we need to, um, oh my God, no. <laughs> really? Come on. Okay, return. <laughs> Sorry about my caps, guys. So state, and here we set the scream, the singular scream to simply action.payload. Uh, let's save and this time let's check we expand cool we get our screen we get all the details of our screen and if we look here in our state in our data in the singular screen we get this screen so let me change the view to the tree so yeah we get that screen and then if we go to this screen it will uh, no here it will change to that screen all right, so let's style the image because right now it's massive. Uh, in the dialog, dialog here in the styles. Let me close the uh, terminal. And here, the uh, profile image. Let's give it a max width of 200 or 200, not 300. And let's give it a height same 200 I want it to be circular so let's give it a border radius of 50% and let's give it object fit of cover in case the ratio doesn't match the one by one so that it doesn't stretch it and here as well uh, I want to style the content because Right now, all the all this stuff is kind of going to the edges as well. It's too close to the edges. I want to have some padding so to push it a bit in. So let's do dialog content. And here, we're just going to give it padding of 20. Let's save. Let's go here. Let's, let's make this button go to the right. And... Now this is container. 
All right, so our grid is behaving properly. Now this button needs to take, uh, to go to the right. So here we say close button. And uh, what do we, position um, absolute. And here we say left 90%. Cool, but for some reason the padding is not working. So where is the padding? Dialog content. So class name equals class name that dialog content actually with lowercase d. All right, cool. So we're getting our details inside of the screen, and uh, yeah, it looks it looks okay for now. So here. I uh, want to fix some styling before we do anything. I want to bring this button to the right so it's more visible. So let's go to Scream, Scream Dialog. And we've actually given it a class, I believe. Where is it? Yeah, Expand button. Let's co copy this. We've given it a class, but we didn't style it. So here, let's do Expand button. And here, let's do Position Absolute. And let's give it a left of 90%. Let's see what it looks like now. We refresh. Cool, it's on the right now. All right, uh, I wanna move this button as well, move it a bit down so it faces the user. And I wanna change the styling. Uh, by the way, uh, you can go to Redux and if you have something that's like going too fast, for example, the loading stage here, the loading UI, we can go back one level and just pause there and you can see your animation or whatever you have and you can style it. So this, I wanna bring it to the middle and I want it to be a bit less thick than, than what it is right now. So let's go to our code and here, uh, where is it? So I'm gonna put it in a div, well, we kinda of have to. So let's do div and let's paste it in and we're gonna change the thickness. This can take a value for thickness. Uh, I'm gonna give it two. And here the div will have a class name and this will be classes dot, let's call it spinner div. And here, let's do spinner div. Let's give it a text align of center. So it aligns to the center. Let's give it uh, some margin on the top and bottom. So margin top 50 and margin uh, bottom 50. Let's see what it looks like uh, here. All right, we expand. Let's go back. Yeah, cool. It's in the middle and it's less thick. It looks much better and the button is a bit to the left now. Uh, let's actually remove this. It's just, yeah. All right, so it looks much better now. All right, so now what we wanna work on is the action button. So this like uh, button here and the comment button, which does nothing, but it's just an icon and the number of comments and likes here as well. The same as in the screen. So what I thought about is that since they're the same, we can go to the screen and this like button, we can make it into its own component because we will need it in the screen dialogue as well. And one of the good, uh, the things that you will do, one of the best practices is to try and keep your components as small as possible. And I noticed the screen dialogue will be really massive if we don't uh, divide it into further uh, components. So here in components, let's create a like button, button.js. And here we can actually um, cut this. Uh, oops, bring it in. Let's do RCE tab. Here in the render, we can say return like button. And before that, we can say const like button. And we need to get authenticated from the state. And so we need the user. We need a couple of things actually here. So we need uh, my button because we're using it from the same level. Oh, actually it's in the util. Go back one level slash util slash my button. We need link. So import 
link from React Router DOM. Uh, we need prop types, of course. Uh, we need the icons that we have here. So icons, you can say import. We can actually just cut to these from here because we don't need them. So paste them here. We need uh, connect from React Redux. And we need to bring the, uh, the like and unlike actions and we don't need them. Oh, oops. We don't need them here anymore. So we can cut this line. Uh, we can go down here. We can remove them from the prop types. And we can remove this map actions to props for now. And uh, yeah, let's save. Let's go here. And let's paste it here. And here we're going to have prop types. So like button dot prop types. Uh, we we need to access the user so user uh, let's say prop types dot object dot is required we need the scream ID actually we we're gonna pass it down so let's say prop types dot string dot is required we need the two functions so like scream prop types dot func dot is required we can copy this line and just add un here and here we export default let's cut this connect map state to props map actions to props and connect it with this we don't need styles because we have no styles here we can say const map state to props equals takes the state and returns we need the user so state dot user uh, we need to create the map oops map actions to props so we'll have the like scream and the unlike unlike scream like this uh, so here the same actually we need to cut these functions as well so liked scream and unlike scream and here for the here instead of like button here we do the component like button and we pass it a scream ID of scream ID because we've uh, destructured it from the screen uh, right here. And here we need to import it. Port like uh, button from same level like button. And here in like button inside the component, we need to paste those functions. And here, uh, this the props that user likes everything. And here we check if the like dot scream equals this dot props dot scream ID because we don't have a scream we have a scream ID and actually we need that in the pro oh we have that in the prop types already this is a like button with a lowercase l uh, here we need to say this dot props dot scream ID and here the same thing and here we need to get authenticated so const authenticated from this dot props dot user and authenticated and yeah I think this is it for this uh, component and we save there and we save here as well let's check if we have any errors we don't let's check our app see if the button is working properly and it is it's working the same if we refresh to make sure that yep it's working the same way if we log out we click on the like button oh it doesn't redirect let's check the console oh this is not working uh 
everything looks okay. Hmm, let me check again. Oh, it's actually working. Hmm. Oh, I see. Because if we click on the sides, it doesn't work because it's just as big as the icon itself. So what we can do is we can, we can surround the whole button with the link. So let's put this outside. Let's put the whole button inside of the link. Yeah, and this way it works. Even if we click on the sides, the whole thing is the link now. All right. So let's do the same thing inside of here. Let's show these two things here. So now that we have it in its own component, we can just use it like that in the screen dialog. So let's go to screen dialog under the body. So right here, we can say like button and pass it a scream ID of scream ID. I think we have it. Yeah, we have, we got it from the scream and under that we need to say we need to have a span and you will have like count oops, count just like in the screen card and here we say likes and we will have as well the uh, we can copy this actually from screen this uh, comments button and uh, the comments icon and the uh, comments text so let's save actually we need to import it as well so here let's say import like button from the same level like button let's save see if we have any errors we do chat icon is not defined actually we don't need this dialogue to, uh, title and here let's bring that icon we can copy all of this and here say chat uh, chat icon and here say just chat, let's pay, uh, save. We have no errors, cool. All right, let's, uh, oh, we get the same button, actually, but we have to log in because we logged out. All right, so here, if I expand, cool. We see the buttons here and if we click, it turns into full. Oh, but the, uh, the like count doesn't update here. Hmm. Huh. Let's check our state, data, screen. Do we have any error? The prop user is marked required in auth route, but the value is undefined. Really? Oh, okay. This, because when we log out, it's okay, we'll fix this later. All right. So the like count is not changing, I think, because the uh, the scream is not updating. Yeah, so the scream like count is not updating. We need to update it. So let's go to data reducer. And right here, when we like or unlike the scream, we need to do a check. So if state dot scream singular dot scream ID. So we need to check when we like a screen, we need to check that screen that's stored in the singular screen object. If they have the same ID, that means we liked the screen that we have open. So we need to update the screen, the singular screen with this data that we get back from the like or unlike route, which is the, uh, the screen with the like count updated. So we do, if it equals action dot payload, dot scream id then we just do state dot scream equals action dot payload it should fix it we open up here and let's open the state as well to check we like cool and we get this updated and the like scream let's look at the difference yeah it uh, uh no here yeah, it incremented the count, and if we unlike, it decrements it, so it updates the data. So this is the current state of our screen dialog. It has only the details of the screen. I want to add a section where we display the comments that are submitted to each screen in this dialog. So let's do that. 
I'm actually going to create a couple of folders here to organize our components more, otherwise it's going to be less uh, navigatable. So let's create a folder called Scream and another one called Layout and another one called Profile. So in the layout, we're going to put the navbar and then we're going to put the profile and edit details in the profile folder and the rest of them will go to the Scream. All right, so VS Code should fix the um, the relative imports and change the directories. Uh, actually, here in Navbar, the post screen would come from. We go back one level, and we go into screen slash post screen, and the rest should be fine. In edit details, it's changed it automatically, and it's opening it up. It opening them up because it's changing them right now, and we need to save all files and close this let's go to app and here uh, where we get the navbar we're gonna get it from slash component slash layout slash navbar and in the home as well here where we get the screen we get it from slash screen slash screen and from profile we get it from slash profile slash profile let's save cool no more errors uh let's go to Actually, let's get rid of this warning. So let's go to home and remove Axios. We don't need it there anymore. Let's save. Cool, we have no warnings and our app works the same way it did earlier. All right, so let's add the comments. Let's go to the screen dialog. Here, we're gonna import a component that we haven't created yet. Let's do import comments from, uh, see, this would be in the same directory, so comments like this and let's go at the bottom so here when we are actually not loading and we are rendering stuff let's go here under this grid right here so here let's do comments and we need to pass it our comments so let's pass a prop comments with the value comments and this comment referred to refers to the Actually, we haven't extracted it yet. We haven't um, destructed it, so let's do that. So it's gonna be this comment from inside the screen. Because if you um, if you remember from the API, if we go to Redux, we go to the state, if we look at data, screen, we have an array of comments. And if we don't have any comments, it will be an empty array. So here we do our comments, and let's save this. Let's go here in screen. Oh, there's a problem. Cannot resolve comments because we haven't created it yet. In Scream, let's create comments.js. Actually, before the comment section, I want to add a, a separator. So here, let's do HR. Class name is classes. And unlike the one we have already, this is going to be the visible separator. Separator. And I want to move the code, uh, the styling for the invisible separator from here to the global theme so let's go to util theme and let's paste it at the bottom because we're gonna need it in comments as well and here let's do visible separator and this one is gonna have a width of 100 percent in as a string actually because this is javascript and it's gonna have a border bottom of uh, one pixel solid let's give it a, a gray so i'm gonna do rgba zero 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 so it's, so far it's just black and we give it the opacity of 10 percent or 0 0.1 it's gonna be a light gray so let's give it a margin bottom of 20 pixels all right so this is visible let me make sure i didn't misspell anything i didn't cool all right, let's go to comments and here we're going to bring in um, these three. So react, component, fragment with styles and prop types. Here we're going to need some MUI stuff. I know already we're going to need the grid. So import grid from material, material UI slash core slash grid and import typography from the same material was slash core slash typography all right let's initialize a, st a styles 
I've, actually we need the global theme so let's take the theme and return this object let's spread the theme for now and here let's do our class comments extends extends component and here let's do our prop types so comments dot prop prop types here we're only gonna have the comments that are passed down so this would be a prop types dot array dot is required and here let's do export default with styles styles and comments all right here in the component we're gonna have the render render and here let's extract the comments to so const comments from the props this dot props and um, yeah we need to return something I saved there but it doesn't like it actually we need the classes as well so classes and here let's do return here we're gonna have a grid container because this is the container and inside of this we're gonna have what are we gonna have we're gonna loop through the comments so let's do comments dot map and for each comment we're gonna actually uh, let's do curly braces because so we need to destructure the stuff from inside comments and if you remember uh, comments let me check the singular comment actually we don't have one is there a problem yeah, I need to save here. Anyway, uh, I just want to show you in the state that um, the com the comments will have a uh, four four keys. So body. I just want to remind you. You probably know this. Body created at and um, user image and the user handle. So we get these from comment. So equals comment. And here we do return so inside we are inside the grid the container grid so here let's do a fragment and since this is a we're looping through something because and when we're in react we need to give it a key and let's use the created at as, as a key because it almost never will be not unique okay so here let's say grid and this will be an item Let's give it a width of 12 and inside of here we're gonna actually nest another grid so let's say grid container because inside of each comment we're gonna have a left uh, a grid item where there's a picture the image and on the right there's the details of the comment so here this is uh, here we have the picture so grid item sm equals we're gonna have give it a width of two and inside of it we're gonna have the image with the source user image the alternative let's say comment and we're gonna have uh, we're gonna give it a class because otherwise we need to start it otherwise it's gonna be massive so let's give this classes dot comment image and after this we're gonna have a grid item uh, with sm nine we don't actually have to specify this because the uh, material ui can automatically give it the width nine but it just looks um, more readable in my opinion so div let's give this a class name of classes or dot comment data i'm gonna style this div later and inside of this div, we're, the first thing is gonna have we're gonna have the uh, the handle of the user as a link. So typography uh, variant. Let's give it a head of five, similar to the one in the screen card. So component will be link. Did we import link? We didn't. Um, let's import link. Import link. from react router DOM 
And here the component is link. The two will be so backtick slash users slash dollar sign curly braces user um, yeah user handle. All right, uh, we're gonna give it a color of primary. And here, let's close this. No, actually, here we close it. And inside of the typography, we're gonna have the handle. So let's say at or without an at, actually, let's just put the user handle. And here, oh, actually, I need to close this. Don't know what this curly brace I added here for. Here we need to show the uh, when the when the comment was submitted. So typography with a variant of body two with a color of text secondary. And inside of here we're gonna format the date. Actually, let's import DayJS. For day.js from day.js and inside this expression we're gonna say day.js and pass it the created at dot format and here let's format it um, so I have this in front of me h colon mm space a col um, comma uh, quadruple capital M d d and quadruple y all right, so under here, we're gonna have uh, a, a separator. So HR with the class name classes dot invisible visible separator. Oops. Here we're gonna have the body. So let's say typography with a variant of body one. And inside of here, we'll put body. And yeah, and I think this is it. But actually, let's put a ruler between them. So let's do here, let's say HR, the class name of classes dot visible separator. Actually, visible, not invisible. All right, let's save. Let's save everything. Let's see what this looks like. So we open up here. Oh yeah, I forgot to style the image. So let's go here. So in the styles, let's add the, what was it? Um, comment image. Here, let's give it a max width of 100 or 100%. And here, let's give it a height of 100 an object fit in case the ratios are not actually one by one of cover and let's give it a border radius of 50% so it's rounded 50% and here we need to style this div as well because I want to give it some uh, margin uh, between it and the image so let's say comment data margin left margin left of let's say 20 pixels 20 let's save let's look at our div so here cool if we look at here we put the rule actually um we need to not put a ruler after the last comment so what we can do um we need to access the index so yeah the map gives us actually access to a second parameter of index and gives us where in which index we are so here let's take this ruler and let's put a condition here and let's say so you always want the ruler unless we're in the last index so let's say index does not equal if index does not equal the last index so comments dot length minus one so if it doesn't equal the last index, then give us the ruler. So render the ruler. Otherwise, don't render it. So on the last one, it doesn't render it. So yeah, now it doesn't render a ruler under the last comment. Cool. All right, so we get our comments. 
So now that we're showing comments, let's actually show a comment input or comment form right here that allows us to submit comments. Let's go to Scream Dialog and I'm going to create a component for this. Actually, it's not going to be here. It's going to be under the separator. So let's say comment uh, form and we're going to pass it the Scream ID because we need this when we're sending um, when we're sending a request to that endpoint. Um, by the way, I'm not just creating a component just for the sake of it. It's better to divide your application into uh, smaller components because if I were to put the code here and all the functionality and bring the functions from uh, the Redux actions, it's going to blow to this one component. So it's good to separate your components. Plus it helps when debugging. You, if a problem happens, you will know exactly where it came from. So let's import this. So let's go up here. Let's say import. <coughs> comment form from same directory comment form all right let's create this in the scream directory let's say comment form .js. and here before we write anything let's actually create the um, the action the redux action let's go to redux actions let's actually create a type for this first so here let's say export const submit comment which equals actually it's not a string here what am I doing <laughs> here's submit if I can type comment all right all right submit comment yeah I didn't misspell anything here in data actions let's bring it in submit comment Let's go under the unlike. Here, let's say uh, submit a comment. Here, let's do export const submit comment equals. And due to the nature of the endpoint, we need the scream ID. So let's take the scream ID and let's take the comment data. And we need dispatch. So let's return dispatch and then do the following. So here I'm going to say axios.post and the endpoint is um, slash scream slash uh, the scream ID. So uh, put a variable here, scream ID slash comment. And here we pass the comment data. It returns us a promise. So dot then res here we dispatch the type that we just created. So type uh, submit comment and the payload which uh, the payload which when we submit a comment we get that comment back so let's do the payload is rest.data I'll show you in a second what we're gonna do with the payload here we dispatch uh, clear errors um, since we have the function clear errors here which uh, by the way this is called a an action creator when you create a function that just dispatches an action so let's dispatch this action creator and we call it like this. And actually let's look where we have uh, clear errors and replace it with, let's, let's search for uh, clear errors. Yeah. So where else actually we have somewhere else where we have it, I think. Uh, yeah, here, here we can just dispatch clear. Oops clear errors the function cool all right so let's go back to our submit uh, we dispatch this well these are curly braces not not square like this and here we say dot catch and we can actually get validation errors for the comment because if, it, if it's empty we get an error for that so we need to dispatch uh, set errors. So type set errors and the payload <coughs> will be the error.response.data. All right, let's save this. Let's go to the data reducer and handle this. Submit comment is not exported all oh, because we didn't save here. So here let's do, or I didn't save, maybe you saved, I don't know. <laughs> Submit comment and I think it's imported it. Yep. And here, let's say, what do we do? We need to, okay, let me do return first. 
sometimes it's hard to talk and type at the same time. All right, let's spread the state. And what we need to do is that we get this comment back. And since we have opened this screams dialogue, so this is in this singular scream uh, object, we need to add this comment that we get back to the comment array in this uh, in the scream. So if we look here, just to reiterate. So here, if we open up this, let's say this scream, let's go to our dev tools, we go to our state. So inside data scream, we have this uh, array of, of comments. What we need to do, we need to get that comment and put it at the top. So if we were to put a comment here, it will be at the top here because it's the newest one. And uh, here, so what we need to do is we spread the state and we say scream, which, and then we spread our existing scream. So state.scream. And here we say comments. And inside of comments, we say action.payload, which is the comment that we just submitted. And then we spread the rest of the comments. So spread state dot uh, scream dot comments. All right, let's save. Now let's go to our comment form. Here we need a couple of things. Let's get the these three. Let's save first RCE tab. Remove this export here and then paste here. Um, here we're going to need some MUI stuff as well. So MUI stuff. Let's get, we're going to need the button, the submit button of the form. So from material UI slash core slash button. Let's copy this two more times. We're going to need the grid because we're already, remember, we're already in a grid because of the screen dialog. And here we're going to need uh, the text field. All right, let's do a styles const styles equals um, theme and then returns. Uh, we're going to need the text field styling. So let's spread the theme. I don't think we have any styling for this component. So let's leave it like that. Here we have a state since we have a form. We'll have the body of the comment as empty initially. And here let's do, actually we need to bring in Redux. So, or like connect Redux stuff. So let's say import, can connect. Now guys, you don't have to do these comments, but if you expand your uh, functionality more and you bring in more stuff, it's cool to comment on your uh, on your code or on your import, it's, it makes it easier to uh, to navigate. So we get connect as per usual from React Redux, and we need this action that we just created. So let's do import um, submit comment from go back one level, go back another level. Redux slash actions slash data actions. All right. So here. Yeah, we got prop types, we can do prop types. But before that, let's let's cut this and let's say export default connect map state to props. Since we have one action, we can just put it here, submit comment. And the second one will be with styles, um, styles, and we pass our component. So here, let's do const <coughs> map state to props equals state and returns the following. And here we need to access the both the UI in case we get errors. So UI is state.ui and we need um, we need authenticated from user because we don't want to show this form if we're not authenticated. So let's say authenticated from state.user.authenticated. Uh, All right, let's do the prop types. So comment form dot prop types. Uh, we have our function. So submit comment is prop types dot func dot is required. We have our props from the state, which is uh, which are UI is prop um, prop. Okay, let me try again. <laughs> prop types dot object that is required. And we can just copy this. Here we say, um, what do we have? We have the classes from, um, 
from with styles and we have uh, the scream ID that we got passed down uh, this is a string and we have the authenticated authenticated and this is a boolean so we say bull I think this is it for our props yeah okay let's go to the render let's say const let's get our classes and authenticated from this dot props and um, here we say let's say return comment form markup and here let's say const comment comment form markup equals and we do a ternary operator so if authenticated if we are authenticated we return something else we actually return null because we don't want to see this if we're not authenticated so here let's uh, what do we return we return a grid um, item because we're already in a container because of uh, how in screen dialog right here where are we yeah we're here so we're already in a container where is it yeah it's here so we just put a uh, grid item sm equals 12 and here let's give it an inline style and let's give it a text align center I want the button to align in the middle here let's do a form on submit equals this dot um, handle submit and here we put our oops we put our text field text field uh, we're gonna have a name which is gonna be body um, what do we all we have a type of text we have let's put a let's put a label of course that says comment on screen let's put a placeholder actually let's not put a placeholder it's kind of self-explanatory so let's put an error of errors dot oops oh actually this reminds me that we didn't put errors so errors.comment this is what we get back from our uh, endpoint if we have an, a validation error with the comment so if it if we have a comment errors.comment we set this to true else we set it to false and let's put errors in the state errors and let's actually get errors from the state so const errors equals this dot state dot errors so uh, here we have a helper text in case we get an error and this will be errors dot um, errors dot comment I'm sick of saying errors it's twisting my tongue too much value equals this dot state um, yeah dot body and on change is this dot handle change and uh, let's give it full width because otherwise it's just gonna take half uh, let's give it actually the uh, our class so class name the global styling so class cla classes classes dot uh, text field I think this is it yeah let's close this tag and let's have a button um, of type submit variant contained because that's the style we've been going with uh, color of primary and the class name the global class name classes dot button to give it the margin let's close this and this will say submit and I think this is it actually no let's put a ruler under here so let's say HR with a class name classes dot visible separator all right let's close this tag and no not like this like this and here let's create our form form methods so let's say on change takes an event and here we do this dot set state oops uh, we set the state and the name will be 
um, event dot target dot name we only have one input but this is this works for all forms so event dot uh, we bind it to event dot target dot value all right let's create the on submit not on change handle change I'm 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 doing this handle thing because in the MUI document uh, documentation they do that so I just, to be less confusing I just follow their um, their convention because I'm using their framework but you don't have to so handle submit takes the event and here we do event dot prevent default and here we call our um, our action this dot props dot um, submit comment not comment <laughs> comment and we pass this what do we pass? oh yeah the scream ID so this dot props we've passed we've been passed this already so scream ID and the second will be an object with a key body not Cody body and the value of this will be this dot state dot body and uh, we need to get the errors as well in case there is any so let's say component component will receive props next props here we need to check for them if next props dot um, UI did we get UI yeah we did if uh, next props dot UI dot errors then um, this dot set state errors um, next props dot UI dot UI dot errors cools I think this is it yeah this is it let's test this out let's save errors is not defined oh to initialize it as an empty object here yeah fragment is defined but never used actually we don't need fragment because we're returning one element anyway cool let's check our app so we open up hmm there's no form oh we're not logged in of course so user or I'm not logged in maybe you're logged in so user dot, um, at email.com one through six log in I open up this we get a comment uh, section here cool I write a comment hello mate I send it cool it persists and it shows up instantly but it doesn't clear the form let's handle that so hmm here when we receive props well we can check because once we send this um, we can check once we get um, props we can check that we don't have errors so actually not here so exclamation mark not errors I mean not next props dot UI dot errors and the same thing we did in the add screen guys so and next next props dot UI dot loading or just not here as well and what we need to do here if this is the case this dot set state body is empty all right let's try again let's see hello again bro we send this cool and it's uh, and it um it resets it and if i send empty we get errors cool if i submit actually oh we're not clearing the errors so I know now if I'm gonna submit it's gonna show me an error instantly yep we need to clear the errors as well from here what we need to do is that we need to clear errors once we close this dialogue so we will do this from the screen dialogue so here actually we need to import the clear errors first so here let's say clear errors and where are we so here in handle close we need to set the state to open to false and we need to call the clear errors this dot props dot clear errors call it like this and we need to add it to our prop types 
up here so clear errors you say prop types dot func dot is required comma let's save let's go here so if we get an error and we go again and oh this dot props dot clear errors is not a function is it not clear errors call it here um oh of course forgot to add it to the uh, map actions to props clear errors like this let's save this time it should work so if there is any error let's let's double check as well in the state so tree ui there's no error right now let me put them like this so actually no i don't need to type anything if i have it empty we have an error and if i close it it dispatches clear errors and it clears the errors cool so let's actually create the uh, user page so when we click right now on a user handle it just takes us to slash user slash that user handle and there's nothing so let's actually create this page all right let's go to pages and let's create here a user.js lowercase it doesn't really matter I've, I've got questions on this why you use components and pages it's just a, a convention you know there's multiple conventions on how to do things just pick yours and stick with it all right let's go to app and actually let me close the um, terminal let's set up a route here so here I'm gonna import it first so import user from so same level but pages slash user and let me put a space between those and here let's put a route so route exact path equals and this will be slash users slash colon handle uh, handle not handle sorry for the typos guys so component equals user now uh, before we create this I want to create the action so let's go to data actions and we're going to create export const i'm going to call it get user data but don't confuse it with the other get user data from the user actions and this will take a user handle and it will go through dispatch and here first we dispatch a loading type so dispatch type loading data and here we say axios dot get uh, backticks slash user singular that's how we set up our backend route don't confuse the two um, so dollar sign curly braces user handle that we have passed to this uh, function and here we do dot then oops dot then result uh, guys if you remember if you don't remember I'll remind you so this is the type of data we get from requesting from slash user slash handle so we get a user object and a screams object so what we want to do now is we want to set the screams to our state screams so here we do uh, dispatch the type will be set screams and we're not gonna set the um, so payload will be action no not action sorry res dot data dot screams and we're not going to set the uh, user details to this because the user details is always the authenticated user um, here we say dot catch we don't need to stop loading because set errors that uh, set screams does that and here let's do catch errors and here we just dispatch the same type set screams with the payload of null all right so yeah no no semicolon here we save actually we don't need error here we could just like keep it like that we save here and let's actually create this uh, user component or page so rce tab let's get rid of this export and here we're going to need prop types Uh, let's import Axios and I'll show you why we need Axios in a second. Let's import the screen. Uh, 
um, components slash scream slash scream um, Pascal cased. And here let's import the grid from material UI. And we need the we need connect. And we need this function that we just created. So get user data from um, Redux actions, data actions. Uh, let's set up our prototypes. So let's actually set up the map, um, the map state to props first. So const map state to props is gonna take the state and the return the following so we just need the data so let's do data state dot data and here let's just do connect map state to props and we only need one action so we can put it in a um, object like this so get user data and we wrap the component in the parentheses and here let's say user dot prop types equals uh, the function get user data which is a prop types dot func dot is required and the data which is an object so prop types dot object dot is required so here let's um, when we load the component, so let's do component did mount. And here, when we load the component, we want to fetch the user, um, this user's uh, details. So let's get the handle from um, the URL. So we can do that by doing const handle. Let's put it in a variable. So this dot props dot match, which holds details about the URL, the path name, base URL, all this stuff. The params, which are the parameters. And we have access to only one parameter, which is the handle, because that's how we set up the route, if you remember. So we have this one parameter handle. Now we get it, we put it in this variable. And we can do this dot props dot get user data and pass the handle. And we also now need to get the user details. So let's do Axios. I want to send another request and say got Axios slash users slash user rather singular the same request that we sent from our action uh, so here we pass the handle oops handle the get uh, dot then rather and then here actually we need a uh, profile in the state so let's do state equals here we have a profile property uh, let's have it null and for now and here when we get the result we do this dot set state we set the profile to res dot data dot user and if you get an error we just console log it now I know we can as well create another um, another entry in our data in the state and put this um, data in there, but this is going to be a static profile. It's not nothing is going to change about it, so we don't need to store it in our global state. So we can just fetch it and have it here inside the component. So here in the render, let's get the screams and the loading from the data. So we destructure these from this dot props dot data and here where we return stuff we're gonna have something similar to the home page so can we actually copy it from the home page yeah let's copy this let's go back to user let's paste this here we already brought in a grid it's right here and here we say um, screams markup and here instead of profile I'm gonna put a a thing called static profile, a component called static profile, which we haven't created. 
yeah, but we will in a moment. And let's pass it a profile. This dot state dot profile. And here, let's create the screen markup. So const screen markup screams markup equals. And of course, let's check for loading. If we are loading, then show a paragraph saying loading data. Else, here we do. Um, what do we do? Actually, we do another check here. So let's do else if screams because there could we could go to a users page and they could have no screams. Maybe they haven't posted any yet. So if screams equals null, then we set we uh, set the content to be a paragraph that says uh, no screams from this user. Now you can style this more. Um, it's up to you. I'm just gonna leave it like this for now. If we do have any screams, excuse excuse me. We do screams dot map, and then for each scream, we're gonna return a scream with the key scream dot scream id similar to the home page and we pass the scream scream and we close the tag so i think we're done here yeah let's create the static profile let's import it from so right here say import static profile from we we'll go back one level components slash profile slash static profile Let's create this here. Static profile.js. Here, let's import React and fragment from React. And maybe let's copy some stuff from here. Or maybe from here. Prop types. I wanted to get with styles. Let's actually just type it out styles from uh, material you are slash core slash styles slash with styles we're gonna need day js from day j day js and here let's do import link from material ui slash link here we need paper material UI slash course slash paper. Uh, should have copied this, but it's never too late. Control D typography. Oh, typography. And let's get some icons. Here we say MUI. Let's do we need the calendar today. So similar to a uh, profile, so we can get those three icons from here. So calendar, a location, and uh, the link icon. So these three, let's paste them here. And we're gonna use styles similar as well to the use, uh, profile styles. So let's copy these. Let's go back to static profile, let's paste. And here I'm gonna remove the button because we're not gonna have edit buttons because this is not our profile. This is a static profile. So we remove that button. So here we remove as well the uh, buttons and the, so the buttons from here and we remove this SVG button thing from here. Let's save. And here this um, this component is gonna be a, uh, a functional component. So let's say static profile equals, takes a props and Let's uh, export it. So export default with styles, styles, and what is the static profile? Let's do our prop types. We have profile, which we've been passed down. So this will be pro prop types dot object dot is required. And we have classes from with classes, with styles rather. Prop types dot object dot is required. 
All right, so here we need to destructure a couple of things. So let's say const classes and we have profile. So we need some stuff from there. So profile colon and we do curly braces and we get, what do we get? We get handle um, created at image URL and uh, the bio website and location. And this equals this dot props. Actually, just props because this is a functional component. Um, so here we do return. And here let's wrap everything in a paper. Actually, I think I could copy everything from profile and edit it. So let's go to profile, copy this whole paper tag. And let's come here. Let's paste it. So we're going to need. So we're going to need the image. We don't need the input and the button here. So let's delete these. Uh, we're going to need the link the same way. Or did I call it MUI link? Okay, let's call it MUI link from link. And we need the link from React Router DOM actually. So let's do import link destructed, um, destructured from React Router DOM. So we need that, we need the link, we show the bio, the location, the website, and here we don't have the edit details or the button to log out. So I think this should work. So let's save everything and let's look if we have any errors. We don't, hmm, cool. Let's reload the entire thing and let's go to a profile. Cannot read property null. Uh, handle of null. So the profile we got passed down is null, I think. Profile. Let's check on the user. This dot state dot. Oh, of course. Here we actually check if we have a profile because it could be loading and we don't have any profile. So let's cut this and let's do an expression here. Let's say this dot state dot profile and the equals null. So if it equals null, then let's return um, a paragraph saying loading profile dot dot dot. And we do here colon. So else we show, yeah, we show this. We paste the, what we had there. So let's save. Let's go back. Cool. And we get the profile of Jane Ost and her screams, which are just one. If we go back to home, we click on Johnny, we get his uh, profile and his screen. And this is a normal screen, so we can still interact with it the same way we do in the home. So cool, like we have now the user page and we can go to it and everything works just fine. What I want to do right now is uh, we need, before we implement notifications, we need to set up a way where when we type a URL for a, a screen, we straight away go to that screen because otherwise when we click on a notification, uh, we, it can't do anything. So what we need to do, we need to set up a way in which when we, let's say you, we want to go to user slash Johnny slash scream slash a scream ID of whatever his scream. When we click enter here, we need to go straight away to that screen. One thing I want to fix first, when we are actually logged out, there's a, an error or a warning that says the prop user in auth route is marked required. Let's fix that. So let's go to, where is it? Auth route right here. And here, let's make it not required because sometimes we won't have a user if we're not logged in and that's okay. This is still gonna work. So remove is required. Let's save and the error should be gone. And I'm gonna be checking if we have any other warnings and fix them. All right, let's go to app. Let's set up a route for for what we're trying to do. Let me close the terminal. So here I'm gonna add another route. So route exact path equals, and this will be slash users slash colon handle slash scream slash colon scream ID. And this will go to the component, the same component user, but with a trick and you will see. Uh, let's save here. Let's go to user, where is user right here. Now here in user, we need to check if we have this uh, parameter in our URL or in our path. So here in component did mount, should I go, 
here actually let's say const scream id equals this dot props dot match dot params dot scream id now of course we could maybe just be on the users page so we don't have this which is fine it's going to be undefined so here we do if scream id so if we have it then this dot set state let's call it scream id param and set it to scream id that we just got so if we have it we set it in the state let's actually initialize here um this variable and give it a val value of null initially so we can come down here in the in the render right here let's extract it so const uh, what is it scream id param equals uh, this dot state so of course if we don't have it it's gonna be null which is fine and right here we don't actually just render the screams we do another check so if we actually have screams then here we do another check and we say if not scream um, id param so if it's null then yeah show the screams like this that's fine now another so actually yeah actually um here i need to put a question mark because this is another ternary we're chaining another ternary operator so if not scream id params then don't do anything else so if we have a scream id param so we're trying to visit a scream then let's do this now what we need to do here we need to find the screen that has this scream id and pass it a, a property of a open dialog so that we will know which screen to open once the page loads so here i'm going to do if scream dot um actually no i need to do the map first so let's do screams screams dot map and here I say scream inside curly braces. Here we do our check. So if scream dot scream id does not equal scream id param, then it's not this scream that we want to open. So we just return like this. So I can just copy this the same way we return them here. Now here else return now this is when we actually find that one scream that has the scre same scream id as the one we're trying to open so here we just pass a uh, pass a prop open dialog and if we just pass it like this it's just going to pass a property open dialog with the value of true okay so now let's go to scream now this is kind of this is prop drilling but it's okay we're drilling only one property not massive objects and a lot of updates and stuff like this so where do we go actually here um no actually we need to pass it to the scream dialogue so here in the scream dialogue let's say open dialogue equals this dot props because we passed it down dot open dialogue and so if we don't have it it's not uh, it's gonna pass a um an undefined value so that's okay and here let's add it to the prop types so we say open dialog is a prop types dot bool for boolean and it's not required because most of them will not have this property and some of, sometimes none of them will have it so let's go to the open dialog and handle this logic now here we're gonna add a component did mount so let's go here under the state let's say component um did mount and here what we need to do is we just need to um, check if we have the open dialog. So if you do this.props, if this.props.open dialog, then we just call this.handle open. Let's save all files and let's check our application. So let's open the Redux um, state. So let's look, for example, this one. This one right here so now we have this one in our screen let's take the id of it so this is by johnny and we have the id of it so did I, oh no actually i typed that er er earlier i got confused for a second okay let's refresh the home page just in case and now if i type slash users slash johnny 
slash scream slash that ID, it should take us to that um, users page and open the uh, scream, which it does. Cool. And, um, and uh, so now what I want to do is I want to do something like Twitter. So here on, on Twitter, as you see, if I open this scream, I mean this scream, this tweet, if I open this tweet, it's going to change the URL. So to that slash that user slash status slash the ID of this tweet. And if I close it, it goes back to the original one. And if I open this and I actually just go to this URL, so I type enter, it will go to that users page and open it. And if I click away, it just goes back to that users page. So let's actually implement the same behavior for our application. So let's go to our, let's close Twitter. Uh, let's go to our app. So here in the handle open, we're going to have some logic. So this ha happens after we open the, uh, the screen. So here, let's make some space. Oops. Make some space like this. And let's say, um, I'm going to have two variables here. Let's call this one old path. And the old path will be the, um, the path that we have currently. So window.location.path name. And here I'm going to get, uh, two things const user handle, uh, handle and the scream ID. Remember we've been passed these down from uh, scream. So equals this dot props. And here we're going to form the path that is supposed to be the path for this scream. So, and we'll be, we'll call it new path. So this should always be the path for this screen that we've just opened. So backticks slash users slash and put the um, user handle and then slash scream slash and then put the um, scream ID. Now here we can just do window dot push uh, push state. And here we don't need to pass any data. So we can say null, null. And then for the URL, we just pass the new path. Let's save and let's see, uh, look at our app. So now if I open this, it should change the URL to slash users, slash user, slash scream, slash the ID of this one. Okay. So, um, push state is not a function. Oh, window dot history dot push state. Sorry about that. So let's refresh. We open this cool and we get this URL. Nice. Oh, but it's actually not, we want it to actually change back. So let's add that logic as well. So here we need to as well revert the change from handle close. So we need to store them in the state so we can access them from both functions. So, or methods rather. So here, when I set the state, we need to set as well values for the old path and the new path. And we need to put them here. So old path, oops, path is an empty string and new path is as well an empty string. So here, when we close the, um, the dialogue, we want to do a window dot history, which does nothing by the way, it just changes the URL at the top. But of course it benefits the, um, the application so that we, we will know where to go and it will know where we are by just checking the URL from different components. So this dot, um, state dot, uh, old path. So now when we go, um, when we close it, it should revert it back to the old path. So let's save and let's test that. Let's refresh. Let's open this. Cool. It takes us back to the old path. And even from the users page, if we do this and we go back, it, it gives us the old path. So it doesn't just give us slash. It actually saves the path that we had. And then when we close it, it takes us back. Okay. There's an edge case for this, which is when we just take a URL. Let me go to another user because slash user slash user is a bit confusing. Uh, so when I take this screen and I just press enter right now, there is no old URL. So if I click away, it's not going to work because the old URL is the same as the new one. So let's actually handle this edge case. So here, um, under here, I'm going to say if old path 
equals new path, then what we need to do is we need to say old path equals slash users, um, users slash uh, user handle like this. Because when we come from another from another from completely a different place and we click away, we should just go back to the users page, like exactly like on Twitter. And it works right now. So if I click on this and I just click enter here and I click away, it will go back to the users page. Cool. Okay, so let's create the notifications now. Let's go to um, here in navbar and here instead of notifications in uh, this button, let's just leave this notifications tag but it's not gonna actually be the icon, it's gonna be a new component that we're gonna create. Let's put it in the same um, folder. So let's say import notifications from same directory notifications. And let's create this file. So notifications.js. And here we're gonna have some similar imports to Scream. So I'm gonna take the first six right here go back to uh, notifications, paste them. The only one we don't need is the with styles. And for this, uh, I'm gonna use the menu component. So if we go to material UI component demos and where is it right here, menu, I'm just gonna use the simple menu. So if you, if you um, expand the code, it has something called anchor element and you can change the anchor and it will anchor around a different one. So for example, if, we're, if it were to anchor around my account, when you click it, my account appears in the middle. But for our case, I'm just gonna let it always anchor at the top. So we just see it as a normal dropdown. All right, so here I'm gonna bring in some MUI stuff. So let's say MUI stuff. And here we'll say, first is the menu, <laughs> is the menu, excuse me slash material UI slash core slash menu. And here I'm just gonna copy this line and paste it five more times. So let's hit, click here, control D, we need menu item. Um, we need icon button. We need tooltip typography and badge. I'll show you what these things do. We need a couple of icons. So here let's say import notifications icon from material UI slash icons slash notifications. And we can copy this. And here let's say favorite, favorite. And here we'll say chat. So select this, control D, chat. And here let's bring in the Redux stuff. Import connect from React Redux. And here let's import uh, an action that we haven't created yet. Let's call this mark notifications, notifications red, which is gonna be executed once we expand our notifications. So just like on Facebook, or I think even on Twitter, when you expand your notifications, they're automatically marked red. So from go back two levels, Redux slash actions slash um, user actions. And here let's do our class notifications extends component. And we will have a state, we'll have an anchor element of null initially and let's export here let's say export connect map state to props and here here guys uh, if you remember we already have our notifications so we go to state we go to user or oh, actually we're not logged in let me log in quickly so Okay, so if you look here, we already have a couple of notifications, so we just need to show them. All right, let's go to our notifications here, map state to props, and we only need one action, and we can put it in this object, is mark notifications red, and we connect it to notifications. Oh, here's the export default. 
let's say notifications dot uh, prop types and we have only two so the function mark notifications red is a uh, prop types dot func dot is required and the um, notifications is as well a prop whoops prop types dot um, object dot is required and here let's do const map state to props we'll take the state and return the following and here we need notifications from state dot user dot notifications all right let's actually create this uh, action first because that makes more sense let's go to um, user actions and here at the bottom I'm gonna say export default actually let me create the type first so it, it imports it here under the user types I'm gonna say export const um, mark notifications red I'm just gonna copy this so that I don't make a typo because I always do that so equals this string so let's go back to user actions here let's say uh, the um, not not default export const mark notifications red and here it will take uh, so let's call it data for now or let's just call them notifications actually they're an array of IDs so let's say notification IDs and it's gonna take dispatch and here we just need to send an axios request so dot post to slash notifications and we pass the uh, what is it notifications IDs and here dot then if we get a result we dispatch a type of mark notifications red and it imports this for, it imports it we don't need actually a payload so here we say dot catch error we just console dot log it so all right let's go to our um, user reducer and handle this type or yeah this type so here I'm say case mark notifications red and make sure you, if it doesn't import it for you you import it yourself and here what we need to do is uh, when we mark some notifications red if we go to our state here so let's go to user notifications if we mark them red we just need oops we just need to loop through them and change this um, red property from false to true so we have access to them right now by just doing um, state dot notifications and what we need to do we need to do for each we loop through them um, for each not I'm gonna call it for notifications we will say not dot um, red not dot red equals true all right so here we just we need to return the state of course return spread the state okay so this is this is fine for now let's go back to notifications and here in the render we need to take the notifications from the props so const notification notifications equals this dot props dot notifications and here we need to to do the anchor element equals this dot state dot anchor element and notice I'm not using destructuring here because sometimes it makes less sense to use destructuring when you have one thing okay so let's say let notification notification icon now in depending on the type of notification we're gonna have a different icon so if it's a notification on a comment we're gonna have the chat icon if it's a notification on a like we're gonna have the favorite icon so um, here we need to check if we have any notifications in the first place so if notifications and if we have notifications we need to check that notifications uh, dot length um, is bigger th bigger than zero so if this is the case we need to um, what we need to do is we need to have two types of notifications if it's red 
we're gonna give it a color of secondary, otherwise we're gonna give it um, like a normal color. So here we will say, so here we check, if we have um, any unread notifications, then we need to show a, oh, so we broke our thing. So we need to show a badge on the icon of the notification with the number of the unread notifications. Otherwise we just show the icon without any badge. So here we can check by doing notifications dot filter and here we filter for not where not dot red equals false. So this will uh, by filter filtering like this, this will have a result of only the notifications that have a, a red um, of false. I mean, if the array that has some notifications that have a red property of false is has a length of bigger than zero, that means there are certain notifications that are unread. So here, if this is the case, so we, we use it as a condition and we do a ternary. So if this is the case, that means we have unread notifications. So let's open this and let's say notifications, uh, notifications icon equals the following. So here we say badge, we surround it with badge, that's how badge works. And we say uh, badge content equals, and here we need to um, actually give it a number. So how many notifications are unread, which is this array right here. So actually I forgot to change, change the dot length. So actually this is the number of the notifications that are unread. So this is the content of the uh, of the badge, and here we need to add a color of secondary so it stands out and we can see it. And here, let's close this badge, and inside the badge we put the icon, so notification icon, which is just the notification icon. And here, so outside of here, between these two parentheses, we do a colon, so else we just do notifications um, icon equals just the regular notifications icon. Actually, this is a lowercase because it's it's this this thing right here. Actually, it's this. Let me make sure I have the right variable here. So notifications icon is this one. Cool. Okay, I have a problem with my parentheses. I think these are extra. Okay, yeah. So this is fine now. We need to handle the else case. So else, we can, we'll, we'll do the same here. So notification icon equals notification icon. Because we could have notifications and all of them are red. In that case, we do this. And we could have no notifications. And in that case as well as this, we just put the icon. All right, so here, here actually let's do our return. And inside, our, we're gonna wrap everything in a div. Or actually, let's bring in a fragment, that's better. Let's avoid the div soup. So let's replace this div with fragment. And here, I'm gonna start, of course, with the button that uh, triggers all of this. And here, let's say, we surround it with a tooltip, with a placement, um, not placeholder, placement of top. And this will have a title and it will say just notifications. And inside of here, we're gonna have an icon button with an area, area owns, oops, area owns, yeah, of if anchor element, then we just do say simple menu. This is from the documentation. Oops, else is undefined. And here we just, um, I don't know, I honestly don't know what these do, but they're from the documentation. So I'm just gonna put them. These two um, properties has pop up. It's true. And it's gonna have an on click this dot handle open and inside the icon button we're going to put our notifications icon so notifications 
icon. All right, so under this tooltip, we're gonna have our menu. So menu, oops, menu like this. And here we'll give it an ID of simple menu in case, actually we don't need the ID. I didn't even type it correctly. <laughs> so anchor element will be the anchor element that we just, that we destructed, destructured earlier. The open will be, let's chain the boolean on um, anchor element. So if we have one, it's gonna be true, else it's gonna be false. So the on close will be this dot handle close. And we'll give it an on entered. Now this on entered is triggered once the menu is opened. And this is what we're gonna use to actually send the request to our backend and mark these notifications red. And we'll call this on menu opened. Let's close this. And inside of here, we're gonna have something called notifications markup. And this is of course is gonna depend on a couple of things. So here let's create our notifications markup. So I'm gonna say let notifications markup equals, and here I'm gonna say if notifications uh, and notifications, oops, notifications dot length is bigger than zero, uh, then so here what we need to do, we're gonna map through the notifications and show each one. So here we'll say oh, um, notifications dot map. I'm sorry about the typos guys. Uh, it's like it's the end of the day and I'm kind of like tired to be honest. Oh, this is gonna be the last video I'm recording. Otherwise I'm just not gonna be that productive. <laughs> All right, so inside of this notification, we're gonna have a couple of things because like, let me show you. It depends on the on the notification. We're gonna have a different string that we put inside of the notification. So, for example, if the um, the type is um, comment, we'll say commented on. If the type is like, we'll say liked your, uh, etc. And you'll see what uh, in a second. So, say const verb. I'm gonna call it equals. Now, depending on the notification dot type. So I just called it not by the way in this map. So not dot type, if it equals like, then we will call the verb liked. Else we have two types, so else is probably, it's, it's definitely a comment. So we say commented on. And here we need to also have the time when this happened. And for this, we're gonna use the um, day.js from now. And actually we need to extend day.js. So inside the render, let's say day, uh, day js dot extend and we pass it the relative time uh, plugin I actually import it yes we pass it the relative time and inside of here we'll say time equals day js and we pass it um, not dot created at dot from now. Now we need the icon color, because if it's unread, it's gonna be red. If it's red, it's gonna be like normal. So here we say, if not dot red, then it's gonna be primary, else it's gonna be secondary. And we also need the icon. The, the icon depends on the, on the type of the notification. So here it equals not dot type, uh, equals like, so if it equals like, then let's open parentheses and let's say favorite icon. So if it's a like, it's gonna be a heart icon and the color will be icon color, um, color. And the, what do we have? We have, let's give it a style. Style of um, margin, actually we need two, um, curly braces here, margin um, right of 10. Just doing inline style for this one, guys. You can, I don't wanna add with styles just to have this style. And here, if not, it's gonna be a chat icon because it's gonna be a comment uh, notification with a color of icon color. 
and with the same style and we close the the icon like this actually before we carry on let's handle the else so that it doesn't show any like squiggly lines here so else if we have no notifications we show a menu item with an on click um, that just closes this so the on click of handle um, close and it's gonna say you have no notifications yet so here let's carry on so now after we have all these variables we can return what we want to return so let's return the following and here it's going to be a, a menu item with the we have we need a key because we're iterating through an array and with, the key would be the created at and we need an on click and this will be this dot handle close as well and inside the menu we're gonna have the icon the first thing and after that we'll have a typography of component link because this is gonna be a link to the screen and the color of default and the variant of uh, body one and it's gonna have a two property because it's a link to slash users slash and we put the notification dot recipient like this um, slash scream slash notification dot scream id and we close this typography and here it's gonna say not dot sender so the the uh, the handle of this person space verb so whether liked or commented on and then we say your scream space and then here we put the uh, time so say time like this and this will say like five minutes ago or whatever so let's go up here and create our functions our handle open and handle close and all of that actually outside the render so here's say handle open equals it's going to take an event and it's going to do this dot set state uh, anchor element is event dot target which is always going to be the icon uh, here let's say handle close equals doesn't take anything and it just sets the state anchor element to null again so it closes the thing the uh, the menus and here let's say uh, on menu opened this is what sends a request to our backend to um, to mark the notifications red and if you remember properly like the backend we need to send an array of the notification the ids of the notifications that we want to mark red so we can do this by let's say let unread uh, let's call it unread notifications ids equals ids equals this dot props dot notifications dot map and what we're gonna need to do here not we need to map through the notifications that have a not dot red or false or not not dot red and actually no here we filter we filter them not map them so we only have the ones that are not red now we chain a map and what we need to do we map the notification to not dot um, we have a, a key a, a key notification um, ID so this will return us an array of the IDs of the ones that have read false and what we need to do with this array we just need to call this dot props dot mark notifications read and we just pass this unread notifications ID and that should take care of it so this should work let's look at our console and we have notifications icon not defined line 53 where is it because it's notifications icon oh cool no more errors 
All right, let's look our app and cool. We get three unread notifications. And if we open our state, let's, uh, let's put this like, like this. If we open the state, we go here, we look at our user, we go look at our notifications and they have a red of false. And if we click here, so now they are all red because they're all unread. And if we click on this action and we click on difference, we see that it changed in the notification and it changed all their reds, all their red properties from false to true. Cool. And if we click away, there's no more badge anymore. And if we click, we see that they are blue because they are a red. And if we click on this one, it takes us to this, um, to this scream ID. Cool. So right now in our application, if we load, if we reload or load our app, we see quickly these loading um, text show instead of the profile and the screens while they are actually loading. So let's change this into something more uh, visually appealing. Uh, the technique that I really like is called a loading skeleton. YouTube uses it. So if I reload YouTube, you see these boxes, uh, these placeholder divs uh, while the videos actually uh, load and the thumbnails and everything. Let's actually implement this in our application. Oh, by the way, one thing that I changed, I fixed from last video, the notifications in the prop types in the notifications component is a prop types array and not prop types object because there's multiple ones. So make sure you fix that. So let's go to home. And here in the home, while we're loading the screens, we don't just say loading, we say scream skeleton, which we will create in a second. Let's copy that and let's go here, say import screen skeleton from, go back one level and we, we're gonna put this in the util. So util slash screen skeleton. And let's copy this whole import and let's go to the user page and here paste it. And let's go down here. While we load the data, we just put the uh, screen skeleton instead. All right, let's create this component. So in the util, I'm gonna say screen Scream skeleton dot js. And here we're going to need a react or react and a fragment because we're going to have multiple ones. So we need to wrap them in a fragment. So here we're going to bring these from react. Uh, we're going to need the no image because we want to show this no image while the images are loading it's because we don't have the actual user image. And by the way, uh, I'll put this link in the description so you can download it. So I'm just going to download it now, download the 640 by 641. And we can actually just grab, uh, drag and drop it into the image folder. I'm going to call this no dash image and it's dot PNG. So let's import that. So import no image from, and by the way, this, you can name anything. It's just, uh, an identifier. So it's going to be from going back one level slash images slash no dash image or whatever you named it dot PNG. Uh, let's bring prop types and here let's go, let's say movie. And here we, here we need three things, the card. So it's going to be just like the actual card, but uh, with no content. So material dot, uh, material UI slash core slash card. Let's copy this and paste it two more times. This will be card media and this will be card content. Actually, we need with styles as well. So let's import that. A material UI slash core slash styles slash with styles. Let's create a styles object, which will take the theme. Actually, I'm not sure if we're going to use the theme, but let's just take it anyway. And I'm going to leave it empty for now. And here, let's say we're going to make it a functional component because we don't need to manage any state or do any, uh, have any methods. So we'll, we'll make this a functional component. So let's say const scream skeleton equals, it's going to take some props and we do a parenthesis, uh, curly braces here. And let's, let's pause that for a second and say scream skeletons dot skeleton dot prop types. We're just going to have the classes from with styles. So this is going to be prop types, oops, prop types dot object dot is required. And here we need to say export default with styles, st 
styles and we're gonna pass our scream skeleton all right so here we need to do our fake card so let's say let's bring in the styles first the um, classes rather so const classes equals oops classes with two s's equals this dot props um, and here I'm gonna say return fragment and inside the fragment I'm gonna put the content I mean I could put the whole thing here but it looks cleaner when I put it in a variable so let's say const content and here um, we're gonna have our card it's gonna be like an empty card and inside there is like a, a blue a div here and a gray div here and this image right here but of course we need multiple ones and I want to fill up the screen so just in case I'm gonna put five which fills up the screen and of course if there's three later they're gonna see that there's only three but for now I'm gonna put um, I mean for the loading we're gonna put five of them so the way we do this we can say so content equals we can do we can use array dot from and here we can pass some attributes to this array and I only need the length of five so this is basically like a for loop but um, uh, but more efficient so here we do dot map on this array that we just created and we do item and we're gonna need to um, actually more um, two parentheses here so item and I'm only saying item just to access the index we don't need the item there is no item actually and here let's do parentheses we just outright return stuff so here let's do a card I'm gonna give this a class name of uh, classes dot card because we need this to style these divs and I'm gonna give it the key of index and this is why we need index and here we're gonna have card media which is the no image image with a class name of classes dot cover and here we will say we we'll give it the image which is the no image oops I'm gonna close it like this because there's no content and here let's say card content let's give this a class name of classes dot call this card content and let's close this and here inside the content we're gonna have these divs so so far what we have is we have this card with this image but there's nothing here so what we want to put uh, I want to put a blue div here and then a gray div and then two full lines and one half a line so it gives the illusion that there is some content that's being rendered right now but actually it's just a fake uh, skeleton all right so here I'm gonna the first div these are just divs and we're gonna style them so say uh, div class name I'm gonna give this a classes dot handle because this is the placeholder for the handle and I'm just gonna copy these paste it uh, what is it four more times so four more times so this is gonna be the date because that's what's under the handle and these two I'm gonna do control D and I'm gonna call this full line these are the two full lines and this is gonna be the half oops half line like this so let's actually style these so up here in the styles I'm gonna use a uh, flexbox to um, make sure that they uh, they are arranged properly one on top of the other so for the card yeah so we gave this card we're gonna style this card itself let's give it a display of flex a margin bottom just like the actual card of 20 a position do we need to give it position no I don't think so all right so let's do a comma and here we have our card content and for this I'm gonna give it a width of 100% because by default it takes the minimum width oops we need this needs to be a string it's kind of confusing jumping from CSS back to JavaScript back to CSS <laughs> all right so flex direction and give this a, a direction of column so they stack up on top of the uh, of each other and I'm gonna give it a padding just like the actual card of 25 and here let's style the image so cover 
we're going to give it a minimum width. Otherwise, it's going to be um, not visible at all. So of 200 and an object fit of 200 uh, of no, 200 cover, even though I know that this image is actually a square image. But uh, in case the dimensions change, I don't want it to be like stretched or like kind of shrank. Here, uh, we're going to style the handle. So handle. So guys, these are divs. So by default, they take zero width. So we need to give them a, a width. I'm going to give this a hard coded width of 60 pixels and the height of 20 pixels and a back uh, background. Um, let's just say background color instead of background. And here I'm going to give it the, um, the color from our theme, the primary color. And if we go to our theme right here, where is it? Uh, util theme. We need to access this property. So we need to access the palette dot primary dot main. So back to our skeleton here, let's say theme dot, um, what is it? Palette oops, dot primary dot main and here we need our theme to access that so let's spread the theme and then do comma so this will have the blue like like a link would and here let's give it a margin bottom otherwise they're gonna stick to each other let's give it seven all right let's let's save let's see what this um, handle looks like all right there's a problem here cannot read property props of undefined Oh, this is not a class based um, component. So we don't use the this keyword. All right, let's go back. Let me reload. All right, so we see, uh, okay, we can actually use Redux to uh, pause our uh, animation at that state. So we can just go here, go back one step, actually here. All right, so we can pause at the loading of the data and we can see our uh, skeleton. All right, so this looks cool. Uh, not bad. We need to add the other ones because if we don't style them, they're here, but they're going to take zero space. So let's actually style the uh, full, uh, what is it now? The date. So the date, I want to give this a, should we give it, I think we should give it a, like smaller height because it's kind of a smaller font. So let's give it maybe 14 and should we give it? I think we'll give it more width. So let's do a hundred. For the background color, I want to give it um, a gray. So we can say, okay, I'm going to use RGBA. So I'm just going to give it a black with uh, with opacity. So not point, I think not point three would do. And let's carry on and actually style the rest. So we have the full line. Now this will take a, uh, a height of 15 because this is a bigger font size. And for the width, we're going to give it a, uh, a percentage value. So I'm going to give it 90%. I could give it a hundred, but if I were to give it a hundred, it's going to come way here. And that's not how our actual, actual card looks like. Um, let's give it a margin bottom, margin bottom of uh, 10 pixels. Actually, I forgot to give this a margin bottom. So margin bottom, let's give this uh, seven pixels or 10 pixels, 10 pixels. All right. Now we have the half line, which is going to have the same height. Um, it's going to have the width of actually 50% and it's going to have a, a margin bottom, the same one. All right, let's save. So let's go to our app. Let's go back to the loading state and interesting. We don't see the other divs. To get this div. Oh, we didn't give it a color, of course. Let's take this background color here. Let's do control or like alt here, enter and paste it. 
and let's make this a bit uh, darker. So here I'm going to do control D and give it 0 0.4. Let's save. All right, let's look at our app. Let's go to Redux, go back to the loading. Actually, I want it to be much darker than this. So let's give it not point, um, I think six will do. Let's save. Let's go back to our loading. Okay, so this is a half line as well. Did I make a mistake? So full line. Oh, yeah, this needs to be half line. The way CSS works is that it takes the latest one. So ignore the this. Yeah, so this is half line, not full line. So let's save. Let's go back. All right, I saw it for a second, but it looked cool. All right, so this looks perfect, I think. Um, okay, so you see the difference? Now it goes from here to here. Maybe the user, the user div needs to be a bit shorter. So here, the handle. So here, let's give it a height of uh, 18. Okay. Yep. This is more, um, it makes more sense. This more uh, appropriate. All right, cool. So if we were to just play, press play, and if we were to reload, this looks so much better. And even if there is some sort of, um, like delay, it, it doesn't, it doesn't feel like there's any like delay from, or from the server to the client. All right. Let's make the uh, profile skeleton as well. So let's go. Let's go here in the util and create another file called profile skeleton .js and let's go, where do we need it? You need it in the user. So here when we're loading, you need to say uh, profile skeleton and let's import that. So here from the same directory, select this control D, say profile skeleton and let's go to the home as well and here say profile Oops, profile if I can type skeleton all right here where we are loading the profile actually this is going to be inside the profile so oops so cut that and let's go to profile uh, here in profile profile here, let's import it. Actually, we go back one more level and right, right here. So in the loading, we say profile skeleton. And actually, uh, a lot of the styles that are gonna be used in the profile skeleton are gonna be um, the same as the styles in the profile. So we can just cut all these pro um, these uh, styles and put them in the global theme. So cut that and spread the theme like this so we can still access them. Uh, let's go to the theme. And at the bottom here, let's put a comma and paste all that stuff. And actually we could do the same thing for static profile. So here, we can select the entire thing and just remove it and spread the theme instead. And uh, let's save and make sure that we didn't break anything. Our theme is not defined in theme.js. Oh, okay. It has to be this. Okay, so this, yeah, we can't refer to it like that. We can just copy the value. So this, let's go here, paste it. Um, yeah, okay, because our scream skeleton doesn't have anything yet. It doesn't export anything yet. Let's start creating it. All right, with the, the snippets, I'm going to do RFCE tab and just change the syntax to const profile skeleton to the um, arrow syntax. And we're going to need prop types. We're going to need with styles. Oh, slash core rather. Styles slash with styles. 
I'm um, gonna need the no image import no img from we go back two levels or one level um, images slash no dash image dot png and here we need the paper just like the actual profile from paper from material UI paper and we're gonna need the same icons so let's go to the profile and let's get let's get the, all the icons here and the only ones we don't need are the return and the edit because we don't have a logout and edit button here let's say MUI oops MUI and uh, let's declare a styles const styles equals theme and returns nothing for now let's do prop types so profile skeleton dot prop types equals I'm gonna have a classes prop types dot object dot is required yeah that's it just classes let's get these classes from props like this without the this keyword and here let's do um, paper with a class name from the global classes classes dot paper and here kind of similar to the profile so so div actually like really similar to the profile except the buttons with class name with classes dot profile and inside of here we're gonna have the uh, image wrapper which is just actually a normal string class so dot image wrapper and here we'll have an image with the source of no img let's give it an alt of profile oops profile and the class name of profile dash image here we could we'll put a horizontal ruler and here let's say dot profile details we have these from the prof uh, from the global styles here let's put a div with a class name of classes dot handle put a hr to make some space here's put a another div with a class name of uh, this is going to be uh, two full lines because this is going to be a fake bio so let's do classes dot uh, full line I'm just going to copy this one more time copy and paste it and put the hr and here we're going to put the location icon so location um, on with a color of primary and uh, we can put a like a placeholder word or we can put a placeholder div I can put like we can even put some word in there so I'll put location like this and here let's put a HR and here we'll put the link so the website so link and you can omit these by the way guys because maybe a user wouldn't have these at all uh, I'm just gonna put them you know just for reference so if you want to not use them you could just like skip like or like not use these so here we'll put the link icon I'm just gonna put a dummy website so HTTPS colon slash slash website com put another HR and here we put the joint date so calendar today the color of primary is going to be joined date so let's style these uh, placeholders so here we spread the theme so we can use it and here for the handle it's gonna have a couple of things it's gonna have the uh, a height of 20 um, by the way, uh, don't, uh, don't forget that the rest of this stuff is already styled from the global theme. So we just style the image or the handle rather. It's gonna have a background 
background color of the, uh, the the blue so we can use the theme palette so theme dot palette dot uh, what is it primary dot main and we're gonna have a uh, width of 60 and here we'll have some margin uh, let's do actually just margin so margin uh, so the first one is the top let's do a string so I want to give it seven on the top so seven pixels and on the the right and left I want to give it auto so right is gonna be auto oops auto uh, bottom actually the the top is gonna take seven not the so the top I'm gonna give it um, zero I mean the bottom is gonna take seven so here I'll say seven pixels and then here for the left I'm gonna put auto so actually that's it for the handle next thing is we style the um, the full line so let's do full line and here we're gonna have a height similar to the card stuff 15 and a background color and we're gonna have the same gray so RGBA 0 0 0 and here is 0 um, 0.6 Let's give it a width of 100% and let's give a margin so here we need so I think zero on the top auto on the on the right and on the bottom actually could we give just the bottom let's try just the bottom I think just the bottom would work so I'm just gonna give 10 on the bottom and uh, yeah that's it Let's copy all of this, let's paste it, call this half line. It's gonna have the same height, the same color, but the width will be 50%, and the margin bottom will be the same. All right, let's save all of this and let's look at our app. Classes.paper is a problem. Cannot read paper of undefined. Oh, it's because here we need to say with styles because we don't have classes otherwise. So we pass styles and we pass the skeleton. All right, let's go back to our app. Let's go back on the profile loading. Cool. So we get the uh, two full lines for the bio and these icons and the location. So if we press play. If we just reload our app. Cool, it looks fine. These, uh, by the way, the snapping is because we only have four screens, so we get this uh, scroll bar which pushes the content, and then once the content loads, it goes away. So once we have more screens, this snapping is not gonna happen. All right, so we're done with the skeletons. Um, yeah, actually, guys, we're done with the app. So now that our application is done, we can actually uh, bundle it up and uh, deploy it to Firebase. First of all, we could build it out and test it first because sometimes there's production errors that you don't foresee. So what we're going to do in the app, in the terminal, we're going to run npm run build, which is a script that comes already ready in uh, create react app applications. Now it's going to build it to this uh, build folder. All right, now that it's built, so everything is here, the static files and everything, uh, we could cd into that. And I have this package, this tool called uh, Live Server, and you could just run Live Server in that directory, and we get a problem. <laughs> and the problem is the server responded with status 404. Oh, okay. So what it's trying to do is trying to get the, um, it's trying to get. I've, I've run into this. I forgot to fix this. It's trying to get our resources from local host from the same um, dom um, origin. And the problem is like our proxy only works in development. So we can, we need to actually set up a way to tell Axios to always send requests to this instead of the um, local, not local host or the machine's IP. So here in app.js, I'm just going to say um, here axios.defaults.base URL equals, and we just give it this URL and this should fix that problem. So let's again build it. PM run build 
All right, let's run it again. Cool, it works. We get our data, no errors, and um, we get the users. Can even like go to the users page, and the users page doesn't work. Oh, okay, we get a um, cross origin uh, error. So this is a course error. Actually, this is my bad. This is from the server. Uh, let me fix that right now, actually. So in the functions, and if you've done only the React part, then don't worry, I'll fix this and it will it should work for you. If you've done your own functions, then go to index.js in your functions directory. And here, actually, let's go into functions. We need to install um, something called course. So npm install course, which just adds some headers uh, that tell our uh, application that you can give these resources to any anyone that requests them. So now that it's installed, here we can say const course equals require course like this. And we just need to tell our express app to use this middleware. So here we say course use and we just, I mean app use and we pass course and we call it here like a function. So let's save and let me deploy these functions. So Firebase deploy. Okay, now that it's done installing or deploying rather, we could reload our app. Seems to get the user's details. Okay, it was just some, sometimes when you deploy on Firebase, it takes some time for the code to work and it works a bit weird at the beginning. All right, so everything works and that's fine. I can log in. So let's try to log in here, just to make sure that everything works. And I do log in, everything is fine, cool. Let's actually deploy it to Firebase. Now you go to Firebase, go to your app, and if you don't have an app, you can uh, create a new one. You can go back to part two of this series and you, uh, there we set up Firebase tools and, uh, and everything related to that. Go to hosting and I've already enabled it because I've already tested to host, you know, I don't want to have like some problems on the video, even though I already had a couple. So you could just click enable and it will work. And let's go to our app here. Let's stop the development server or like the live server, go to the uh, root directory. And here we're gonna initialize uh, a Firebase app. So let's do Firebase init, just like we did for our cloud functions. Here, let's say, yes, I wanna proceed. And here we want to use the hosting, so space on hosting and press enter and select this app. Do you want to use, no, actually we don't want to use the public, we want to use the build directory. That's where our build files are. So we say build, configure single page app, yes, we say to this. It already exists, overwrite, yes, overwrite it. Cool. So we've already built our app, we could just run Firebase. Uh, deploy and if you want to make any change you just make your change and you uh, run npm run build you build your um, your app and you just run um, firebase deploy and you will deploy it all right so it's done deploying this is the url I'll hit control and i click it oops all right there we go so we get our application is deployed let's try to log in All right, the login works, everything works. I can post the screen. Hello from deployed app, submit it, and it works, cool. All right, so this is deployed. So we're done with this project completely. Uh, guys, please, if any feedback, anything you wanna know, anything, any praise, uh, likes, subscribes, please um, feel free to. And uh, let me know in the comments if you, what you want me to do, like a video on any framework. I, I've got a bunch of video ideas right now. So feel free to like, um, you know, contribute. So thank you for watching and I will see you soon. Bye.